well, of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Day 20. I don't have words for the cross-examination of the expert Dr. Spiegel we just saw. The expert, it seems, was brought in to testify about um, the effects of drug and alcohol on memory and cognition, but then he definitely went into being an expert in interpersonal violence, which is very much a, a part of this case, a very large part of this case. But it seems that he contradicted some of their prior expert, Dr. Hughes's testimony, and then the cross-examination, I think, was absolutely devastating, including the reveal that during the deposition, this doc apparently called Johnny Depp an idiot. Um, so I am going to be very interested about how they try to fix this and redirect. Again, this is one of Amber Heard's witnesses, another expert. Will they call Johnny Depp next? How are they going to redirect this witness? And isn't their eye on the clock in this case? Because it sure needs to be because they are at a 10 hour disadvantage. So Depp's team is going to have, at, I think at least a witness or so that Heard's team is going to be very restrained on cross-examination with. And we know that they're going to try to call Depp and he talks very slow. I think they're going to try to call Depp immediately after this expert to try to show maybe the cognition impairment and the way he speaks. I don't know if that's going to be the serve they think it is. Maybe it will be. I've got snacks. I found this in my cabinet. It's not jelly beans. I still haven't gotten jelly beans, but we've got some kind of sour gummy candy, something, and then some lunch that Dr. B left for me with a smiley face. So with all of that, you guys, thank you so much for your support. I will do my best to get to Super Chats, put a cue or a question mark or a question in front of it. I know it takes up space, but it makes it easier for me to answer those questions. And with that, we should just get rolling. Thank you for being here. And we are on the road to 480. So I mean, to 500K really. So if you're you're ready to be part of that journey, just do the YouTube things. Let's go. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. All right, we should have, well, court should be resuming in just a moment, so we will uh, get that pulled up. Emily, have you shared your screen yet? No, why would I do that? We're professionals here. We are professionals here. It's Emily's own version of WAP. We are professionals. So I'm going to get to a few questions. Let's just peek in with where we're at because, oh, oh, we're the, the road to 480 is happening. It's happening right now. Question, wouldn't the doctor's testimony hurt Amber as she is the only one with a diagnosis? Ruth, you're all up in here asking logical questions that seem to logically follow from what the fuck we just witnessed. I think that's a very good question. She's the only one with a cluster B personality diagnosis, and I am not going to judge anyone by their diagnosis. I asked the chat not to, but in the realm and scope of this testimony, the witness said, and it was one of the bigger notes I made, that cluster B traits are a huge risk factor, huge big, huge, he said huge risk factor for IPV. And the only one with cluster B diagnoses in this case, as is known to this jury, is Amber, is Amber Heard, is Amber Heard. Somebody's asking what happened to this morning stream. Nothing. It should be still up. I cut the streams at lunch just in case anything happens. Um, I've had streams restricted for copyright because of CBS and the James Corden show, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this morning stream. We switch streams midday, so I don't have buffering issues, but I will let the, you know, I, I, we have help on this end to, to deal with that question. What happens if Depp wins and Amber is unable to pay the 50 million? Well, <laughs> if she works in future movies, wages will be garnished. They will try to sell property. Uh, collecting can often feel like a completely separate case to, um, to the actual case. And collections often end up with property being attached and then going through court. CEG, my coverage of Tom Girardi, he had clients win cases and they had to attach all of his property and put liens against his personal property. So if it's sold, they got their money and they still didn't get their money. And now there's a bankruptcy proceeding. So I, what I will say is intentional torts like defamation with willfulness 
um, are not dischargeable in bankruptcy. So this is something, if there is a judgment that can hang on for a long time, question, why was a medical examination of Johnny Depp blocked? The court denied it. Um, and I have to go back through those filings and those motions. They were a while back because it was around the same time Amber Heard was. Um, and this is, again, if I am remembering correctly, part of the underlying thought process or ruling was that Amber Heard had brought it at issue because she had brought into issue the PTSD diagnosis, but Depp has admitted um, and opened the door with, not opened the door, but um, agreed to the stipulation with medical records coming in. They both did, but the only thing at issue is his memory, but he didn't put it at issue. He's not saying I can't remember. They are, but I would have to go back through those rulings. They were a while back. Does resting the case count towards their six hours? Um, no, resting means you're done with witnesses. So what, what I'm expecting to see this afternoon, just for a quick recap, if you will, this afternoon, we are expecting to see more witnesses from Amber Heard. At some point, Amber Heard is going to rest her case, which means I got no more witnesses. I got nothing further, Your Honor. We got nothing further. I, I wish I had just rewatched my cousin Vinny because at some point there was like an I got nothing or an I got nothing further and I can't remember. It's been a busy morning. I'm still shook. Um, no more witnesses. Then it will be rebuttal. Johnny Depp's team will have the opportunity to call more witnesses. And that process will go very much like a normal witness process, a direct examination, a cross-examination, and a redirect. When rebuttal is done, they will rest, and then we will get jury instructions and closing arguments. That is supposed to happen Friday. If they get done faster than that, anything is possible. They could bump that forward by a day. I don't know if we're going to get there seeing that we're getting into the afternoon with this witness. We anticipated Amber Heard's case potentially resting today, but we still have that motion to strike and that is going to be fiery. We get to see Ben Chu be Ben Chu. And you know what? Rottenborn, for, for all that his, the way he responds to cross-examinations annoys the piss out of me when he's like, <sighs> That annoys me. That's just stylistically. I'm just as a human annoyed. Rottenborn has had the most linear legal arguments on Team Heard. His opening statement was very good. He, I think, had the linear, linear legal strategy to win this case. If they had followed what he said in opening, this would be a much harder case for Depp to win than the position we're in now. And I think we'll see him argue that to try to keep the um to try to keep alive the counterclaim from Amber Heard. Jay Smith loved you on the Not Skinny, Not Fat podcast. It was such a fun conversation. I talk so much. I love podcasts. It was great to be on. It was great to be on. I absolutely love doing podcasts. Um, so thank you guys for coming in. Um, Johnny Depp's witness list for rebuttal on Twitter. I'm not surprised. I will go find it in a little bit. Um, he's going to have a forensic medical, a forensic doctor, a forensic MD. I wonder if that'll go to his finger, if that'll go to Amber Heard's issues, uh, issues, injuries. I'm thinking it will go to Amber Heard's issues and testifying saying, you know, I had action movie type injuries, pummeled, hit the back of the head, all of that. And what the requisite injuries to that would have been. That's proper for expert testimony. It's proper for rebuttal. And Amber Heard's team's going to have to be real careful about how they cross because they are going to run out of time. Um, <clears throat> when they read and ask, did I read that right repeatedly? Why did no one object asked and answered? Um, if they're keep, if they keep reading the same thing, then it's asked and answered, but if they're reading different things then it's not asked and answered, asked and answered means you've asked the same question and received an answer for it. I say it to my kids all the time. Mom, can I do this? No. Mom, can I do this? No. Asked and answered. <laughs> Mom, what about now? No, still asked and answered. Objection. Um, mom, can we do this? Objection calls for speculation. Do I object to my kids asking questions only sometimes? Question, does resting the case count towards their six hours? I don't know if they have six hours left. I have not been keeping time. I have time blindness. I share about being ADHD. I don't know how much time they have left, but no, resting is just, we, re we have no further witnesses. That's all. To answer the garnishment question earlier, I work in court-ordered garnishments for a large bank and will continuously go after your accounts every time the attorney submits a garnishment order due to uh, to us. I love my job. I mean, it's it is a it is a whole it is a whole like separate and apart from the trial. Trying to recover on a trial is a huge part of civil litigation. Thank you, Kayla, for sharing. And it is something to consider when you're trying to get, you know, blood from a stone. Will not not blood for the blood god, my YouTube friends, blood from a stone. Will is it worth the cost of civil litigation if you can't recover? And a lot of people choose not to pursue 
I mean, in my experience, people choose or can choose not to pursue civil litigation because at the end of the day, the money they will spend to get to the result might not be worth it if they can't get a remedy. Um, sometimes clearing your name and having the court saying that you win is enough for people. If Hertz team runs out of time and still has more witnesses, can Depp's team question them? Um, no, they won't be able to call their witnesses. If once they're done, they're done. They can't call more witnesses because they can't do a direct examination. Witnesses are not allowed to discuss their testimony. Does the same go for experts? Pseudo chic? No, it does not. Can this expert discuss his redirect during lunch? No, he should not. He can't discuss his current testimony. Um, but they can't, well, they can ask him questions about, did you consider this? Did you consider that? And we didn't hear the court give that order, but I was so shooketh. I don't know if the court gave that order. The rules for experts are a bit different. Will the jury verdict be on live TV? Oh my God, if it's not, it better, it, I will be shook. No, they will not be on TV. We will not see their reactions. Will they read out loud how much they are liable for, or is that off camera? It should be part of the verdict forms. When the verdict forms are public, I will pull them up and share them on social media. If you don't follow me on social media at the Emily D Baker. And while we are waiting for court to resume, which it has not yet, I will just share with you that if you are in North America and want to be a part of the text crew, it's like Phil DeFranco's text crew where I keep you in the loop with things that are coming and things that are happening. You can do that at textemily.com. That is uh, text messaging rates will apply, but that's not a membership. It's not a paid thing. It's just if you are in North America and go to textemily.com on your phone, you can sign up. You'll get text links and reminders and my thoughts. And if stuff pops off um, when I'm not streaming, I gen tend to answer, generally answer those there. Question, how long do you think it will take the jury to deliberate? I've given them three to six days. And what do you think Depp's team will do with their 10 hours more? Mm -hmm. I think they'll run out the clock on experts and take their time on cross-examination because they can't do much in redirect. And the more you ask in cross, the more they want to ask in redirect. And that will also run out the clock. Um, but... I've been hearing from those watching in court that this jury seems to be a little bit done. And if this jury's done, could they go back, take a vote and come back in a day or two? Sure could. I, I'm nosy. I would want to hear all of the audio and go over all of the photos and stuff. That's what I would want to do if I'm a juror. They might, oh, lights are flashing. Things are happening. They might just want to get out. So could they come back quickly? They could. Do I think that's unlikely? Yes. Can juries come back very fast? Yes. Did I hear that? Nope. I'm surprised they're not back yet. This is 10 minutes over when court said they would be back. And that's surprising to me. Mm. Why would Herd's diagnosed personality disorders pose less risk for IPB than Depp's undiagnosed? I don't think it would pose less risk. I don't think they can argue that. Can the other side object during closing arguments? Uh, Vero, they can. It's considered very bad form to do so, but there are rules in closing arguments. They are generally not as strict as an opening statement. But yes, if they say something was said as testimony or they misstate the law, you can. You can absolutely. And we might see that happen here. Um, what does impeachment mean in court? It means that they are... It's a rule of evidence. Let me back up. It's a rule of evidence. Oh, they said 155, not 145. See, that was me. So court should be starting now. I heard 145. Well, good. I got more time to answer questions. Yay for Emily not knowing what's happening. <laughs> perfect. 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 They're like, judge is back. Judge is back. Um, but as I was answering the impeachment question, it, it's a type Oh, see, and right on the nose, right on the nose, judge is back. So on the road to um, 480, we are just about there and I will pull the judge up in just one second. They are going to be calling the sides up. So we are, we are just about there. Look at that with the road to 480. This witness is back on the stand. Yikes. So impeachment in court is a way that you can use evidence. There's proper and improper impeachment. You've heard that. A way to use evidence to contradict or bring the receipts against what somebody has said. So that's the impeachment. It's like, you said you said this, but I've got the receipts. So think of it as a housewives reunion where somebody's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, I have a binder full of receipts. The impeachment is the binder full of receipts. He looks pissed. Maybe that's just me. But the binder full of receipts is impeachment. Um, prior deposition testimony, things like that. So I know I feel like 480 is incoming. Oh, we're it's going to click over while the jury's walking in. Yay. Thanks, everybody. Whoop, whoop. All right. Let us, you guys are like, Emily, focus. I can't, I can't, I can't focus. I cannot focus. I'm shooketh by what happened today. I can't focus. Let's turn this Dr. volume Spiegel, up. Um, you were asked about whether you, 
were able to examine Mr. Depp. Do you recall those questions? Back this isn't where you want to yes. go first. And so if I understand your testimony, you asked twice for Mr. Depp to be interviewed by you, correct? <laughs> yes. Objection leading. And uh, overall. And, uh, and then in addition to that, Ms. Hurd requested twice of the court for Mr. Depp to be submitting to an examination of you, correct? Yes. And those were denied, correct? Yes. And now Mr. Depp is contending that it's unethical for you to provide an eth uh, uh, an opinion in this case because you didn't get an opportunity to They interview. straight up and implied do you think that. that makes sense? Objection, Your Honor. I'll what? sustain the objection. All right. Calls for is a legal that your conclusion. Understanding? That is my understanding of it. Okay. Yes. Um, now, when counsel for Mr. Depp was reading to you the gold That was sustained. Rule, there were two words that he kind of went over pretty quickly, and I'm going to go over them again with you a little bit slower. And that was Good, that the Goldwater rule don't go too slow, was Elaine. that you, you don't cannot have time. make an armchair diagnosis, right? Objection. Based on, quote, okay. publicly available records. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Now, the records that you Sorry. reviewed in this case were private, were they not? Yes. And in fact, huh. Dr. Blaustein's records were marked confidential, correct? Yes. And his deposition was marked confidential? Yes. Okay. And uh, Dr. Kipper's records were all fair marked confidential? Fair line of questioning. Objection yes. leading. And, it is, and, but uh, it's a fair line uh, of questioning. Sustained. Okay. What, what, if any, labeling <laughs> was there on Dr. Kipper's deposition? Every, all the what documents I reviewed Elaine? were confidential, and I also saw the confidentiality agreement, so everything I looked at was confidential. Okay. So that, in fact, does not even comport. That doesn't meet the uh, restrictions. Legal Objection legal leading. I mean, so would it be fair to say that she you have she's not, just have on. you rendered any opinions in this case as an expert witness? What if any opinions have you rendered? publicly available records? I have not rendered any opinion based on any publicly available records. Thank you. Didn't you say you used pirates now, just at the you baseline? Were asked a number of questions about narcissistic traits and your di your diagnosis or findings that Mr. Depp exhibited narcissistic traits or had that disorder. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. All right. And uh, the question was asked of you of the uh, whether if you have five of nine narcissistic traits. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Now one They're of the ones you testified it. before was in, for narcissism, it requires admiration, correct? Yes. What, if any, record evidence was there that Mr. Depp requires admiration? The He's an actor. The very people that surround him Same for need to admire him or they're no longer in his employment or his uh, working circle. Based on what? The second one that you discussed was sense of entitlement. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. All right. What record evidence is there that Mr. Depp exhibited exhibits behavior of needing a sense of entitlement? Hmm. So again, thinking that uh, demanding the twenty million dollars was marrying him solely for his money and his influence, and that that was the case. Was, up so in my opinion, very entitled. All right. And the third one you discussed was exploitative. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And what is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits behavior of ex that are exploitative? Again, I think the whole concept of abuse is exploitative. Okay. Uh, the fourth one was lacks empathy. Do you recall what? that? Yes. And what is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits lacking empathy? To be able to in, uh, commit intimate partner violence and the control you have over someone. I'm sorry. Oh, it's based on his assumption that Depp committed IPV. Okay. So it's based on his, so his determination that Depp lacks empathy is based, this is where he's getting, is based on his assumption that Depp committed IPV. And it's hard for them to explore those assumptions and presumptions because he can't testify to that. I'm just going to ask you to give the record evidence of yeah, not your Mr. Depp's uh, lacking empathy. That you know of. what record yes it's gonna be a my mess my a lot elaborate you, yes just okay. just a little different than what you said before okay um so <laughs> if it's based on your assumption that's why you can't answer one does, uh, no so i'll make it more no direct. recross so if you're not agreeing 
with He's paid. what Mr. Depp has to say. Experts are paid. You That's are not- no longer useful. Weird. Okay, therefore, you don't really care about others for others. You care about others for your benefit. So off and on dismissing Dr. Kipper uh, for Dr. Kipper setting some boundaries on substance use protocol, substance detox, is an example of lacking empathy and not really caring what other people have to say. What? Right. Another one of the characteristics that you cited was envious. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. What is the record evidence that Mr. Depp exhibits envy? I think jealousy is a good start for that. I, I think that Ms. Ms. her wanting to have a career, start with that beyond what she has, uh, and the, the jealousy parts of- He was jealous Ms. of Amber Heard's career? And, um, uh, sir, I think others uh, comment this week. Ms. Burstyn, com- sorry, last week Ms. Burstyn commented about things about jealousy. So I think it's pretty apparent. It's not apparent. Can and you please give us the, the documentary evidence instead of saying it's apparent? Self-esteem. Do you recall that? Yeah. And what is the record evidence of Mr. Depp so, exhibiting that? So fragile self-esteem would be more along the line of a cluster B trait. I should put that in. It's not necessarily the criteria for narcissism. So it's a, a trait. Um, and basically, what that means will be that the combination of poor self-control and rapid mood states is fragile self-esteem, fragile personality. They're going so, to try so, so to let the, the jury decide that he has those traits. That's what she's All right. Now, we've to. seen Mr. Depp during this trial doodling and eating candy. Uh, what, if any, uh, evidence would that suggest that he has narcissistic traits? Objection, Your Honor. No foundation. I'll sustain the objection. Wow. Where are my now, straws? I need to try to grasp for them. I need to grasp for about my straws. The cluster B and counsel for Mr. Depp came. Did they all just reach for said, candy? Uh, are you aware, Ms. Hurd? Did has they been all just reach for diagnosed candy? Diagnosed with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder. Justice is fueled now, by you sugar, y'all. Reviewed you, I think you testified at the beginning. You reviewed the therapy and counseling and medical records for Ms. Hurd, correct? Like correct. What, if any, uh, evidence was there that Bonnie Jacobs diagnosed Amber Heard with either borderline personality or a histrionic personality disorder? Objection, Your Honor. I, I, that's fair cross. He, he asked it, the question. It, it, it's that's not cross a lane. You're on redirect. Yeah, it's not overruled. Thank you. So, I mean, if I can start, and Ms. Jacobs uh, demonstrated no type of personality sort of borderline or otherwise. Who's Ms. Jacobs? And on a review of uh, Who's Ms. Dr., Jacobs? Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Curry's re- objections records. beyond the scope of the question. Uh, it is, I'll, I'll, I'll ask each of them separately. And you you also reviewed the medical the therapy records for Ms. Hurd for Connell Cowan, correct? Yes. What, what if any evidence was there at any time that he diagnosed Amber Hurd with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? Not only did he not, he referred to Mr. Depp as a narcissist. Okay. Now you also re- reviewed all of Don Hughes' records and her testing, diagnosed? correct? Yes. And what, if any evidence, did you find in any of that extensive testing and note taking uh, that she had found that Amber Heard had borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? Objection, leading <laughs> as what thought. No, no. Okay. He's and an you expert, also though. reviewed Dr. Curry's notes and her testing, correct? Yes. All right. And what, if any, evidence did you find in any of Dr. Curry's testing that Amber Heard had either borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? She had traits. She did not meet the full, on her her own evaluation, she did not have the full endorsed enough criteria to meet the criteria for borderline personality disorder. It'll be fun when they call Dr. Curry back. She definitely had traits. She had traits. She did not have the disorder by going by the strict number of uh, criteria. All right. Now you mentioned stop in there. To stop Mr. there. Depp's That's the strongest questions. thing you've asked her today. To Just stop there. Wife syndrome. Uh, what is your experience with battered wife syndrome? That's- sometimes being mistaken with borderline personality um, disorder. That's outside or the histrionic personality disorder. Go by your so compound. And and leading. It is leading. Overruled. He's an expert. Uh, so battered wife syndrome, which is more subsyndromal or not quite PTSD, has 70 symptoms of PTSD. And if you hear some of them, you'll see why someone might think that. Um, has they symptoms do have of PTSD? experiences as if feeling as if the abuse is happening, even if it's not by, upon reminders of 
via upon reminds of abuse, such as getting ready to use something, getting ready to use a substance or something along that line. They do have hyperarousal. They do have hypervigilance, which is very easily mistaken for the emotional reactivity of borderline personality disorder. They do have avoidance symptoms. He's so talked about two different disorders. Like emotions, uh, activities, people, and if that can't be happening, they start becoming much more anxious, much more hyper aroused. Um, they have inter disturbances in uh, relationships, which clearly can be an issue. Intimacy uh, problems, again, which could also resemble borderline personality disorder. So those description and traits that were there, uh, A, did not meet the full criteria for borderline, and B, could readily easily be explained by a bad wife syndrome, a form of PTSD. Thank you. Now, you also indicated earlier that you reviewed. I don't know if this is going to undo Amy what Banks, happened on correct? Cross, though. Yes. And what if, even Amy, though it's helpful uh, testimony for uh, her, I don't know if that's going to help. Did you make based on her deposition from her meetings with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? So, uh, Dr. Banks is a professor who uh, at Harvard, the leading institution in America for medical schools. Objection, speculation. An intimate partner violence. Oh she God, had a chance snarky. to meet them in a relationship uh, counseling. Uh, and Your Honor, non-responsive. It's totally non -responsive. It's not non-responsive. I said, what if anything did you find, Steve? <laughs> All right, tell the jury about Amy Banks. I said, what, what if anything, Your so Honor? But uh, Dr. Banks found was that she fully believed uh, uh, Ms. Hurd's version of what was going on. Objection, and, hearsay. He's an expert. He's allowed to rely on hearsay. I, 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 re I reverse speculate. Let me let me do it again. It's please speculative. Tell the jury, Sustained this, objection. The speculation me, is the problem. Please tell the jury what about the qualifications of Dr. Amy Banks. This is the one who saw both Ms. Oh. Hurd and Mr. Depp. Dr. Banks is a, uh, a professor at uh, I don't know whether it's assistant associate professor at Harvard. Uh, University Medical School, one, if not one of the two top medical schools in the world, uh, who specialize in intimate partner violence. She is above all people who understand if someone is victim perpetrator because she does this, researches this for a living every day. Uh, and that's, that's her qualifications. Can I say what she reported? Uh, then I'm going to ask you, what, if anything, did, did Dr. Banks indicate relating to Histrionic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder for Ms. Hearn. Dr. Banks didn't mention anything about personality disorder at all. What she did mention was whom she felt gave a more accurate version of objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Speculation. That's a credibility. Speculation. I, I think he can testify. It's to going that. to state of Any mind. Next question. Yeah. What, if anything, did Dr. Banks report, not saying what the ultimate conclusion was, what, if anything, did Dr. Banks say about what was reported to her by Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp and how they responded? So Ms. Hurd discussed the, um, in trying to, again, as a victim, trying to save the relationship, uh, discussed with Dr. Banks these accusations, these, these, these uh, facts of intimate partner violence. Um, Mr. Depp. Objection hearsay. I, I think he's, he's, he's entitled to rely on hearsay and he's not giving what ultimately. He's repeating like. it. He's entitled to it. That's you, fine. you can rely on hearsay, but you just can't. You can't repeat it. State the hearsay. So you can rely on it. All right. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp do in response? Mr. Depp said nothing. When Ms. Heard accused him of intimate partner violence, Mr. Depp said nothing. And what is the significance objection of that? Objection hearsay. Sustain the objection. All right. And what is the significance of that? Strike it and admonish uh, the, the significance of that is with. Objection, no foundation. Sustain. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll move on. Um, you were asked about MDMA and Did you guys catch what ben the impact like this? could potentially uh, be and then try and of recover. taking eight to ten of these pills. Do you recall? Yes. Death. He okay. said death was and, the impact. Now, I'm going to take you to Australia 2015. You've reviewed testimony over that, right, from Mr. Dab, Ms. Hurd, yes. and the number. Okay. Um, were you, do you recall that Ms. Hurd also said that she found dime bags of cocaine in drawers at the end of that three days? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you, Michelle, can you bring up 1828, it's already in evidence. Pictures? Are we getting pictures? What pictures? I'm curious. Elaine, I didn't have you stopping for pictures when I put the cracker in my mouth. Publish that okay, we can. There we go. Thank you. Um, 
I'm going to, this is one of the pictures that was taken in Australia and the testimony Doctor, has been that these two canvases have, have any of these canvases been defaced with a penis. Over. Is that something that could be the impact of having eight to 10 tablets of MDMA Elaine, and combining that with cocaine and alcohol? Addiction, no what? foundation. Elaine, Speculation. what? The, the foundation's already been laid. You no. Same it has not been laid. What if anything, if you look at the painted canvases on this one, what if any- Wildly speculate uh, what the fuck happened. Evidence is that- Let that me grasp my straws again there. Behaviors uh, indicative of taking a lot of MDMA, cocaine, and alcohol. Objection, speculation, Where no foundation. is the defaced painting with the penis? We still don't have it in evidence. Where is Pien Casso, Elaine? About uh, property, destruction of property. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Could you tell the better jury line of questioning what, uh, what how that relates better to the correlating of factors of risk factors for IPV? Again, destruction of property is a form of psychological uh, abuse, psychological uh, mistreatment, and so destruction of property is used as intimidation and as means of control. What if it's your own property? Michelle, can you bring up 1829? Let's try this again, is what she just said. Michelle's the true MVP here. She's been spot on with the tech in this case, I will say. And this has already been admitted. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and what if any evidence uh, does this uh, what if any reflect evidence? as correlating what? behavior to risk factors of IPV? Whose property is it? I would say that one that demonstrates uh, a good deal of violence and psychological uh, 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 abuse. Uh, Why? I think it's pretty clear that they're trying to be intimidating. I, I don't uh, think. Objection, Your Honor. I, over the, thank you. Please continue. It's speculative as to it try be, to be intimidated. Would, people who would misuse ecstasy with without coke, without cocaine, are prone to agitation, suspicion, jealousy, violence. Uh, what we're seeing there. What does the lampshade very say? Consistent with that presentation. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Can you now bring up 1830, 30, I guess? And that's already been admitted into evidence as well, Your Honor. I'd ask that it be published. The chat has lost interest and in you, sir, and has gotten sarcastic, uh, and I'm this, here for it. Uh, 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 correlate with behavior indicative of IPV perpetration? Again, this is intimidation, psychological abuse, where you're solely trying to emotionally. Objection, Your Honor. Can we be heard? Okay, if you want. Me, sorry, I was chewing crackers. I don't know if the if they're already so put off um, by this expert, but they're asking for a conclusion, and they can't get to the conclusion because it's Dr. Spiegel, a, if taking you, something uh, out of the hands of the jury. If you can answer the question, what if any evidence is this correlating to the risk factors? That's a terrible IPV question. Again, I, I think the the violence comes through. The violence. Objection, Your Honor. Ask Just a better question, Elaine. Right. 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 Evidence or yes. risk, I'm sorry. Move evidence or risk factor Sir. would be uh, um, accepting an more than average a degree of violence as well as psychological abuse. This might be okay. overdone to the jury because uh, they're annoyed. Are you aware of any sorry for being muted, y'all. record uh, evidence of Ms. Heard writing on walls, mirrors, countertops, or painting canvases? No. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. You can take that down now. Now, you were also asked about Seroquel um, and uh, some of the other prescription medications. Um, did you, during I'm the course my last of your lane. review of evidence, see the lists of medications that Mr. Depp was on at one point? Yes, I read that list. Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 301. 
And Dr. Spiegel, I'm, it's not in to evidence yet. I'm going to ask you to take a look at this. Is this one of the documents that you had that reflected uh, the amount of medication that Mr. Depp was on as of October 26, 2014? Yes. Okay. Um, and 2014. This was an email from Debbie Lloyd to Dr. Blaustein, his treating psychiatrist, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, can you tell the jury that we've got Seroquel, 50 mg? Can you Objection, just tell, hearsay. Can you just tell the jury? I, mean, I haven't finished asking the question. You're reading it into the record, so, Elaine. Let's approach. Okay. I don't have words. I just. Okay. So Elaine is trying to read things off into the record that can't be read off into the record. This witness is not allowed to testify to what other witnesses said unless it's the foundation for their opinion. So they're allowed to say, I looked at this doctor's opinion and it was the basis of my opinion, but they're not allowed to go into reading in dosing, dosing dosages and medication, not to mention the, f I don't know if this will play well with this jury that they are trying to just hammer on Look, he was on all this medication. Look, he was on all this stuff. And she's like, Elaine, you can't do that. And she's like, Dennison, do you agree? Just can we just please get the fuck done with this? That's not what the judge is saying in my mind. Emily, would you hire Elaine? No. Michelle, can you scroll up? Just Elaine and I can't have a conversation because if she said, what if anything do you need help with? I would have to hang up the phone. So Dr. Siegel, if someone was taking... 50 mega, meg, are those, is that meg, milligrams, milligrams megabytes. of Seroquel, They're megabytes. 25 milligrams of Seroquel, megabytes. and 50 mil, milligrams of Seroquel and 50 all in one day, how would that impact them? So obviously this is not for sleep because Why? I'm presuming you're not wanting to sleep in the morning, noon, and from four to six, although you're sleeping at night. Uh, what I would say is he's using it for one purpose, as I say, with substance use disorder. They're using it to calm down. They're using it just as a down and a relax. And given that you're taking 45 milligrams of Adderall a day uh, to stay awake, and um, that's more than the uh, prescribed for adults and children, for that matter. Um, really? I, the combination it's makes more than what's prescribed for children? All to me. Doc? Uh, and if Farmer a person was taking 300 milligrams yeah, he didn't of even answer. Neurotin, I, I'm going to pronounce that wrong again, You're on. Uh, four times a day and 600 okay, later let's see if the, the candy's day, good. how would that impact? Again, you're Ooh. looking at medications that are there solely too sour. for a substance use disorder patient to get them up and to calm them down. That's all this, is, this regimen is about. Uh, Gabapentin doesn't have a psychiatric indication other than actually doesn't have psychiatric indication, although it does calm you down. And it, uh, as I may have intimated before, similar Adderall, uh, Gab, uh, Pen is also abusable. Similar oh, to IP EB, Sarah you Brill mean Elaine Bredehoff, not EB, Emily Baker. So you're getting this I don't know. kind of unusually calming I think she's going to be annoyed no matter what. From these medicines, while at the same time getting what's called a super therapeutic dose or an excessive amount of Adderall. And for the record book, Adults are only indicated with Adderall for the extended release, not the immediate release preparation. And why that's relevant is the immediate release preparation is more abusable. You get more high quicker. The extended release goes out throughout the day. The immediate release gets you up right away and then down. Now, in ADHD, this medicine is very effective. But from what this is being used for, clearly based on the combination um. uh, are you unaware of his ADHD diagnosis? Right. Do sir? addicts lie? Yes. All right. Now, you sir. were asked about Mr. Depp passing out. Do you recall reading testimony of Mr. Depp? Our chat is so wise. Passing out in the bathroom in his vomit? Yes. Okay. Was that, does that help refresh your recollection <laughs> of what yes. you recall? Does that fix your mean, previous the book, I don't misstatement? Think that falling asleep with ice cream on you. Is a objection question. beyond the scope of the question. Well, beyond the scope of the question. Keep going. I don't think Sarah taking Sarah well at night and falling asleep with ice cream on you is not 
what Seroquel is indicated for. It's not meant to put you out in a state where you don't even be able to stay awake to put ice cream away. All right. Michelle, if you can pull up Defendants 1090. That's already in the evidence. If we can publish that to the dirt jury, Your Honor. Dr. Spiegel, uh, does this look like, uh, I, I mean, would this be evidence correlating with uh, behaviors consistent with IPV perpetrator risk factors? This would be Carly, a person who is completely knocked out, and it's usually only one way someone gets knocked out that badly, and that's with pharmacological assistance, whether it be legal or illegal. <laughs> they make it to the bed, they don't sleep with their head on a game box. Sorry, y'all. Nobody asked about roxycodone. Furniture. That that doesn't happen to people who sleep. No matter how tired you are. No matter how tired. I've been a resident in the past, and Sir? I, I was up for 40, 45 hours. Objection I've been up for 45 scope. hours today yes, during your nice. direct examination, right. sir. Uh, Michelle, can you pull up 109? The personalizing please? of it is just a giant WTF, but seriously. The the you know, is this someone on pharmacological? He's already testified about his addiction to and, roxycodone. And this has been, I'm going to ask you the same question, Dr. Spiegel. Okay, uh, keep going. What, what, if anything, does this Sorry, indicate? I was trying to not make you listen to Ms. Chu, and then I forget to perpetrate. turn my mic on. Again. Turn on the mic, Emily. Colloquially passed out. It's fair. It's, it's a fair criticism. There are very few ways to get like that without pharmacological assistance, okay. legal or illegal, and or illegal. And then let's pull up 1094, please, Michelle. Y'all, Johnny Depp sleeps. Defense, and that's also been admitted. And again, the sting out of this testimony is that Johnny Depp already said, and now we have I would be on the nod and I took roxycodone for a back injury. And oh, now we get, oh, oh, wait, there, there. This have? Right down there. Probably could see how I could. Ob objection, that. speculation, no foundation. You can what see how any, I can make a uh, mistake if I'm he says. Uh, what, if any, evidence does this indicate correlative with the risk factors for IPV? Perpetrators? Again, this proves one of the major risk factors and precipitating factors uh, for uh, intimate partner uh, violence. Objection. You are so to strike. All right. Sustained. I'll strike it from the record. Yep. Next question. The doctor doesn't know what's happening. Uh, we'll, we'll just move on. Okay. Um, Good. You were asked about earpieces. Did you? Do you recall reviewing Tracy Jacobs and Joel Mandel's depositions? Yes. All right. And do you recall them both testifying that Mr. Depp had someone on salary to feed him his lines? Yes. Okay. Now, you've testified that you reviewed a substantial amount of evidence in this case. Did you find any evidence that Amber Heard exhibited conduct or behaviors indicative or consistent with any of the risk factors? For that's what they're trying to get. To. Objection beyond the scope. That, it is. Well, that's it what was suggested with the no, borderline it personality. No, it wasn't okay. sustained. But you did find that for Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Okay. And did you find record evidence that Mr. Depp had a substance abuse disorder? Severe substance use disorder. Did any of the you questions asked him by that, Mr. Depp's counsel change any of your opinions in this case? Did it, nothing. There, no, not my opinion has not been swayed in iota. Okay. Do you not hold them iota. all still within a reasonable degree of he medical apologized. and psychiatric probability or certainty? Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Spiegel. All right. Thank you. Sir, you can have a seat in the courtroom or you're free to go. Thank you. Yeah, Are you might want to leave, bro. Who's the next witness? My next witness is Catherine Arnold. Bummer. Catherine Arnold. That's Bummer in that it's not Johnny Depp. Also bummer in that Elaine is doing the next questioning. <laughs> Camille's all of us. Did you see her just going? Oh. Yep. I'm also mad they didn't bring up uh, his diagnosis of ADHD. I find it very annoying. I don't know who this is. <laughs> Right, yes, Thank you. Find out Will you does. please state your name for the record? Catherine Arnold. All right. And what is your profession? I am a entertainment industry consultant and I Damages. also serve as an expert witness. Okay. And can you please tell the jury your educational background? Yes. So, so this is going to go to damages. The, I've been in the entertainment industry for over 20 plus years. I started 
uh, as an assistant at ICM, which is one of the largest talent agencies in Los Angeles that represents actors, writers, and directors. And I worked with the talent agent there. And then I also worked at William Morris, uh, for William Morris as a script reader. So I was working on scripts that they were delivered uh, and submitted to for their actors, writers, and directors. Uh, after that, I went into development of film and television projects for a company based in New York called The Maltese Company, which actually produced animated television shows and feature films based on Wall Street, you know, animated product, you know, like toys. And then I went to Toys work, based on Wall Street? Uh, Is that what you just said? With a company called The Goober Peters Company. And Goober Peters was, at the time, one of the largest production companies in Los Angeles. They did films like Batman and Rain Man and Tango and Cash. They did TV shows like Wizard of Eastwick. And there I was involved in the development of scripts. We worked with the studio directly in terms of what cast would be attached to the scripts and, and brought directors and talent to those projects. Uh, I then went on to uh, work in, um, there's a lot. Uh, I went on to work uh, in the independent film world as a film producer. So I found the material, I would get the financing, I would get the cast and the director attached to the project, we call that packaging, and then we would go and, and obtain financing for that either through equity sources or international sales and financing and bank financing. I'm always interested and to hear more about I the movie also, industry. Uh, so I went on after that, I produced um, five or six films with actors that you may know, including Salma Hayek, Vincent D'Onofrio, Kirstie Alley, Thomas Jane, Ethan Hawke, and then I worked with a the other guy name dropped his project. international Just sales and production company where I was head of production, and I worked again on the development of no, scripts. This is not her educational background. This is her resume of financing. But so I worked in both the same. independent world and the studio world, meaning independently financed or financed by the big studios like Warner Brothers and Disney and Paramount and such as that. Uh, that's it, and that's the bulk of my work in the entertainment industry. Did any of your films win We're supposed awards? to brag. A couple of them did. So a couple of the independent films that I uh, produced, one of them, you want them to name one, drop. Uh, called The Coriolis Effect, won the Venice Film Festival in its category. Uh, and then I also produced another film that won the Heartland Film uh, Festival Award. It's called Crystal Award. All right. And what other video production projects have you been involved in? So throughout that time, in between those jobs, I also worked in the corporate world. So large studios like no Warner Brothers cross. and Disney Direct, and CBS cross, would need the end. corporate videos for their live events. So I would interview executives and interview their talent and then edit the piece together to create video and media for she's their live sales she's supposed to be. that they had at that time. She's establishing uh, her expertise in the industry. She's going to testify to damages. Right. She's supposed to list and out her... And what, if any, her, experience did you have in corporate She's supposed to list out license. her um, her resume so early to on in my establish career, her as an expert. I worked at the uh, Los Angeles so Olympic why. Organizing Committee, and I worked in the licensing department um, where we handled the licensing of the Olympic logo, and we also oh, worked with sponsors and suppliers who were funding those Olympic Games. So it was a lot of contractual negotiations with the use of the license of the logo, as well so again, as how she knows money for the game, how the and money was with lost. Those uh, corporate sponsors throughout the two years pre prior to the games, and then during the games themselves. I like that they picked a and female what expert. What experience do you have working on film festivals? I don't know uh, how that's relevant. Well, I've had here, films in festivals. It's I've interesting. I've actually been very lucky to travel the world and gone to a lot of festivals with my films, uh, both here in the United States and elsewhere. And at one point, I was also hired to raise sponsorship funds for the Sundance Film uh, Sundance Film Festival. They had a new program that they were uh, starting to do online festivals. I will say and the so other I expert for Deb did the licensing for Star Wars merch, and I'm fascinated right. by and that. Do you have a, a degree, a college degree? Yes, I graduated from UCLA with a, a bachelor's degree in economics. What does your current consulting practice entail? So as an entertainment consultant, having been in the business in both the independent and the studio worlds as both a producer and an executive, I work with uh, investment companies and production companies who are looking to navigate the various inroads of Hollywood. It's a pretty 
uh, it's a business that's very different and unlike anything else and very relationship based. So I use my 20 years of experience to help them get cast, get financing, understand the distribution process, the marketing process, and get them set up uh, to be able to produce their films. Have you ever testified as an expert witness in the so field much. of entertainment it's a lot, industry? It's a lot in this yes. case. Oh, we'll get to this. At the Approximately how many times have you served as an expert? Uh, I've been involved in somewhere between 85 and 100 cases as an expert. You can pay experts. From beginning stages it's to It's expected. It's proper. Court. And have you ever testified as an expert on damages and defamation cases? Yes, I have. Okay. And approximately how many times have you qualified as an expert on that? It might have been a media and defamation. Plant. Yes. I believe three or four times. Okay. And have you ever been, uh, been admitted to testify as an expert on damages? Yes. Okay. And how many times have you qualified as an expert on damages? Almost all my cases have some form of damage, uh, relation, you know, economic damage related to the case. So I would say in all of the cases that I've testified in, okay. I have been qualified in damages. Okay. Have you ever served as an expert for both? Have you served as an expert for both plaintiffs and defendants? Yes, I have. Okay. How much of your current practice involves consulting as opposed to expert serving as an expert witness? So over the last 10 or 12 years, it's been about 50, 50. So I spent half my time working as a consultant and the other half working with lawyers on their cases. Your Honor, I'm going to move to qualify Catherine Arnold as, as an, an expert, expert in, in the damages. entertainment industry standards and practices and related economic damages. All right. Any objection? There shouldn't be. All right. So moved. Thank you. Now you have a dual role here totally as an expert, correct? Yes. Now you're, you do? you're going to be testifying with respect to Mr. Depp's challenges <laughs> to or, or claims of uh, damages, and you're uh, also going to be testifying to Amber Heard's damages, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start you with Mr. Depp's claims for damages. Okay. Um, with respect to Mr. Depp's claim damages, on what subject have you been asked to offer your opinion? So I was asked to assess the any alleged damages that the op-ed piece in the Washington Post that Ms. Heard wrote, whether that have impacted his career in any way, particularly did he lose any income or any economic So this is defensive of and offensive. All right. And, and it's allowed because there's a counterclaim. Have you been asked to limit that to the period of December 18, 2018, with the date of the op-ed, through November 2, 2020? Yes. Okay. Now, what materials did you review? Again, in she's an expert. She can review a bunch of stuff. There were a lot of documents. Uh, I reviewed the pleadings of the case, the complaints, the discovery items, the responses to what they call interrogatories, which are the questions that the lawyers ask uh, both sides. I reviewed she's uh, probably Mr. Their Depp's test. She's probably the easiest uh, expert to listen to testimony. so far which there were volumes of that, as well as Ms. Hurd's. Uh, I also reviewed the deposition testimony of, of the experts that uh, were proffered that had to do with the entertainment industry, you know, the agents and the management teams of both, both sides. Uh, Ron Schnell, the data expert. I also reviewed ah, Mr. Hashtag Justice for Johnny Depp hashtag. between the parties, between their families, between their management teams, the audio uh, recordings, the visual recordings that have been presented in this case and the previous cases that have been involved in the last couple of years. Uh, I also did my own independent research from general publicity and press and investigative articles, as well as those that are specific to the entertainment industry and utilize some entertainment industry specific sources to get some information that was helpful to my case, to our, to the case. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Please describe for the jury okay. your, uh, uh, observations with respect to Mr. Depp's career. I wonder what trajectory. just happened. They all just looked at something that made a noise. Well, Mr. Mr. Depp has had an extraordinary career over many years, so it's it's a, it's a long one to look at. Um, obviously, he was a rising star in the late '80s and in the '90s, starting with Twenty One Jump Street, and you've heard, you know, all the films that I'm sure he's been in. Um, he he really started to break through when he worked with Tim Burton the director and, and, oh, and of course Sister his Hans. character Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean was, you know, world renowned um, and probably um, his biggest role. And he was, a, you know, a well-liked um, both critically was? and uh, within the industry and within the public as a movie star. Um, 
And at the same time, his behavior and uh, both on and off the set in his personal life and in his professional life start to interfere with uh, what we would say, what everybody saw was his great talent. And it started, you know, there's some stories of, of, of issues that started back in the 80s and the 90s, but I would say really in the mid 2000s, between 2006 and 10, is when the behavior started affecting uh, his work to a certain extent in terms of lateness on set. Uh, and then as Ms. Jacobs, his talent agent, discussed with you uh, in her Former. deposition, uh, it really started to affect her ability to get roles and, and the industry's willingness to work with him given the issues that he was having with both behavior, tardiness, drinks, drinking and the drug abuse uh, and you know, other issues in his personal life. So it got more complicated for her to find him work. And I think it got harder for production companies and studios to hire him due to the challenges that that would put on a production. And when did Mr. Depp's career downturn begin based on your review of all the record evidence? Well, again, according to Ms. Jacobs, his agent, she career mentioned downturn. that it started getting more challenging for her around 2010. The lateness on set was being made, she was being made aware of that more and more often from production executives and the producers that she was working with on the Pirates movie. Rum Diary was 2009. And not only Pirates, it, it continued on um, on the other films, including Mordecai and uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, and it, in around 2014, when he had the appearance, uh, it was presumed that he was under the effects of alcohol at the Hollywood Film Awards in 2014. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. She's answering the career downturn. Yeah. Overruled. Please continue. Thank you. I agree. I um, think she is answering the career downturn. In 2014, uh, when Mr. Depp appeared in the Hollywood Film Awards, Ms. Jacobs received many phone calls from both producers, casting directors, How do you and know? production she executives to asking her what is going on with your client. Why, you know, what's going on with his behavior? Can we get him under control? And then I think it really started to shift around the Pirates 5 movie in Australia with, again, the lateness and the experts uh, issues, are allowed to uh, rely the on that the stopped production they've and, heard and things of that nature. And then it just, it got harder and so harder. So she's allowed to rely on that to make now, Based on your opinion. analysis, what has caused Mr. Depp's career downturn? Objection. No foundation. No, she established the Can foundation, Denison. The Based on your She's analysis, an what has caused Mr. Depp's career downturn? This is her expert opinion. And I realize you've said a number of those, so just, <laughs> is there anything else? Sure. Uh, well, we talked about the erratic behavior, the tardiness, the drugs and alcohol abuse, and the lawsuits have had a really big impact, not just this lawsuit, but previous lawsuits that Mr. Depp has been involved with because there's a lot of publicity around anything that he does. And uh, every time he has filed a lawsuit, it has brought to light various issues with respect to whatever that lawsuit was about, whether it was about, you know, erratic behavior or domestic abuse or drugs and alcohol and even spending habits. So he every time a lawsuit has been filed, the press and the publicity has just been charged it up and brought everything back to light. And it's it, it's been an unfortunate problem for for on, on that level for the industry to continue to work with him, even though all this is out in the in the public. And this is going to for his the damages. films that were shortly before Pirates Five. How successful were they? Thank you, Jennifer. Dragon Mordecai, uh, uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass. How uh, are we determining success, Elaine? You, you tested What's the basis? some of those. The, the Lone Ranger, Tonto. Right. Injection compound. Overall, uh, it's fair. Of course, Mr. Depp has had some extremely, obviously, extremely successful films. You, are but you, also, are you following the, us you know, on on YouTube yet? Four or five years prior, and you There's know, 135 pirates. Here, there were Mr. films Chiu, that hello. didn't do well at all, and were considered what the industry calls a bomb, which could have been uh, Alice with the Looking Glass, The Transcendence, um, the The Lone Ranger, uh, and Mordecai were films that just didn't perform, although they were valued in their financing based on Mr. Depp's 
star quality and acting ability. Unfortunately, they just didn't perform. So as many hits as he's had, he's also had a lot of recent, what they call failures in the business. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp do with respect to showing up for a press conference in Japan for Mordecai? Uh, Ms. Jacobs mentioned in her deposition testimony that Mr. Depp didn't show up for the press conference in Mordecai, which he was That's not only an actor for, he was also a producer, and he didn't show up. Apparently, he was sleeping, so he wasn't able to make it. That's a problem. Now, what, if any... Uh, impact did the Brooks litigation have on Mr. Oh, Depp's career? How would she know that? Is the jury familiar with this already or? Uh, well, I, I think you can, go, I mean. Nope, okay. not super. So the Brooks litigation was, uh, it was, um, there was a, a litigation around uh, Mr. Depp had punched someone on one of the, I think it was a location manager Alleged on the to set F, of a film yes. called City of Lies. Um, I, I don't know exactly what happened to that uh, litigation. However, of course, again, it was written a lot about in the press and unfortunately came to the forefront when? that he had, you know, violent behavior yet again. What do you so mean yet again? in 2018, and I'm going to say before the op-ed on December 18, 2018, right. were there, was there any negative articles, negative press about Mr. Depp? For quite a while, when you're a celebrity such as Mr. Depp, you're in the limelight and everybody wants to look at everything that happened. So after every movie or after every incident, there was usually press. But the, the, the ones that were more significant were the ones in the Hollywood, a couple of them in, in the Hollywood Reporter and uh, one in the Rolling Stones. So in 2017, no, I've heard about these. there was an article in the Hollywood Reporter a few times. where the journalist discussed, I think the article was called Pirates of the Caribbean, the Diminishing Returns of Johnny Depp. And that Pirates, the one with the last one was five, right? And that one didn't perform nearly as well as the other previous it wasn't uh, as good. Pirates of the Caribbean films. And there was some discussion that the character. Objection, hearsay, Your Honor. I don't know. About I this think well. she could explain generally. That's sustained. Okay. But she's repeating um, it. Let me, let me ask you this. When was that Hollywood Reporter article on diminishing returns of Johnny Depp? That was in the spring of 2017. This has been some of the most okay. concise and testimony said, we've gotten um, on Team And Hurt. I just want to make sure we understand. She's one of our best well witnesses so far. How well did Pirates 5 do compared to 1 through 4? It performed less well by over $200 million. Okay. Um, uh, what if any other negative press was there in this time frame? We'll take 2017, 2018 before the op-ed. So in 2018, there was the Rolling Stones article that was an in-depth expose on Mr. Depp's life. Um, again, and this has been referred to behavior, by Disney The money as he well. was spending on, on wine. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I, I think she can give generally, Your Honor. The what, you think's statement. irrelevant, Elaine? All right. She's um, relating the things. What if any knowledge do you have of how Did you whether the, Disney saw the Rolling Stone article? the Rolling article? Stone article have impacted there were his emails, reputation? Uh, between... Uh, the publicity department and the co-chairs and some of the senior executive Disney that they would forward the articles as they came out, both the Hollywood Reporter article and the uh, Rolling Stones article. And they would make commentary. And Alan Horn, who is the uh, one of the co-chairs of Disney, used the word sad. And I think one of the other executives used depressing that their film star was now being shown in this light to the public in a Rolling Stones. Section here so said that's speculative as to what they I, thought um, when they said sad and depressing. Just was to be there fair. any more articles about Pirates of the Caribbean prior to the op-ed in December of 2000? Oh, is she saying Rolling Stones? There I was an article in October 28th, uh, the Hollywood Reporter, October 28th, 2018 where the journalist had spoken to two writers of the film and they were talking Objection, about rebooting hearsay. the franchise. You're, she, she, she's entitled to rely on hearsay and she's just giving the general. She's not, not repeat it. Oh. Elaine, this is basic. She is allowed to form an expert opinion based on hearsay. She is not entitled to repeat that hearsay in court verbatim and thereby introduce hearsay as evidence. She's allowed to introduce her opinion and what she's relying on. There's 
Joe Nearman and DUI guy, but she's not allowed to introduce or call for statements that are hearsay to be introduced through a third party. So you've got to ask better questions so that you get better answers. And what is happening is that she is not asking better questions and therefore she is not getting better answers. This judge has been indelibly patient, but it is not Judge A's job to tell Elaine how to ask better questions. We are in week six of this trial. How are we still fighting over this, Elaine? It's just mind boggling to me. You have to ask better questions. This witness cannot say what was said. I'm going to answer some questions. Um, people freaked out about Obama wearing a beige suit. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Is it because is it because Hurd's also wearing a beige suit? So without saying what the article said, say what it's about. Ask better questions. So in October 28th, the article was it was called uh, the article was about whether the Pipes of the Caribbean Objection franchise here, would be rebooted without. Oh, oh, oh. Please continue. The pi well, in the article in October 2018 was about whether or not the Pirates franchise was going to be what they call reboot, re you know, redefined without Johnny Depp, and that was in a, regarding two writers that were on the the project. Okay, uh, and. There was one other one. I'd like okay, to go ahead, please. I don't know so if today is helpful. There was another article. Uh, there Thanks. was an expose on, on the, uh, the, the pres today. president in production. It was also in the Hollywood Reporter, and this is the one that Mr. Marks, Mr. Likely Depp's been expert, to. pointed to. Um, Experts are going to look at the jury. It's the appropriate. Impact on, on Mr. Thank Depp's you. career I and did my hair today. the online article was, okay, as Mr. Marks pointed out published on December 20th of 2018, but the same article was in know. print on the morning of December 18th, 2018, which is the same morning of the op-ed. So think, that Hollywood Reporter article that Mr. I think the Marks clock at the front of the courtroom is, Objection, is, the, no is foundation. the clock, oh, is the clock for Eastern Pacific, uh, for the, Eastern uh, Standard. Mr. Marks I had think. used that article to show that Disney sure wanted to let go of Mr. Depp because of the op-ed, but it was actually printed in the reporter the same morning that the Washington Post article was printed. So there's no way that the Washington Post article had any impact on what the Hollywood Reporter journalist wrote. Unless it was they were on the same morning. They were released simultaneously, interestingly enough. And, and the one that was two days later was the same article just online? Same article, it was just online, yeah. Okay, thank you. Now, what, if anything, was there about press in 2018 relating to The Sun and Dan Wooten and any litigation that right. Mr. Depp so, was bringing? So a lot of press was about the UK this trial and witness. the lawsuit that Mr. Depp brought against the uh, the Sun in the UK yes, about the white Elaine needs to ask better questions. Um, title that they used. So there was a ton of press around that, both at the time that it was filed and throughout as documents were being shared with the public, and then of course during the trial itself. Okay, and. and what is your understanding of when the the article, the wife beater article, first appeared? I believe it was in July of 2018, about six months before the op-ed piece. Was. What is your understanding of when Mr. Depp filed suit against the son and Mr. Wooten? Again, in 2018, I believe. Okay. June, would it be? No. Okay. Would, she, would it refresh uh, it, would it refresh uh, your record? it was in the spring or summer of, it was fairly shortly after the article so it was long before the op-ed piece was out okay um and what if any impact did mr depp's litigation in the sun case have on his career that was a really tough one on on mr depp's career because everything every allegation of abuse and every text every email all the audio all the visual stuff was brought to light and made public and so not yep. only did the public get get to see it but the industry was watching closely and it's hard for studios especially a studio like disney who's family oriented be connected to a star that has texts about burnt corpses and violent behavior in, fair. In, in video. So it was, a, it was a, a big conflict for a lot of the people in the industry to how to navigate that if they're gonna work with Star. And, and what if any impact did Mr. Depp's other litigation against Mandel and Bloom have in your during opinion. that time period? In your opinion. As I was trying to say earlier, every time Mr. Depp brings a lawsuit, because he's such a well-known public figure, the spotlight goes on him. So every time a lawsuit was filed, whether it was to his business against his business manager, 
against his former lawyer, even when he fired his talent agent, it becomes news. And then everybody talks about what could have preceded that. Why would that lawsuit have happened? And then they look at the details. So again, the erratic behavior and the financial issues and the uh, drinking and drug abuse was all part and parcel of every one of those. And it was brought to light yet again each time. Yet again. What is your understanding of Mr. Depp's claims regarding Pirates of the Caribbean 6 and how that impacted? Well, Mr. Depp is claiming that he's lost money on Pirate 6, but Pirate 6 hasn't even been made yet, nor is there even a script that has been what we call greenlit, moved towards production. So I don't know how you lose something that hasn't happened. So I think that's what you're looking for me to. And in fact, isn't that what Mr. Depp is saying, damages though? are limited she lost November the Amazon to project. 2020 and nothing since. And that hasn't happened uh, is there any way he could claim damages for Pirate Six? Well, you, that calls leaving. for a legal conclusion. No, that calls Overall. for a legal conclusion. Again, you can't claim damages for something that hasn't even happened, whether he was in it or not in it, or was going to be in it, or might have been in it, whether it was 2018 or now. There That's just is no ways, Pirate though. Six. Um, not only did he not have a contract, even back in the day, 2018 or after that, no contract had been signed for a Pirate Six. It doesn't exist as we objection as we legal today. conclusion. Yeah, I, I too late, Dennison. Sustain. Yeah, yeah it's how, how do you know he doesn't have a legal contract? Well, Miss Jacobs said he didn't have a legal contract, and also his agents at CAA said he had not he had not yet negotiated a contract for Pirate Six. No, but they said they did have a handshake uh, deal on again, an amount. There is no script, so they haven't greenlit it, as we say. They don't have it, have a caster with the director yet. Okay. Um, based on your analysis, what, if any, impact did Ms. Hurd's op-ed have on whether Mr. Depp uh, could claim a loss? Oh, loss sorry. I was trying six. to get a better quality. Zero. Right. Okay. And why do you say that? Again, well, if only she had said things. zero, zero, the movie doesn't zero, exist yet, so none. that's one. But that would have been better. even as important is that Disney in their file for this trial did not have the op-ed piece as part of all of the information they had read and looked about and discussed. The uh, conversations of Mr. Depp not being in whatever new version of Pirates, the, the franchise that goes forward, those were in discussions long before the op-ed piece even and came And that's out. why the Disney witness came and, in. Uh, there are other factors that Disney was considering, the lateness on set, the cost overruns at that cost, which can go from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars when you have crew sitting around for two to four hours, eight hours, or even several weeks to a month when the finger incident happened. So wait a second. On top of that, Mr. Depp is so an is expensive the finger, actor. Is the finger um, incident the problem? He can earn between 20 and $25 million per movie plus back end. So it's very expensive. So when you put that all together, the rising cost of Mr. Depp as talent, the challenges be. that they had to keep it on budget because of his lateness and his tardiness and all the other allegations that would affect a brand such as Disney, right? Someone talks about a burnt corpse does not necessarily coincide with the brand of Disney. That's fair. So there were many problems. And interestingly enough, there was a lot of conversation in, uh, at uh, in, internally in the industry, or objection that hearsay. She doesn't she's entitled to rely on. She's hearsay, not entitled to repeat Sustain. it. So you can't say that's hearsay. All right. Um, please, please continue without saying what quick? the discussion in the industry was. Was there? A I heard it. The Jack Sparrow character had run its course. Then exhausted in terms of where it could go creatively, and I think the studio is looking for a way for it to renew the franchise but not necessarily base it entirely on the Jack Sparrow character, which is where it had ended up the last couple of years. Okay. And, and, and evidenced by the, the, the lesser uh, box office. And again, of this goes to, to the earlier ones. Um, and, this all and, goes to damages and whether he was had there financial any damages from that the came out on November 5, 2020, That's three leading. days after the damages are cut off relating to Pirates of the Caribbean That's, and Mr. Depp's chances of being what? Jack Sparrow. That's leading. I think they reiterated the fact that he was probably not going to be in the movie. Okay. Now, what impact has the op-ed had on Mr. Depp's career? Very little. Hardly anybody even knew the op-ed existed before he filed suit. Okay. 
if anybody that I know, but certainly not Disney. Okay. And um, what impact has the op-ed ad on Mr. Depp's Q scores? Well, did she? According say she to what I read of, of Mr. Alan Jacobs, an expert in uh, statistical analysis, and from my own research uh, on websites that are available to us, Mr. Depp's Q score, or if you're familiar with IMDB, which is uh, Internet Movie Database, which is available to public and to the professional side, uh, his Q score did not change uh, uh, dramatically. It was kind of in the middle of exactly the high and low of his Q scores overall. It was in the middle. It was at like 113, which is where it was a couple weeks before and a couple weeks after. So the op-ed didn't have any effect. Uh, on his Q score, and that was reiterated by Mr. Jacobs in his deposition testimony. And then you testified in response to an earlier question I had that that people or, or that nobody seemed to notice the op-ed until Mr. Depp filed suit. Now that was on March 1, 2019. Do you recall? Yes, that's when the <laughs> lawsuit was filed. And, and why do you why do you say that they didn't notice until then? Because the op-ed piece for most people in the industry kind of came and went without much fanfare or not much conversation. It was much more think about he the, agrees. I don't think very many people even know it was written uh, until the allegations were made by Mr. Depp in the lawsuit. Uh, it kind of came in and out of the radar very quickly. If anybody even saw it at all, this isn't cross. Right. This is direct examination. Between December 18, 2018 and November 2020, November 2, 2020, window here. Has Mr. Depp continued to star in films? So Mr. Depp, so the article came, the, the op-ed piece came out December 20, 18 and 20 of 2018. In December, uh, I'm sorry, in January and February of 2019, he shot a film called Minamata, which was an independent film that he, it was what, what we call a passion project. He loved the, the script and wanted to do it. So he was able to film oh, that Dennis after the cross piece. after this. He's the one objecting. And then the Dior campaign Whoever's survived. Whoever's objecting. Uh, I don't know the exact dates of filming, but I know that it did air throughout 2019. And uh, it's my understanding that he, he still may have that contract with Dior. So he continued that product endorsement. And then in uh, April, or sorry, in the spring, and the fall, I believe it was, uh, Mr. Depp was able to do press uh, for the film Waiting for the Barbarians. He went to the Deauville Film Festival. He went to the Venice Film Festival. He was well received at the press conferences. Yeah, I think a you know, lot of us were aware. at the same level for him in terms of his popularity over in Europe. I think a lot of us were aware of it. Still, uh, he was still working on press for the films. And then, of course, he was scheduled to film uh, Fantastic Beasts in, in early uh, November of 2020. Because Fantastic and Beasts, I think, can also be tied the to the UK your... case. What's the objection? Yeah. Can we approach. Okay. Why? I think Fantastic Beasts can be tied more closely to what happened in the UK case. And that might be why they're not getting into it. But remember, Johnny Depp is suing for defamation, which requires proof of damages. He's also um He's also suing for defamation per se, which doesn't require damages. So there's two ways to attack this. And that's no longer the case, correct, on Fantastic Beasts. I don't want you to say anything more than that. That's no longer It's the no film. longer the case, correct. He's no longer in that film, correct? He was paid for it, but he does not star in the film. Okay, thank you. Now, what, if any, effect did the op-ed have on Mr. Depp's fan following? How does she determine that? I don't know if it, I don't think it had any effect on his fan following. Again, his Q scores didn't shift and he clearly has a strong fan base. In your opinion, what or who has caused the damage, if there is any, to Mr. Depp uh, on his career and reputation between December 18, 2018 and November 2, well, she's gonna say 2020? Depp. Objection, speculation. Over, overruled. Oh, Dennison, she's an expert. Mr. That's Depp. what she testifies about. And why do you say that? Literally her job. Well, again, filing the lawsuits, bringing to light the issues is Mr. Depp doing that uh, on his own accord uh, and any statements that were made uh, by his team, right, Mike, Mr. We'll Walden it, or we'll anyone take it else out of HD. Is, Sorry, is associated with Mr. Depp and those statements that came out, the defamatory statements, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, she's going to go with uh, us. Were also Section. put out by Mr. Depp's team. So in actuality, he's causing his own demise 
by bringing these lawsuits forward and continuing to kind of ignite the fire of negative publicity around both of them. Okay. Are all of your opinions to within a reasonable degree of probability or certainty? How would she to Mr. even damages? know that? It's her yes. opinion. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to move you to okay. Amber Heard's damages. Um, with respect to Amber Heard's claims for damages, on what subject have you been asked to offer your opinion? Going to the counter. So I was asked to look at the reputational harm and economic loss that Ms. Heard incurred due to the defamatory statements that Mr. Waldman on behalf of Mr. Depp made in April of uh, 2020. That calls for a legal conclusion as to on behalf of Mr. Depp. And what materials did you review you objected to that. in forming your opinions? Again, many of the same materials that I reviewed uh, for Mr. Depp's case, which was the deposition testimony, the pleadings, the discovery, all of that was included, as well as uh, expert testimony that was based on statistical analysis of negative social media campaigns that were created, as well as what happened. I talked to Ms. Hurd's agents. I read their depositions. I talked to her publicist. I read her deposition. I talked to Ms. Hurd herself to get a first person accounting of what happened from her perspective after those defamatory statements were made. And then I looked at the, you know, again, uh, emails back and forth and texts back and forth. It'll be uh, interesting with, how she ties damage uh, to this and didn't tie the damage. Studio Warner Brothers and to other Depp. producers that the management it team seems was contrary. working with to get Ms. Heard more work. We'll okay. see. If it is now, before contrary. I go into the questions that I'm going to ask, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of define this so that the, we're all on the same page going through it. We've the jury has seen the three defamatory statements. They're defending we'll twelve. Have to ask those in court who she's looking at. Twelve forty-six A and twelve forty-seven. Um, and I'm just going to refer to them as the Depp slash Waldman statements in asking you all these questions. Will you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. This witness okay, is Herd's. This is um, Herd's expert. She's supposed to describe to Amber Herd's career prior That's what they to do. the publication of the Depp Waldman. She's hired statements. by Herd's team. That's her job. So Amber's had uh, a long career for someone who is not. You know, it's fairly young still. She was in over 50 productions, uh, in, I believe including Aquaman and Justice League, but let's just say close to 50 productions. Uh, well, certainly 50 productions before the uh, defamatory statements were made. She had, you know, a consistent working actor's career. Her agents were strategic as she started getting more work that they wanted her to work with better and better directors to have, you know, the Danish pod, the Danish girl is a, a film and we that heard that. A strong director and a strong uh, from her agent claim. And then she went from that to getting justice league, which is on the bigger budget is the bigger scale movie. And then of course, Aquaman and Aquaman too. So her career was following a very nice steady rise and she was on the precipice of a meteoric rise with the, you know, with Aquaman and Aquaman 2 prior to the statements. Was Aquaman a successful film in terms of box office sales? Objection. Was it the uh, most Aquaman successful film? Aquaman was an extremely film successful ever. film. It made over a billion dollars. And I believe it is the highest grossing DC comic film ever. That's accurate. No. Better than the agent. What if any accolades did amber receive for her role in aquaman and i'm gonna call, sometimes i'll call it aquaman one just to make sure we don't get confused right so in aquaman one there they were will ask many about emails the audio that from leaked. the director and the producer and objection the hearsay she's just characterizing your she's not quoting them well, i don't know where it's going i'll, I'll overrule at the moment thank you stop at arguing back elaine emails from the director and the producer Stating that they loved her performance. Objection. Stating. You, 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 you can't say what the ah! said, but you can summarize them or characterize them. Can you do that? Accolading emails. Emails of accolade from her, uh, from the director and the producer. Objection, the hearsay. Overruled us today. Thank you. Okay. Um, what type of press opportunities did Amber have prior to the Depp Waldman statements? 
They're so going to have to the, talk the press about the really audio. Loved working with Amber. She was on the cover of many magazines after the Danish girl, after justice league, after Aquaman, she was the cover girl. I think it was of, um, Marie Claire or L in, in the UK. She had a cover story of a big magazine in Mexico and Australia. They were, you know, some magazine, one magazine called her woman of the year. Another one called her role model of the year. So she got a lot of press. Was that and after she, she released her press, statement? Both in magazines, but also on the press tours and the press junkets that she did for the films. You guys are and, telling and me that Superwoman earned those, more money than Aquaman. California style, Marie Claire, L uh, shape. Glamour. Yes, there was a lot Objection of them. leading. Yeah, overall. AF. There was a lot of them. So I, I mean, yeah, I, you know, don't remember all of them, but it was, you know, GQ, L, Marie Claire, you know, the big magazines, both here, the UK, um, East Europe, Eastern Europe in Latin America and in Australia. What about Teen Vogue? And what about after the release of Aquaman, which was December, 2018? How was her press then? Well, the press tour was doing well and they wanted to give her a lot more press. And I think up until the defamatory statements came out, she was on deck to do a lot of press. Uh, and then it-, it Objection, kind of, no foundation. Overruled. She would Please know that continue. from the agent. So the press and the request for press went silent after the defamatory statements were made and which then the negative social media campaign ensued after that. Now, what factors relating to social media does the enter entertainment industry rely on when considering an actor for a role? I'm interested in that. Social media becomes a big part of how studios decide to use an actor and actress in a film because they want to know how the general public feels about them. They want to know what the consumer feels about that actor. So when there's positive social media, that's a good thing for the actor. When there's negative social media, it can be very bad because not only how can social media negative? be directed at the actor or the actress themselves, but it can also be directed towards the movie towards the movie company, towards the product that the actor or actor is working with. So it becomes very complicated and it can get very messy to continue working with an actor or an She's actress. She's allowed to be biased. Of social media She's them. the hired expert for Amber Heard. after the Depp Waldman statement, This is an adversary proceeding. Media? The only person who shouldn't be biased is after the judge. After the Depp Waldman statement, social media blew up adversary with proceeding. negative tweets One side and Instagram together. posts and you know, She's been Facebook hired posts by a and side. Snapchat and trolling, as we call it. It was just negative. Uh, according to Mr. Schnell, there was over 1.2 million negative him. tweets about Amber using hashtags that used the words in the statement. What were the, the hashtags? Depp statements, uh, Depp Waldman statements, excuse me. What were the um, hashtags? That 1.2 million negative statements between April of 2020 and November or January yeah. of 21. It's a lot of negative publicity, and it yep. and there was just a lot of what we call noise around um, Ms. Heard and her work of any kind. Can you please describe to the jury what negative what a negative social campaign is? So, a negative social campaign would be when a a fan base, or in this case, a according to both the forensic statistical analyst, as well as Ms. Hurd's agents and pro uh, the product that she was working with L'Oreal and her publicist, it was a campaign that included both live uh, accounts, live Twitter, you know, people that actually have our individuals, as well as what we call- Objection, bots. may I be heard? All right, here come. So they're approaching regarding the bot accounts. I don't think we really got that deep into bot accounts with regard to the forensic um, social media analysis, whose testimony I was really interested in. And then it went off the rails into hashtag um, justice for Johnny Depp and hashtag Amber Turd and all those other hashtags and the negative press, but it didn't get into a percentage or proportion of bot accounts or anything like that. So I don't know how she can rely on that. It's not in evidence, but we will see. Um, but they are trying to get to this negative PR campaign that again, Amber Heard is going to say, but I've seen a lot of people saying this woman is biased. She's hired by Amber Heard's side. This is an adversary proceeding. So yes, there is going to be a lien that All helps right. Amber. These are witnesses to help her. Other than the bots, please describe the rest of the social media, the negative social media <laughs> campaign. Other than the bots. Thank you for reminding everyone Which about the, the bots. The fan base Elaine. was very energized by Mr. Is it the Depp Wald 
State yeah, let me. Are let you me confused, just Waldman? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I got my brain right now. I, it doesn't matter. Why don't I do this? Let it me doesn't matter. Question. How has the negative social media campaign been used against Amber Heard? It's your case in chief, Elaine. It should matter. Statements. Great. It should matter. So to the you. negative campaign has been used both to, you know, let's fire Amber off of Aquaman to the product that she was had an endorsement contract with with L'Oreal. The makeup and every time you know? that l'oreal mentioned amber heard and the product together they would get harassed her publicist How? company was harassed that's not okay uh, any kind of movie that she was related to or television project that she was related to got negative attention from the social media world even the uh the charities that she was involved with were getting hammered if you will or bombarded by negative social media which made it difficult to work with amber on any level because negativity was brought to their product service or uh, film okay and is that negative social media campaign ongoing to this day yes okay and you were talking a little bit before i think about uh, uh remove amber heard from aquaman 2 what were your observations with respect to that in connection to the waldman depths the depth waldman statements Again, the, the, the statements, I'm sorry, the social media campaign, whether called, you know, remove Amber from Aquaman or, you know, neg negativity for her relationship in that film, it always tended to use words that were inside the defamatory statements. They became hashtags, right? So, you know, if it was said in this, in the, in the defamatory statement, they were often reiterated in the tweets and the posts. Which is what he said. How difficult is it for an actor to repair this type of negative social media? Well, first of all, it has to stop. Okay, so once it stops, then an actor this might be their and best their witness team so far. can work slowly and patiently in both. Maybe it's press interviews. Maybe it's relationship with charity. Maybe it's hmm. a small role in a movie and they do well and they, they kind of rebuild their career. But it can take two, three, four, five years or more to rehabilitate your career. But first and foremost, it needs to stop. You know, it, it just needs to stop so that they can rebuild. The consumer can get beyond it and then they can reactivate their career by doing their work again. Describe Amber Heard's reputation after the Depp Waldman statements. Well, the reputation, I guess, depends on who who you're talking to, but in the public, it's been very negative. Um, in the industry, they like her work, but it's very they can't work with her right now That's again because every time her name is mentioned, the negativity flares up again. So it doesn't make sense for them to try to make a movie which costs millions of dollars and then have a lot of negativity. You don't want to have the negativity film or the TV show or the product. So her world has been silent in terms of opportunities and even things that, that she wanted to work on are no longer available to her. I believe all of this is true. Has Amber been able to obtain roles? How they're going the to pin Waldman this to the Waldman statements for a long versus time, no. the audio Not is going recently, to be difficult. She was able to do a small and that cuts both film. ways. Um, from some people out of um, who get their financing out of Europe. Uh, but up until that, no, she has not worked. Now, based on the fact that Amber came out of Aquaman, what should her opportunity, what would you have expected following the release of Aquaman? And her December agent got into this as well. Uh, up to what's going on now. <clears throat> I like to call Aquaman really you know, Amber Jason Heard's Momoa star star is born moment. It was that oh. moment where not only was she a good actor, but she was now world renowned because she was in the most successful film almost of all time, if not all time. And certainly for DC. No, Comics. stop she it. Was on the You've lost me. The very I was Jason I had such Momoa nice things to say about you. And she was the most strong successful movie of all time. It was just this extraordinary moment for her to, for her to career to take off. It right. is an extraordinary moment. It's a huge you know, film. Agents were excited. The producers were excited. It's a big budget excited. film. Uh, everybody just wanted to hit the ground running and let's do more. Everyone loves Jason Momoa. But it's not what the most successful movie of Amber's all time. What in Aquaman 2? So for a moment in time in February 2021, uh, there were conversations that Amber's 
I'm going to be technical with you. Her option for employment was not going to be exercised. So they may not have hired her again, even though she had a contract for it. There was some question as to whether she was going to be hired again on Aquaman 2. All right. And did ultimately then she still get hired for Aquaman 2? She did. Her management team fought very hard and they ultimately she uh, said ended she fought up hard hiring her, management her, but team. also not only because of what her management team did, but Jason Momoa, the star, and James Wan, the director, Jason Momoa committed did to her in an email mm -hmm. saying, if we are involved with hearsay, movie, objection, no hearsay. foundation, hearsay. Don't say hearsay. what the email said, just summarize it. I want to hear what Jason Momoa it. said oh, as much as the next girl, but it's hearsay. So you said you've testified like a million times. I'm just trying to understand this world. It's Jason always the Momoa same. And the director were adamant that she was in the objection film. here. So hard. Think the the rules of hearsay, hearsay are finite. Say that. Your honor, she doesn't have to be able to say that, Elaine. So your honor, she has to be able to say that. No, Elaine. Assurances. Not how that works. Mr. Momoa and Mr. Juan give Amber. That no, she would calls be for hearsay. Too. Calls Objection for hearsay. hearsay. Calls for hearsay. Rephrase, Elaine. Uh, rephrase the question. What if any? Uh, are you aware of any chemistry Did she have issues? A, oh, between Amber. Oh, and they're opening the door for the WB Aquaman. statement. According to the fact that they did a chemistry test with Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard and Jason Momoa in order for her to be hired, that is a good indication that they thought the two of them had good chemistry. Uh, obviously, when you look at the did movie, they have good chemistry and the poster, they have good chemistry. So I think it's general awareness that they had great chemistry. It's general awareness and they had great anything, chemistry? I'm uh, out. Would also suggest uh, with respect to Aquaman 2, uh, that Jason Momoa believed they had good chemistry. Calls for hearsay. He wanted her in the movie. Um, okay. That she's slow, Jonathan. I think she, she has to be able to rely she on it. She doesn't and, have to be able to say it, though, her. Elaine. Relying on it and forming an opinion and saying it in court are two totally fucking different things. Uh, in your review of all of the record evidence, what, if anything, did you say see in writing anywhere that there was ever any chemistry or creative issue with Amber she just opened the door Jason for that. Momoa from Aquaman 1. Mm -hmm. That's the door There were opening. no communications whatsoever that there was no chemistry okay. between the two. And and what, if anything, did you, in all the record evidence, did you see that the producer or Jason Momoa did not want Amber Heard in Aquaman 2? I did not see any evidence of that. Okay. In fact, the opposite, correct? Correct, again. I overrule. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, what, if any, leverage did Amber Heard have to renegotiate her salary under the circumstances of the discussions you were talking about with not exercising her option? She had zero leverage. She was fighting for her life to stay in the film. Okay. Now, is it typical for an actor to be able to negotiate an increase in their salary after a successful franchise? So you may know this already, and so I apologize if, if you heard fly it before, too close to the sun, though. Brought to your attention, but in a franchise such as a potential franchise as Justice League and Aquaman, the customs and practice is that the uh, studio will make a an agreement with the actor that incorporates potential future films. So if Justice League does well, they want to know what they're going to pay the actor for the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and in those. Uh, successive terms in the contract, the fee for that actor customarily goes up. It can go up by 10%, 20%, 100%, it could double, what have you. And in the case, as um, uh, Ms. Uh, Kovacevic stated in her testimony, that in a successful franchise, that a movie that's made a billion dollars, the actors uh, agents will go back and try to renegotiate that upcoming price tag. So if it was going to be X, they might want it to be two X or three X. And that's very standard in the industry to renegotiate your contracts when there's many films in one single contract that each have their own price points. Like what if any pirates? actors in Aquaman one were able to renegotiate their contracts? Uh, Jason Momoa renegotiated his contract very significantly from Shock, I'm shocked. Too. Color you me know shocked. Roughly how much more? Uh, it went up from the, you know, let's uh, somewhere between three and four million to 15 million. I'm shocked. 
Did Amber have a contract for Aquaman 1? Yes. How much was she paid for Aquaman 1? Aquaman 1, she was paid $2 million. Okay. And if we know that, and did that same contract uh, provide for if she was in Aquaman 2? I'm sorry, I apologize. Aquaman 1, I believe she got $1 million. Aquaman 2, she was supposed to get $2 million. I apologize. The numbers, there were a lot of numbers in that one contract. So Aquaman 1, it was $1 million. Aquaman 2, it was going to be $2 million. And I don't think that's a huge mistake. Now, based by on your experience at all. Uh, and knowledge in the industry, how much would Amber Heard have been able to negotiate uh, her contract but for the Depp Waldman statements? For Aquaman 2, I About know. four. Right. Well, so as you can see from Mr. Momo's contract, that went up exponentially up to $15 Wait, million. Girl. Um, Ms. Heard, I don't know if she would have gotten $15 million for the movie, but she certainly could have increased it by one or $2 million or even doubled it. So if it was That's two, fair. it could have been four That's fair. or even five or six, depending on the enthusiasm if it had just rolled from Aquaman 1 to Aquaman 2 without any of this negativity that was created by the Waldman, the Deb Waldman statements. That's fair. What if anything happened to Amber's role in so Aquaman? She lost a few Depp million Waldman dollars statement? is what I'm hearing. It was diminished. Okay. Now, why so would she Amber made a few have million dollars featured more. Uh, more prominently in Aquaman 2? What? Objection, no foundation. Yep, it's only a foundation. Okay. Um, what usually determines, or, 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 are you able to speak to whether Amber not should have been or would have been more prominently featured in Aquaman 2? Should she have been? Well, a couple of things. Just, Wait, I, I'm trying I, to get your foundation. Are you able to speak to that? Yes. Okay. And please, please tell, tell the what? basis of that and then your opinion. So there's two things. When two actors do well in a romantic relationship and, you know, they get married or they're going to have a baby, you know, you want to follow that through because part was of Aquaman what having a baby? did well in Aquaman was not only the action Spoilers. sequences, but to have a strong female character having a relationship with a strong male character, it's very empowering, right? So that was working for them in the first place. The poster of Aquaman that went around the world was the, one of the main posters was of the two of them together standing proud and strong right? Being that couple. And so naturally, as you go and develop scripts in the industry, you want to follow on the things that are working. And according to Ms. Heard, when she read the like first script for Aquaman 2, she Jack had a Sparrow? strong romantic arc yeah. for the entire film. And then she also got to do some great action sequences. Yeah, at I the feel end spoiled. Storyline in that script. Wait, is this? So oh. she was per featured predominantly throughout. Yeah, was the that an Aquaman, Aquaman 2 spoiler? When she first read it. Did that happen? Is that an Aquaman right. 2 spoiler? That there's a baby? Well, she didn't hear anything, so she wasn't getting the scripts when everyone spoiler, heard spoiler. comments were getting the scripts. She heard that through her agents. And then when she got the script, um, it was pared down from the first script dramatically. They had her in the hospital very shortly in the, in the first part of the movie called Act One. They had her in the hospital, and they pretty much had her in the hospital, and then she was going to do this action, action sequence in the end. She trained five hours a day for uh, several months with a trainer to do this big action sequence. And then when she got to set, two things happened. One, the costume designer said, I don't know what happened to your role. It got diminished. That's and objection two, hearsay. It's too okay. slow, right. Dennis. Go ahead with the second okay. one. That's and right. more importantly, though, this big action sequence that she was going to do in, in at the end of the movie in the third act was cut out and they took it away from her. So it was radically reduced from what it was in the script and what she even trained for uh, while she was preparing for the movie. And what if any changes were made to the storyline? Baby, I haven't baby. seen the movie yet okay. specifically, so I can't really speak to that yet. All right. And when you say she was in the hospital, what do you mean by was she injured in the first scene? I believe that in the in the first act of the movie, she was injured somehow or had something to do with the baby. I don't know exactly. I'm just baby. going with what Ms. Heard told me about was that she ends up in, in the hospital early in this new Aquaman 2 movie and doesn't really come out till the end, kind of wrap things up. But all of the interactions. Rotten Board's going, damn it, we've spoiled the plot of Aquaman 2. The, certainly the action scenes were taken out. Rotten Board knows the spoilers have happened. How has Amber typically the Aqua been baby involved is, in is out. emotions for her films? As we talked about earlier, actively involved in the press and the promotion, whether that was on the press junkets, what we call when they tour the world and they and the actors tour together and, and answer questions from the press at various screenings and film festivals. 
And then also she was, you know, on the cover of magazines, usually after her, her movie, especially after Justice League. I think you just spoiled And how was the promotion of Aquaman 2 affected by the Depp Walden statement? Sorry, y'all. Amber has not been involved in any of the Big promotion spoilers. that's been done to date or very little, particularly in a, in a teasers Horns. that I've seen. Rotten Horns anticipating the call the from the studio, the of and yelling so about the spoilers in, in trial. And also very specifically, just waiting there to be was a at. big event that Warner Brothers um, put on during the fandom. I think it's a DC fandom event, which is a big kind of like Comic-Con style event. And they invited I've all of the actors, the majority of the actors that had strong roles in film to participate both in the posters and the artwork and also participate at, at, at DC fandom. He and might have been swallowing was not invited on. to either be in the poster or be at the event. And in fact, they told her she cannot come. She might have been a safety risk. Now, can, to be fair, with all the hate online, Amber's it might have been a risk to her. allowed to be in any of the promotional materials? Absolutely. I, it means that nobody knows about her. She doesn't have the same part in the film. It's not going to take her on to Wait, I thought she movie. was a big, huge star. What do you she's mean nobody knows about them? She's not associated with the tremendous amount of promotion that's going to be made for this, you know, movie that everybody's looking forward to see. So she's not a part of it because of this negative. You're campaign. saying she's a big, huge star. She's had How her star is born Dead moment to nobody knows about her because she's not a DC fandom. TV project promotions for Amber. Wait, DC fandom happens on so, the line? Uh, Prior to the defamatory statement, that's not Comic Con. But either around the, you know, after or around the time that Aquaman one uh, came out, she was in the the TV show called The Stand. It was based on a Stephen the King novel. Stand. So big book. There was a you know, resonance. It's going to be a big TV show. And again, um, Miss Heard didn't do any press or promotion for that for the same reasons. And what if any plans were there to have Amber Heard on the cover of L.A. Style? Of relating to stand before the Deb Baldwin statements. Right. So Ms. Heard was in an, uh, they had done an article about her Lost participation the cover of in this Style. TV show, The Stand, the Stephen King novel uh, related uh, TV show. And they were going to give her the cover picture and cover story. And they took that away. I don't know if it even, if the article when? existed, but they certainly took away the cover. When did they take the it away? Story. Okay. How have the Deb Baldwin statements affected press requests for Amber? She there aren't any. How does she know that? So, so yes, they affected it because there used to be a lot of press requests, and now there are, aren't any. Has Amber Heard obtained any roles since the Deb Baldwin statement? Again, uh, uh, for many years, no. For a good period of time, or a year and a half, two years, until she got this small movie called The Independent uh, Into the Fire. Okay. Has Amber obtained any studio movie roles since the Deb Baldwin statements? No. How, if at all, have Amber's philanthropic opportunities been affected by Depp Waldman statements? Again, she had some passion projects. She was invited to do some her philanthropic work, efforts, her like passion projects, pledging she, more money, you know, loved and wanted to be involved with it, even travel for or donating. Uh, but it? they decided it wasn't going to be a good idea because like donating to the Children's Hospital, the social media negativity cam, you know, campaign starts up again. So she hasn't been able to do any for charity work. What is an endorsement? Hasn't been able to do any charity work. So an endorsement is when a, an actor associates themselves with a product, either for print promotion or commercials, you know, like Jennifer Aniston doing the water, you know, or uh, Matt McConaughey doing the car commercial. That's a product endorsement. He's paid to say that the product is good and be associated you with You mean the, the smart water that's sitting there on the stand how, with you? How that was well played. Look at that. The in the entertainment Hashtag not industry. sponsored. <laughs> Well, very, very important Anderson on two smart levels. Water rate. One, I'm not fucking that up. Bring a good amount of income to them when they're not shooting a movie, so it's a good way to make money in between film roles. And then also, it shows the studios and the production executives and the financiers that the actor is relevant in the community because they're being associated with the product. So if it's a well-known product, that's really great. If it's a medium product, that's great, and so forth and so on. So you want to be, if you can, and if that's something that you like to do, not everybody does, but if they like to do that, then they can get a lot of um, value out of those product endorsements to the get the to see that there's a connection with the consumer, not just on the film, but also with product. Did Amber have any endorsement activities prior to the publication of the Depp Waldman statements? L'Oreal? Yes. Please explain. So Amber was Good hired question. by uh, L'Oreal to be a product and uh, endorse their product. Was she fired? Headline. And she had a $1.5 million contract for two years. Um, and they were able to uh, 
uh, work. They had 20 days of her work. You know, they had the right to, to work with her for 20 days. And uh, she started the work. And then when the defamatory statements came out, they essentially put a pause on working with her. How does so that align they with no longer brought her to photo shoots. They no longer had do, her do public events for the product. And it basically said, we love you, but we can't work with you right now because it's just too objection much. Objection well, hearsay. That's hearsay. All right. I, I'll sustain the objection. No okay. question. Um, have Mr. Have the Depp I don't know why they haven't asked about it. that deal in any way? I don't know why they haven't talked about it. With L'Oreal. Well, A, they put it on away. pause and haven't done any of the work. So she's not out there in the public eye. This other attorney product. next to and her is Needlehoff. They uh, have My cat decided to Needlehoft. continue working with her at some point. Once, as I said, this all quiets down, this trial is over, and, and hopefully the negative campaigns will stop. Uh, so they extended her contract, but they did not pay her for that extension. And has Amber been hired for any other endorsement deals since the Deb Waldman statements? No. Now, did you assess Amber's losses as a result of the Depp Waldman statement? Yes, please explain to us how yes. we got to $100 million. To We're assess. all dying to know. Well, first of all, I looked at Amber's career directly. So I wanted to see, you know, as I said earlier, she worked consistently and then she was on this kind of very large upswing with the big movies, Justice League and Aquaman and, and all of that, and the stand with That's the Stephen a fair upswing. project. Um, and then it stopped, right? So like off her cliff, work like stopped. And then I looked at other actors that kind of grew up at the same time frame, grew up meaning they started their career and had the same time frame to start going from the smaller projects to the well-known director projects to the big movie projects. I want to see who she said she grew up And I looked at those with. actors and I then saw after they had their stars for a moment, if you will, I wanted to see where their careers went. So I looked Ooh. at several actors to see, including Jason Momoa, his, her, her co-star, to see what happened in their Jason careers Momoa. after... Okay such a successful film as Aquaman uh, came out. So they're basing some of this on Jason Momoa. Why did you that method of analysis? It's a very common methodology in the entertainment industry to work with what we call comps. I think Ms. Kovacevic even used that word comp. Um, like buying for, a house? So you, you know, with films, you try to find you don't comparable pay for the films. Whole thing. With actors, you look to see comparable actors. So you can kind of, it's not a distinct actual, this is going to happen, but this is the probability with a reasonable certainty that with the right management team that she had and her acting ability and her looks and the press that she was getting and should have continued to get that her career would have been similar. It's to fair to say actors. her career was on an upstream. Have you used that swing. method in other cases in which you've been an expert but, on damages? Yes, I have. Who did you select as comparable actors for your comparison? I want to know this too. Well, I wanted to look at actors that were in superhero films that had done really well at the box office. So I, I looked at Jason Momoa, her co-star. I looked at Gal Gadot, who was uh, is is in Wonder Woman. We know uh, who she I is. looked at. Um, Anna de Armas, who was in, um, uh, ba, 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 she ba, can't ba. remember Blade That's... Runner. Thank you. Blade Runner. Um, I looked at Zendaya who was in Spider-Man and I looked at Chris Pine who was in Star Trek and also Wonder Woman about the, you know, similar age range, Chris, all attractive Pine? actors, all with good acting skills, all able to do stunts. So I was, it's not, there are not that many actors to look at who do superhero characters. So it was a small pool to work from, but I took a wide range from those actors, both men and women, to see what was, what could potentially happen to Miss Hurd's career. Do you consider all of them to be identical for purposes of measurement? Oh, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, no two actors are identical. You can only look with that within a range of characteristics. Yes, because Gia was uh, the lead named character. Management team and so forth. Zendaya had a much and, larger and role in Spider-Man. Mr. Banya. And uh, has been in. Did you review Mr. Banya's numerous Q's other movies that are very popular. regarding the comparables you used? Yes, and I did. Zendaya is amazing. And what, if any, opinions have you formed in reviewing this? She's Banya's also been in popular TV. She seems to have a lot more work. Selected. So, Mr. Banya mm -hmm. looked at calendar years to assess so what happened in december of you know 2017 or i think these actors are more established June, too what happened in a very specific time frame which like, works on some statistical analysis chat, but i agree with you that's about just actors those are her assumptions to q scores q scores are related to the actor's viability in the consumer's mind if you will how well known or how much She's they're coming up in conversation roles, except and like so mr Pine. banny did not look at time periods of the actors that I compared them with to the film when it came out. So like right after all the of those who were co-stars had larger parts than she but had as Mira, I think. Just look at them in a year range. So 
it doesn't coincide from actor to actor just because you look at it over time. You have to look at it specifically after each of those individuals box office success with a particular film, you look at the Q score high or low during that, and then you look at how low it drops. No, I agree that Chris Pine was the lead in Star Trek. I think they're trying to compare on the DC or another universe. event that brings them into the, 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 the limelight again. So it's not about time. It's a, a related to a specific activity or event. I'm sure Zendaya not is not thrilled that her okay. name has come what up. What did your this. comparison show in terms of films? We can that just talking about her being a queen in the chat. Like you guys can keep giving your Zendaya love in the chat. I'm here for it. I'm so talking about the comparables. Very good use of our attention. In terms of their, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand. Uh, well, neither do we, what, but I wasn't talking. What happened with these other actors after they had their stars? Oh, unrelated to Q scores. Were, right, right, right. Oh, okay, sorry. So all those actors' careers, you know the ones I mentioned, they all either were a steady rise or even a meteoric rise in, in terms of where their career went after their star is born moment. Then they got some other good films, and maybe they got another film that performed Game extremely of Thrones. well. So it was a range, but they all were on an upward trajectory without a doubt. And what does this mean for Amber? With a reason, I mean, the way that the, the, the kind of industry works is usually, unless there is an, a force majeure or some really negative event, her career should Audio? have followed that same upward swing in, Audio. in about the same time frame, it, give or take six months to a year. This was probably done but before you, It would be very June. reasonable to, to believe that her career would have been on an upward trajectory within the range of those other actors. What if any comparisons did you make respecting endorsement deals of these actors with Amber? You know, again, all those actors that we've talked about all did multiple endorsement deals after their big movies or after their big series of movies. You know, Jason Momoa is on, you know, Rocket Mortgage and Harley Davidson, as well as, you know, five or six other companies. Zendaya is Lancome and Fashion and Water and Jewelry and Gal Gadot and Chris Pine and, 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 and Anna de Armas, they've all done either a couple or many, and all of them have associated okay. with a Stop comparing fan, her to Zendaya. Uh, unlike Amber, who hasn't done even been able to work on the one contract that she had. She certainly didn't get any others. So what did your analysis show with respect to Amber Heard's losses, but for the Depp Waldman statements? They were significant. If, if we follow the trajectory of her, you know, her colleagues. team is wasting a well, lot of time with re asking Aquaman this. Too. What would she have realized there? Could have, not would have. Well, could as I have. stated earlier, could so have. Um, from Aquaman one to two, Chad, it I agree. went from a million dollars to two million dollars. Right? So that Comparisons was a pre written contract. For me. It doubled. So the agents were very excited after the success of Aquaman to go and negotiate a much higher uh, fee, like they did for Jason Momoa. They weren't able to do that. So in that instance alone, it was more than likely a two million dollar loss just from that movie alone. So two to four, you had said before. It could have been four. Could Objection have been leading. Sustain. Right. Okay. Guys, look what Dr. Um, Beep. What about Dr. Other P's getting us through the rest of trial? So once as as Amber's agent, Ms. Kovac. Kovac wait, there better okay. not be. Kovac, okay. Kovac, 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 Kovac. I was doing okay. Uh, Ms. Kovac said that once you get that quote of the $2 million from Aquaman 2, that kind of was like the baseline for any other movie she would have done. So any other studio movie would have started from there and depending on the success of Aquaman and how much press she did, maybe she worked on another great director, independent film, whatever, that $2 million for a studio film and had it jump to 4 million uh, with the renegotiation, that then would have been the basis. So any future studio film, uh, that she would have done any big budget film would have been the basis at 4 million. And then most, likely have gone up from there if she was able to get others, which she should have, just like the other actors. Let's talk about TV for a minute. What would those losses? I don't know if this is her last witness. It might be. Well, on the stand, which was, you know, about the same time as Aquaman, but got the press and the promotion got cut off because of the defamatory statements and the negative campaign. She got paid $200,000 an episode on the stand. So on a TV series of nine episodes, it's $1.8 million. So if she had, again, done other TV shows, it's very likely that whether she worked with a streamer or with one of the networks, that that fee would have gone up from there. Her agents would have been able to use the leverage of the success of Aquaman 2 to put her, if she had done another television show, given rise to even a higher episodic likely? fee 
some actors go up to one million dollars oh, so an episode. Jason Momoa is uh, in the in his TV show got one million dollars. So there's a, a you know an exponential range of where she could have gone. Right. There's a new what statement about, about them not calling Depp. I'll talk about it at the break. Same thing, you know, all the other actors were doing over the course of a couple years period, you know, anywhere from five, six, seven other endorsement deals. And Ms. Heard realistically should have gotten endorsement deals and other categories. L'Oreal is makeup, so probably not in makeup, but maybe water or clothing or jewelry or wellness or it could have been anything else and so she too should have it's hard to calculate a reasonable degree of certainty on other contract deals based on the success of the films that she's been associated with and the tv shows she's been and associated what would with. that have translated into in terms of dollars? so in terms of dollars okay so if it was 1.5 million dollars for l'oreal for a two-year contract and let's give her four other 1.5 or two million dollar deals which all those other actors you know, especially the my math isn't gotten, mathing to get to 100. Then you're looking at an additional eight million dollars of income over time. I'm not saying this is in one period. We're looking at as over what far period back of time? as the defamatory statements of 2020 to now, which is almost two years. And again, as I said earlier, even when this is quiet, it will take three to five years for her to rehabilitate her career if she can. So we have to look at it as a period of a minimum of five years. So when I say $8 million for endorsement contracts, it would have been over time. Okay. Uh, what if any losses relating to production or film activities? Well, again, these so are the actors five years that to we rehab her career if she uh, can. And there's a wide range of them. Some of them did bigger films and some of them did gigantic films, but it is very reasonable to assume that once you are in an, an Aquaman style film, you'll either continue to do those, right? Some of these franchises, as we know, go for five, six films, or she would probably have been in another studio film that had nothing to do with Aquaman. But again, so over the course of five years, it's very reasonable to consider that she would have been in at least one film a year at a minimum of $4 million, because that's what her precedent would have been had she renegotiated. And it's important to note that in her, in her Justice League contract, had there, if there is a Aquaman That's three, not a Momoa Her price is set at mil. $4 million. So it's very reasonable to assume was set. and to believe that if she did a film a year for five years at a minimum of $4 million a year without any negotiation, which probably would have happened, but let's just say that baseline that would be another $20 million over that time frame. What, if any, opinions do you have about Amber Heard's earning power over time? That it, it would continue to rise. It's, it's customary in the industry, as I've talked about earlier, that the negotiations, um, especially with her agents at William Morris, her fees would have gone higher. So I'm just using the baseline without any ability to foresee in the future that I already know she got negotiated for $4 million for Aquaman 3. So if we use that as a baseline minimum, but it very well would have gone up had her agents done the work that they wanted to do. So combining all of these opinions and calculations that you've had, what if any range are the losses you are estimating for Amber Heard, but for the Deb Waldman statements? Right. So again, it's really important that, that I looked at and, and hopefully you understand this, that it's over time, right? So let's just say a minimum of five years. It's over time. She keeps saying it's over time. It's over time. It's over time. More, but at minimum, if you look at the film, the television and the endorsement contracts, it's very likely that Ms. Heard should have earned between 45 and $50 million over that time period. Are all your opinions to within a reasonable degree of probability or certainty? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess, ladies and gentlemen. Do not do any outside research and do not discuss this case. Did she anybody. give a range of losses? Did I space out? Yes, what did she give yeah, a range of losses? That's fine. Chat, I missed it. What was no, her range okay. of losses? I thought there was a new question. You. Give me the number she gave. Range of losses, because I... Is reminder court is still in session, please? Gal she's talking to the gallery. The jury's walking out and she's reminding the gallery the court's still in session. Because I think that did, I don't remember the range. No. Um, 40 to 50 million. All right. So let's oh, 45 to 50 million. Thank you, Chad. All right. Thank you.
So they're taking the afternoon break. And while they take the afternoon break, we're going to do a quick check-in. And then we will, um, oh, the judge isn't, I mean, nobody's moving yet. And Amber Heard's walking out. I wonder if the judge just walked out because she was walking out quick. So 45 to 50 million is definitely not 100 million. They're going to have to ask on cross about the audio. We're going to just peek in with where we're at subwise and answer your questions because we've got a little bit of a break. So um, I think they gave an Aquaman spoiler, but let's, we're going to go to the Twitters real quick because there is a new uh, tweet from Chanley Painter from Court TV. Uh, and let's go see what that says because we've got information about this. So let's just, all right, let's go to the Twitters. The Twitter is, um, Chanley Pater <clears throat> is in court for court TV. Um, what do you think Amber Heard's team had a sudden change of heart recalling Johnny Depp? No, Johnny Amber Heard's team apparently changed their mind. It will not be calling Jepp not be calling Johnny Depp back to the witness stand. Heard's team is running out of time to present their evidence. At the beginning of the week, they only had eight hours to use in their case. We know that. Statement issued to the media. Calling Depp back to the stand would be as relevant to us as a bicycle to a fish. Girl, this is not, this is not directed at Chanley Painter. This is directed at whoever released this statement. We're going to come back in a minute. They released a statement to the press. Heard's team released a statement to the press that they were calling Depp back to the stand. Are they just trying to get people to watch their case in chief at this point? It, it, you released the statement saying that you were calling him to the stand. So to have such a strong statement makes literally none of the sense. Calling Depp back to the stand would be as relevant to us as a bicycle to a fish. Objection relevance. Everything Depp has testified up... Everything... This sentence is hard for me. Everything Depp has testified to up to this point has been irrelevant to the heart of this case, and there's no reason to believe it would be any different now. Huh. This statement is from a source close to Amber Heard this afternoon after her team changed their mind in calling Depp to the stand. Um, um, uh, that's a, that's an interesting choice. That's an interesting choice. That's an inter that was an interesting choice. That's an interesting statement as relevant to us as a bicycle to a fish. What's the bicycle fish reference? I feel like I feel like I'm getting Drew Barrymore. But is that a fish may love a bird, Signore? But where would they live? Is that the is that the reference that my brain has gone to? All right, let us go to the chat. Um is it a spoiler if something already Let's see if something is already established in the comics is the whole film series not based on the comics. It is. I just don't know the DC comics. I'm legitimately curious how the difference plays out. I don't know. I guess it's not. Um, if it's, if it's in the comics, I don't know. So you guys, thank you so much for, is it an Aquaman reference? Dr. Seuss reference? I don't know. <laughs> Fish can't ride bicycles. I don't know. Didn't the judge instruct no statements? Yes, they did. The bicycle is a Dr. Seuss reference. Uh, fantastic. All right. Let us get to some of the questions. Y'all. Thank you. We're now, we're now on the push to like 490,000, I guess that's where we're at. So thank you all for the 150,000 of you in here. Question fatigue. Perhaps Depp was jaded. Very common for a 40 year old career. Um, 40 plus career to have its ups and downs. A person's life has trials and tribulations. Ridiculous to expect someone's career may stay hundred percent for more than four years. That had to do with uh, the damages. And again, this damages expert, this is their job to talk about damages for both. I want to see Emily and Elaine in a room for 15 minutes. Maybe you'll be able to teach her how to ask better questions. No, but I, I do have some questions for her. Has Aquaman pledged a salary to Amber? No idea. It seems that that's what they were talking about, that there was a $4 million salary. Question, why didn't she compare her Daisy Ridley or Adam Driver? They're now earning um, 20 million USD. I don't know. I don't know why she, how she picked who she picked. I don't think she wanted to get into the Star Wars universe. I think she was trying to stay to people who had a tangential relation or a direct relation to the DC universe. I think it's fair not to branch out to the Star Wars universe, different universes. And it would be easier to discount. Well, that's a different universe. Star Wars isn't DC, right? Because it's not. Um I mean, DC isn't Star Wars. I'm still shocked that no one has mentioned the fact that uh, Heard played Spencer Reed's love interest in, two, in 
2006 episodes of Criminal Minds. That's legit the only place I know her from. And those comments are the thing that hurts listening to this testimony because a lot of you are like, I didn't know who she was before this. Why is there a webcam behind Amber's team? It looks like um, it could see their screen or even the jury. It might be court security, but I saw that. I don't know if there's one on the other side. We can ask those that are in court that question. I don't know if they know. Um, it might be a good question for Rob from Law and Lumber. He practices in these courts to know if that's something that's regularly in there or if that's something that's just in here for this. Question, isn't all of this conjecture? Yes. Wasn't it testified to that she got $1 million for Aquaman 1 and $2 million for Aquaman 2? Isn't her conjecture off? No, she based it on, you know, expert opinion. Hey, this is the trajectory I'm seeing, and so we get to get to this trajectory I'm seeing. Um, no, if Amber Heard loses... She will pay whatever the jury says she will pay, and the jury could issue none if they wanted to. Question, why hasn't Vanessa Paradis testified on Johnny Depp's behalf? I don't know. Uh, they might not have called Vanessa to do that. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Thank you. Appreciate it. That is that is a good catch. I was trying to place it. That's a fantastic catch. Calling Depp back to the stand would take up too much of our poorly budgeted time. Feels more accurate. Yeah, but I don't know how they're going to establish agency. So I don't know why Paradise wasn't called, but she wasn't question, but wasn't she pregnant and COVID? Um, I don't think she was pregnant. I think she had a child via surrogate. I don't think she was pregnant and surrogacy is a, a way to go. I don't think she was pregnant. Um, and COVID would have halted a lot of this. Nobody's asked about the impact of COVID. How do you think team hurt is looking after this witness? I think this witness is very good as to damages. I think in defamation per se, you don't have to prove damages. I still don't think we're getting 200 million, but I think she said, look, Amber Heard's, Amber Heard's career was going like this. This was the most listenable and I think one of the seeming more credible witnesses that Heard is called. Um, and I think she said, look, this career was, her career was going in an upward trajectory. It's fair. You land a blockbuster, big budget movie that your career should go in an upward trajectory. And after this, it goes down. How this expert pins it to, and this is a problem for both parties. How do you pin it to the defamatory statements and not also pin it to the leaked audio and other things? That is a problem for both sides that both sides have to deal with in this case. So thank you. I was trying to remember the fish bicycle and that's not what came up. So thank you for the Gloria Steinem um, um, reminder, everyone. If Depp has no losses because he has no contract yet, why is she losing? Why is she losing 50 million when she has no contracts either? It's all speculative and the jury gets to decide who lost what. How is Amber Heard's career path comparable to Gail Godot? I don't know. Uh, Godot was a badass in Fast and Furious and she can act. Yeah, and she's fucking Wonder Woman assuming um what if what this expert says is true regarding the statements directly losing her money doesn't it only matter if the statements are false well yes in defamation you have to prove damages but falsity is a huge part of it we went through the elements of defamation in last week's podcast and that's up audio and video on the channel so episode 143 i go over um the instruction for defamation and then i go over some of the evaluating credibility of witnesses and we'll go over it again but yes Damages don't matter unless you have defamation. And even then, defamation per se, meaning it's assumed to be reputationally damaging, but you don't have to prove damages, can come up. Um, so the jury could find def defamation, find its defamation per se, and say, none of you have been damaged. Y'all, There's too much to determine damages. Because again, it's the same with DEP. Is it the, is it the op-ed? Is it other articles? Is it the TRO being filed? Is it the UK case? Is it the UK? You know, what is it? And pinning damages can be hard. Have you seen an interview with Bruckheimer where he said there are two scripts that are out there for Pirate 6, one with Depp and one, yay, we banged one not seems as if they're waiting for something. I have not seen that. Um, but again, I, I'm sure I will go look for more stuff. I will be looking for more stuff around all of this once this trial's over. Um, Eddie Acosta said, Hey, I just found your channel. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, would you consider doing a mock closing statement the last day of trial? I think I've given one. I think I've given a couple. Um, but on the last day of trial, it might be hard if we have time, but I, I keep giving them in the middle of arguing about stuff. If it's proven the Waldman accusations are true, it's no longer defamation. A defamatory statement must be false, which is why I don't think both of them can win. Because if you're calling her essentially a fraud, a hoaxer, and a liar, and you're finding that she defamed Johnny Depp, then that's not defaming her, 
right? Because you're finding that those things are true. If they don't find it's true, I think they both can lose, but I don't think they both can win. Is it common to consider a witness an expert um, when it seemed to not have worked in the industry for a while? The, the background can be true. I mean, she had a very long resume and a lot of years of expertise in it and then is doing this work as an expert. So yes, it's totally fine. Um, when will Jennifer Howell's deposition be played? After we get into Depp's case in chief, we have to get out of Heard's case and we're not out of Heard's case yet. And we are running out of daylight today. It is um, it is almost four o'clock in the East. So we are running out of daylight for today. So no, I, uh, I don't know. Amber Heard didn't deny what she did to Johnny Depp in Australia in his recording. Can that impact her? Um, I, I would have to look at which recording it was that was played to the jury, but yes, everything can impact you, especially if there's an artful cross-examination. Do you think cross-exam will touch on the fact that none of the actors mentioned willingly became polarizing figures in the face of domestic abuse? I mean, it's possible to ask, did her own op-ed put a target on her? And again, the op-ed says, that she faced the wrath, that she reported DV and faced the wrath. And the chat brought this up earlier and I saw it in a super chat earlier. So if she's saying she faced our culture's wrath for speaking up against DV, that goes back to her, um, that goes back to her TRO, presumably. And the TRO was in, hold on, I have a note. The TRO was filed in what, 2016? So if the TRO is filed in 2016, and then she's talking about facing, facing our culture's wrath in her op-ed in 2018, and Hollywood is protecting a powerful man, wasn't the downward trajectory there? But then they're going to argue, no, Aquaman happened. Um, Aquaman happened between the TRO and the op-ed. So it's not the op-ed. That's, I think, the argument there. I had no idea who Amber Heard was other than her relationship to day JD. And I'm in the entertainment in industry and a film addict. She didn't star in Aquaman, and she's always been a co-star. 20 mil would seem a massive stretch. The jury might think so, too. They keep stretching with Aquaman being the most successful movie of all time ever. Like, why the hyperbole, y'all? Why the hyperbole? I'm going to see if there's anything that um, Chanley Painter has had to say. Um, new. Let's see. Nothing new. Let's see if um, James from court has tweeted. I'm going to go look and see if there's any tweets about how the jury is responding to things. Um, jurors are not liking this testimony. At least three to four of them are expressing negative facial expressions. That was uh, two hours ago. So that was during the doctor. Doctor dislikable, I think, is where we're at. I heard audio from court. Let's see. I heard audio. Let's read. Uh, well, I heard audio. And now it's gone. Let's see what happens. All right. That's where we're at on that. Let's see if there are any other statements from the Twitters. Remember Sam Worthington? Not Worthington Ford? No. Um, he was the main character in Avatar, had the highest grossing movie up until Infinity Ward. Now where is he? There is a precedent for people falling out. That happens too. Is that the name of the, the lead actor in, in Avatar? I didn't know that. Um, isn't Avatar 2 coming out? Clarification, please. All statements re- Heard loses same scale should apply to Johnny. Um, we're pricing things that have not occurred. Yeah, the same stuff will apply. So it, it's again, this testimony is a double edged sword for everybody. Um, because again, how do you track lost opportunity? And that's what these experts are trying to do. How do you calculate the opportunities you don't get because of this? So that's what it is. What happens if the jurors fall asleep? Um, Generally, another juror will tap them. Sometimes the bailiff will go up and just be like, hey there, court's still happening, but it does happen. Surely the box office success on a film doesn't reflect the individual actor's success for the role. I think it's a way to gauge the level of film saying like saying an Aquaman movie is a different le level than like an independent film, I think is fair to say that it, it implicates their rise to stardom differently. Um, hope you see this. It's not a spoiler because comics. Um, how many times has Marvel deviated from the comics? The movies are based on the comics, not a spoiler. Okay, that's fair. So there we go. Um, love from PA. Thank you. You're welcome. Why is it that we can't assume JD loses Pirate 6? However, they can't assume Amber loses for the next five years. Well, because that's their testimony, but I think the jury's going to be the same way uh, you are going well. He had a price set for Pirate 6. There was a rate locked, but the project hadn't happened yet, so it's speculative. Just like with her, she had a rate locked for Aquaman 3, so it's speculative as to her. It's fair. Um, 
lawyer Andrea Burkhart tweeted, there is a law in Virginia saying cross X is basic right, which can't be denied by time limits. Her team will risk it. That's interesting. I'll go look that up. Um, I don't practice in Virginia, but I will look that up. I wonder if that's in a civil context or a criminal context, because those are two different things. Um, can't Johnny do the same? I mean, call similar. He already did. Okay, sure. While we do that, can we have the witness take this? Um, so they're approaching. So that's what's happening right now. We're going to see where we are because we've now zoom zoomed past 483. So for all the 147 of you, thank you guys um, for the support. They are up at the bench. We're going to pull that up. Question, if Disney was worried about losing time and money with JD, what happened because of Australia accident? It uh, Doesn't it make Amber Heard responsible for it? Only if you believe Amber Heard's responsible for the finger, which they are arguing she is not. So, um, hi from Estonia. Hello, first time catching you live. Thank you. My husband, psychoanalyst, laughed his ass off along with me while listening to Spiegel. It, that Spiegel was an adventure. I'm going to have to rewatch. That might be a whole podcast episode of its own. Question is the hand is hand the big guy from Warner Brothers testifying your tomorrow? Sound mixer? Don't know. Excuse me, your sound mixer? Yes. All right, ready for jury? Mm. It's up to you. The sound mixer is a comment going maybe to the white noise that plays while they're at sidebar. Could this swing the other way for Depp? Hugh Grant. I don't know. We've already had Depp's experts. They're going to try to do it. Rottenborn looks like he's standing up slowly. He's like, I'm up. I'm up. I'm tired. I'm here. Ugh. And it looks, it looks, it's a lot darker in the courtroom today. I don't know if all the blinds are closed or if it's the weather. It's very gray here today. Um, just wanted to say thank you for all the time and hard work. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. I mean, happy and tired. Question chain of causation came into consideration if no actual evidence of abuse in the first place. I think um, that's the entire argument during closing from Depp's team. Question, what does the pandemic come in? I don't know why nobody's brought it up. All right, you can be seated. All right, I don't cross-examination. Do you think they'll bring up the Warner Brothers press release? Good afternoon, Ms. Hello, how are you? Uh, great. We're great, So Jefferson. you've repeatedly testified about what uh, you were asking. goes to damages, yep. Depp Waldman statements. Two damages. Oh, let's make Ms. it bigger. You don't have any knowledge whether Mr. Depp knew of the statements that Mr. Waldman made. Do you? Only with association with Mr. Waldman, correct. You don't know when the first time Mr. Depp learned about those statements? I don't know. No. And the association you're talking about is that Mr. Waldman worked from time to time as Mr. Depp's attorney, correct? Action, Your Honor, Very I'm carefully. Approach. Okay. Really? So the association with Depp, again, to get to the Waldman statements being defamatory, you've got to get to the fact that Waldman was an agent for Depp at the time the statements were made and other things. So it's it's asking, why are you assuming that these statements are attributable to Depp? Do you think they're forcing Whitney to be there? Like, I don't know. She's testified. I don't know if she wants to be there. She had mad face on uh, the other day when she was in court. Uh the judge looks dumbfounded. Like, is this the argument I'm hearing right now? So we'll see. Um, could they have made a pretrial motion not to discuss COVID or afraid it could be used against JD's claim? It, if it, if it applies for one, it applies to all. Um, Rachel, it's okay. I never assume super chats. I try to get to questions that are chatted and not chatted. Um, so you being here is supporting the channel and I appreciate it. Everything else is tremendously generous and I am always grateful. I'm always surprised. All right. I understand that you're uh, testifying as a damages expert. So and the court said kind of move two on. Hats, talking both about Mr. Depp's damages so the court said kind and of move about on, which is fair. Uh, Ms. Hurd's purported damages. Um, let's talk about Mrs. Her Ms. Hurd's damages first. You understand that you have to testify as to damages that resulted from the Waldman statements, correct? That was my analysis. Most of your testimony, however, Likely. was just simply testimony about things that occurred after the Waldman statements. That's what I was tasked with. Yes. Right. The, the mere fact that the mere fact that there were activities after the Waldman statements doesn't establish 
that the Waldman statements caused any damages, does it? When you look at the time frame of when the Waldman statements came out and you look at what was going on with Ms. Hurd's career prior to the statements and what happened after the statements, it's very clear to make that correlation that they were caused by those statements and the campaign that followed afterwards in terms of the negative social media. All right, that's an interesting thing because the witness this morning uh, actually described the, the, uh, the notion of what's correlation and what's causation. And correlation does not imply causation, does it, ma'am? I'm not an expert in semantics. <laughs> okay. But you're an expert who is purporting to say that uh, Ms. Heard lost $45 million. Snappy. I'm trying to understand where you Correlation and causation is not semantics, between though. Between the Waldman statements and all the other activity that occurred since then. As I stated and very clearly wanted to make sure that, that everybody understood was that it was a time frame under, you know, between which the Waldman statements were made and the negative decline in her career. I agree with you, it's not semantics. happening and, and in discussions with her agents and semantics. her publicists, there was a very tight timeline and a very oh, close was, link it was to sassy. when those statements came out and when everything sassy. started pulling away from this hurt. Right, but the, it's what funny. you're talking about is, a, is just a link in time. You, you do not put any causal connection between what Mr. Waldman purportedly said and the damages that, that Ms. Heard purportedly suffered. You have no idea whether Mr. Waldman's statements uh, and again, caused cuts any both damage ways. to Ms. Heard, do you? Well, actually, both the words oh, in the statements were used as hashtags in the campaign, as well as when the statistical and the investigative analysis was done on the social media campaign, it turned out that one in four of the statements were had walled men or walled minion in them. So that was another connection that I was able to make between the defamatory statements and I the it was negative negativity that the studios and the product endorsements and the television and the press connected as well. All right, let's start with first principles. If they're true, they're not defamatory. Correct? I don't know that it was again. I that's outside the scope of my uh, okay. expertise. All right, let's then go back to what the you judge just isn't there yet. To, and Spiegel I think was the most we've the seen. The judge statements appeared in hashtags. I said words from the Waldman statements appeared in hashtags. Right, and I the hashtags that jury. were analyzed, however, don't have the Waldman oh, statements that. in the hashtag. I've also seen them online myself. Is he going to say Amber Tartan? Well, but the, the analysis that Mr. Uh, Schnell did, yep, that's he his looked job. at four, right? That was Schnell's analysis, and I do believe I remember reading that, yes. All right. And the 25% so that you just Sam. raised, that's Mr. Schnell's analysis. You didn't do that. He did it. Correct. All right. So you know what Mr. Schnell did, and he didn't look at hashtags that contained the Waldman statement words. He looked at justice for Johnny Depp, right? That's one of them, yes? One of them, of the <laughs> 1.2 yep. million He's hits. He's gonna get into this a lot. We, that you talked about. Oh that boy. That was 900,000, 984,000. He's like, Well, also in my ready. conversations with Mr. Chanel, we talked about all the words that were in the statement that also appeared. So what he wrote in his port and what I had in my conversation may not have been the same right, thing. Ma'am, I don't want to hear about your conversation with oh, Mr. Chanel. that's a little snappy. It's I mean, part of what I relied on, and I'm okay. allowed to talk about that. All right, so your conversation is right. uh, with Mr. Chanel, let's move beyond that. Let's talk about what the other hashtags were. It's not uncommon that during cross people stop Amber looking Heard at the jury and focus that's in. That's not in the Waldman statement, is it? Well, he's going to say Amber Turd. The fact that she was called a hoax can be related to Amber Heard as the abuser, but no, those words were not used, correct? Right. And we don't, we just don't like Amber. That's not in the Waldman statement. Correct. And Amber Turd is not in the Waldman statement. Correct. Right. None of those things are. And in terms of the use of the words fraud and hoax, that appeared in only six and a half percent of the uh, millions. Oh, yeah, they're getting snappy with of, each other. He's being rude, too. Though. Of uh, tweets that Mr. Schnell analyzed, right? 
I don't have his definition or his report in front of me, but we can look at it together if you'd like to. I don't right. think there was a reason for him to go and, in so uh, hot. And you said the last Walden witness there was. appears in 25%. Waldman or Waldminion? Waldminion. According to Mr. Schnell, yes. Mr. Right. Schnell said Waldminion. But you st if, if that's your only evidence, however, that any of this activity has any link to Mr. Waldman. Is that correct? Well, no, we also look at the timeline because those those campaigns were not active prior to the Waldman statements and then they started appearing. So there is some connectivity there as well. Oh, she, she did snap first. Mr. Depp bears no responsibility for, for the social media campaigns. He doesn't, if the social media campaigns caused Ms. Heard to lose her ability to generate income, that's not the Waldman statement. Gonna, That's a social media campaign. I'm going to object, Your Honor. May we approach? Okay. Huh. I wonder what they're approaching about. They're going to have to get to the audio. And I'm disappointed that Dennison didn't start with the audio saying, um, you know, what is, when is the time that these audios were released and going through that audio. I was hoping that that's where he would start. Maybe it's where he'll end, but they have to get to um, they have to get to it. I also don't like that he's assuming there's a social media campaign saying the social media use, I think is more fair, but the herd's position of the case is that this was an orchestrated social media campaign by Waldman and therefore by Depp and he's allowed to get into it, but they have to ask about the audio. I think maybe they should have started with that and they didn't. Um, but it is fair to talk about correlation and causation because you don't know what caused the damage, Right. No, we're correlating it through this and this and that. And that's fair. Um, I'm confused. Is this not direct? No, this is cross-examination. The most fun part of a trial other than closing arguments. We love a good cross-examination. So, yeah, it's a, it's got its cringy right. moments. So I'm, I'm just looking for all evidence of the causal connection that you claim exists between he the moved $45 on. million dollars in damages that you assert and the three statements made by, made by Mr. Walton. Well, you also wanted, I also looked at Ms. Hurd's career after the divorce proceedings and other lawsuits that she was either involved with or was discussed and her career might have had a pause, but she was able to overcome that when she did Aquaman and she did The Stand, both thinking. very prominent productions. And there was no dramatic downturn in her career after but, any publicity. Ma'am, I don't mean to interrupt you, but do you have notes with you? No, I, there's dust. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's just dust and I'm just distracting myself. But I guess, I'm you know, sorry. I, it's just I, I, nerves, I, I, nerves. It's really just that. I just, uh, yeah, there's no, just that's okay. dust. Sorry. It's a very so human moment. Career, but, uh, but after the other expert had notes, it's the fair way to her ask. career was moving. Right. So as I was saying, her career was moving forward. And even she had been able to overcome the negative publicity surrounding the divorce or the initial filing of the UK lawsuit and the other lawsuits, anything that she was associated, she overcame that. She did Justice League and she did Aquaman and she did The Stand and she got the L'Oreal contract all after that. The only time her career slowed down and stopped was at the same time that those that was a very human moment. statements came out. So, and he did apologize. But there was a lot of other activity that She's happened kind of following the defamatory statements. You said every Audio. time Mr. Depp files a lawsuit. It ignites the fire around the both of them. This is a good line of question. No, I actually said it, it ignites the fire mostly around Mr. Depp. That was no, in well, context. That was, excuse me, please. I'm that was in context of when I was asked He's about Mr. Depp's career. He's allowed to cut her off, but I think she that did a good job holding her own. was not in context of when I was asked about Ms. Hurd's career. It's not the same fire? It is and isn't. Yeah. Who's the, the protagonist in the case in the UK was Mr. Depp. Ms. Hurd was a witness to that case. She was not a part of the case. So but most of was, the negative press went. There was enormous amounts of negative activity around Ms. Hurd as a result of the UK case. Isn't that true? I like her very much as a witness. There was negativity, yes, about it. Remember both of them in the case, yes. You're right. It, substantial amounts of negativity. Right. Right. And so you can't tell me 
that that negativity isn't the thing that keeps your or, or misheard from work. She's been a good witness. Well, again, it she was been. Been a, a close witness. time frame. The negative statements were a much closer time frame to the press and publicity around Aquaman and the stand than the UK case, which was months later. So again, I will look at the, the defamatory statements as kind of the igniting force and it was promoted and, and kind of more oxygen was uh, put on the fire when the UK came out. So it kind of became a snowball effect of, of you know, the match was lit and it kept getting stronger Is it a snowball or is it a fire? Right. Are we but in backdraft or is Olaf running around? I'm confused. Stop mixing metaphors. Between the UK case and her damages, right? No. Yeah. All right. And you can't distinguish between the UK bad publicity and the bad publicity that derived after the Waldman statements. What time frame are you talking about with the bad publicity from the UK case so we can at least be specific on time frames? Well, Fair. you talked about a five year time window. A five year time window from 2020 to the two years that we're at now, plus the three years moving forward is what I talked about in terms of the time frame that it would take someone who's been under this much duress to kind of rehabilitate their career. That's when we talked about the five years. Right, that's when you talked about the five years. So you look over this five year window and during the period that precedes this window, there's lots and lots of negative press about Ms. Heard, irrespective this is the part that's of needed. the Waldman statements, correct? Before the Waldman statements, as I said, she was able to overcome that and she got great jobs and was getting endorsement contracts. Right. But after the Waldman statements, there is more activity in the press. There's more social media activity. And you, you need to get to dates. Put a causal connection between that activity he needs and to what get to Mr. Waldman said. It can be the instigating event. If you want me to call it that, we'll call the Waldman statements the instigating event of a torrential rain of social media tactics that went on, has gone on for years. Yeah. The instigating event and and therefore. Now it's raining. You Your damage analysis <laughs> with a snarky. degree, some degree, I guess, of reasonable certainty is that once there's an insti instigating event, um, everything that happens thereafter is fair game for damages? Well, it's like a fire. If huh. one tree burns and then more air or wind is added to it, then the next tree burns and the whole forest burns. But if that first fire hadn't started with the one tree, there would have been no loss of burning. acreage. So you can look at it with that same analogy. You've hit all the elements. Wait, was there wind? Is there a tornado? Is there a shark NATO? Bur trees burn one at a time, don't they, man? No. If you burn, I'm not wait, a firefighter. if I'm we not burn there with you, but you obviously we know that us. a single match can cause thousands of acres to right. burn. So let's talk about, we can leave it at that movie line. I think I went there with you. You did. Stop trying to fix right. it. Dennis and move on. Don't be weird. Um, you decided that. Is it if I burn, you burn with us? Hunger games. I think it's a that. number of persons that you described as comparable we're gonna end up with somebody in a sharknado in order to determine what we are just missing snakes on a plane uh was likely to make over time correct be armageddon yes all right of those comparable actors and actresses is there a single one who has had any press suggesting that they defecated in the marital bed. <laughs> oh shit! I don't know. <laughs> I have okay. no idea. You would agree with me. I love that she that laughs. That I like is her. a negative. I like that she laughs. Influence with respect to Hollywood. If one believed it, yes. Would yeah, you one agree it, that Amber Heard you know, shit the horrible. bed? We've gotten yeah. back to poop. It, it it certainly has been discussed. We don't have any proof or video of, of anybody defecating on the bed. I, I certainly do not have proof or, I mean, a video of anybody defecating in a bed. I'll, I'll Agreed. That's a good thing. Yeah. Great. Um, so, but what you, what you know is that Mr. Yeah. Waldman didn't say anything about defecating in a bed. They're trying to get to these other negative press. It's kind Correct. of a mess. Right. So 
all of the bad publicity around that activity. What if any poop in the has bed? Has nothing to do with Waldman, right? Uh, Waldman, as you said, didn't talk about defecation. Okay. Waldman didn't talk about poop. And you haven't considered how that story has adversely impacted Miss Hurd's That's career. the point. We've circled back around to the point. That story, you're going to ask me for a causational link between that poop story and her demise of her career. I can't. No, I'm not going to do that, nor can I. I'm not going to do, do that. Can I make it? No, I can't. Right. And you can't do it with Waldman's statements either, can you? Well, again, I did, and I have, and I stand huh. by them. So you, you did by just pointing out the time frame are relatively close. It's a good point. The time frame and the instigation and, and if you will, the rallying of the forces. Again, it's like a lit tree. It's going to ignite what forces? everything. It's like free game afterwards. So it was the instigating event, if you will. It, you know, And that's what I looked at, yes. All right. So from your perspective, anything that happened after Waldman that was negative to your client is attributable to Waldman and therefore – attributable to, to the damage analysis that you made. Is that what you said? I was tasked with looking at that specifically, and that's what I was asked to limit it to. I was not asked to look at anything else. Yeah, why aren't uh, they asking about audio? Uh, Jason audio. Momoa. Audio. That's one of your comparables, right? Yes. But he's Jason Momoa. He's been prominent since 1999. It was in Baywatch in 99. 44 episodes on Baywatch. Do you know that? You can look it up if you did. I, I'll, I'll go with that. Right. But you remember him on Baywatch. Actually, I didn't watch Baywatch, but right. he certainly had the physique for it. So, <laughs> Stargate. <laughs> yes, girl. Atlantis. He was on that. Many episodes. Get, get it. Right. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Waldman he seems more Conan comfortable. the Barbarian. He stopped stammering. In TV or film? Film. Okay. I don't I don't have Mr. Momoa's um, resume memorized, so No, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how you came to the conclusion they're they're comparable because I I'm, I'm just want to spend a few times a few minutes talking about uh, Mr. Momoa's Honor, career. We need to do independent research um, on Momoa's career on Baywatch. Game of Thrones was one of the most popular things on TV for a of all time of three ever. Years, correct? Yes, he was. And he was in Game of Thrones. Yes, he was so good yep. at Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones. He's amazing. Aquaman, right? <laughs> he's yes, he, he is. is. Right. He's the title character in Aquaman. Did Dennison want to say he's motherfucking yes. Aquaman? Because I and felt he it. Was I felt that. Actually, Aquaman in a movie before the Aquaman movie started. Yeah, in Justice League. Do you you mean that? Justice League and other things like that? Yeah. Batman versus Superman. He's Dawn Aquaman. of Justice. What wasn't he in that as Aquaman? I didn't see that one. Didn't see it. No. Miss Heard wasn't in that movie, was she? Not that I know of, no. No. And he was in both Justice League movies. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate a chat that's thirsty for Jason too. Momoa. Thank you. Y'all give me yes. life. They used him in the second Lego movie. Right? Yes. Um, I love the Lego movies so much. <laughs> he's one of the most heroic characters in the recent Dune blockbuster. Which happened post-Aquaman. Right. Zendaya's in that, too. In fact, I love that we're just going through. He's, he's not the lean, though. <laughs> no. I love that we're well, it's neither's Dune. ever heard, woman. Did you ever read Dune? <laughs> Pardon? Did you ever read Dune? I know, but I've seen the movie. Do you understand whether his character will come back from the dead in the third movie? As again, I didn't Spoilers read the book, so. to Dune. Anyway, Spoilers We're just, to we're just Dune. talking about that one movie. Spoilers so to Dune. Oh, Did you man. hear him go? Ugh. Dude. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> what is happening? He's one of the principal leads <laughs> in the new <laughs> Fast and Furious franchise movie, Fast X, right? He is? I, I don't know that for sure, no. Okay. What just happened? Uh, but that's not the I career path that, 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 that Ms. Hurd has had. She's never been the title character in a movie. She hasn't <laughs> spent uh, this years so on television. She did, what, eight TV shows? She's eight so spoiled. Single episodes. He, his derision for just watching the movie was Again, hilarious. I don't have her resume 
she's if you want to show Jimmy, we can count them together. But, but it was funny that he was like, have you read uh, the book? No. <laughs> Mr. Momo We've spoiled so much today. Well liked, even though he's engaged in a recent divorce from another actor. That's correct, right? I don't know. I don't follow his fan base. You don't follow Jason Momoa, but you use him as a comparable to, to come up with a 45 bear. I said, I don't follow dude. his fan base. I, I understand him. Did as she a, say dude? A yeah, she said dude. In business, but I don't follow his fan base. She said dude. Isn't, the fa isn't fan base one of the things that you analyze? Of course, you can look at numbers, but I don't keep a watch on his social media feeds. All right. All right. You, you understand that Jason Momoa has never uh, been accused of pooping. Gal Gadot. Body is in Wonder Woman. Yes, she's a star. She's in fact Wonder Woman. Yeah, no, she's good too. Yep. Yeah. All right. She's the title character and there's been now multiple Wonder Woman movies, right? Yes. Yeah. And even before that, she no. was in franchise films. Caps still get blocked. Which one are you referring to? Fast and Furious. By they get swooped. Excuse me, I honestly don't don't Caps remember her being by that as one of the main characters. I know it's The Rock and you, you, you didn't even know she was in the Fast and Furious franchise. I've seen it on a resume, but I didn't. I again, I'm not a fan of the fan of Fast and Furious. Uh, <gasps> you'll agree Girl. with me that Wonder Woman is a more prominent role than Mira. If you're going to talk about apples, apples in that exact movie, yes. Right. What about? Does Mira have? Oh no, I say dude all the time. I thought it was funny that she said dude. I loved it. Self-titled franchise film. I thought it was funny that she said dude. Not yet. Because no. he spoiled, he spoiled Dune. And I thought it was hilarious. Goodell played a much bigger role in the movie they were in together. He needs Justice to get to the movie. audio. In what movie they were in together? Oh, in Justice League. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I haven't counted the screen time, so I can't really say. Okay. Haven't you counted screen time. If she's shooting looks at JD. Another person like that Kiki's. You, uh, compared Ms. Heard with is uh, Zendaya. Right? Zendaya, yeah. Zendaya. Person so famous she goes by one name. Yes. I yes. Guess when you have a name that's a Z, it works, I guess. Right. She's she's been on the Disney Channel since she's 13 years old. Right. Chat right? has written this cross examination already. Yes, yeah, she did. Right. She was singing and dancing and swinging from trapezes in The Greatest Show, right? She was so good in Greatest Show, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's now been in multiple Spider-Man movies. Yes. And she's 10 years younger than your client. Right. Yeah. But this is a person that you deem to comparable. Well, as I, I was explaining to you how I chose them, when you look at superhero characters, there's not that many to pull from. So I just tried to, I worked on pulling characters that were in superhero movies that were about the same age range within 10 years, as you've noted to me, thank you. Uh, and also just where her career would have gone. I said that they were comparable, they're not identical. So you can just look at what their career has done either before that superhero movie than in others, or the one they were in, and then you look at where her career should have gone. Even though she may not have been at the stature of a Zendaya at that time, you can still look at it as a comparable trajectory of what happens when you're in a blockbuster movie. It's just a reference point. It's not meant to be identical. They're not meant to be the same people or not even have the exact same career. It's meant to be a reference point. Simple as that. So far, everybody we've looked at have been in more blockbuster movies than, than Ms. Hurt. That's but Ms. Hurt was also in the biggest blockbuster movie, and the light that shines on Jason Momoa will also shine on her. So you have to look at it in context huh. of the biggest movie that DC, DC Comics universe. is. And also one of the biggest box office films ever, probably within the top 10, because I've looked at it. Top 24, right? so the that chat has fact-checked it. that light is going to shine brighter on her um, than someone who wasn't in that movie. And again, it would have just helped her in her career move forward, not stalled it and be at, in her world be silent afterwards. For the jury to accept your damage analysis, they would have to agree with you that Ms. Heard was on the precipice of a meteoric rise. Correct. That's the word you use, right? 
actually, no, I didn't. I, I did use Meteoric with someone like, let's say, Gal Gadot or Zendaya, but I, I actually gave you a range and gave the jury a range that they weren't all going to have a Meteoric rise. Some of them would be smaller, right? And so I, what the numbers that I gave you do not represent a Meteoric rise. A Meteoric rise is when Jason Momoa goes from I don't know, four million, five million to a fifty million dollar payday. That's a that's a meteoric shift in our business. But when someone has contracts that actually go from one million to the first one, two million, and then four million, that is standard for a franchise that is perceived to do well. And so I based those calculations on very specific numbers that were already contracted. I wanted to stay within reality and look at the numbers that were already contracted from Ms. Heard and just move out forward on one film a year, maybe a TV show here or there, and some endorsement contracts, which is very typical for an actor in our business to make that kind of money. It just is what happens. It's so the books the, though. The example you just used is somebody from one million book, to two million to four million. Your client has never had a contract that exceeds $2 million, correct? Incorrect. All right. In the Aquaman Justice, it's actually the Justice League contract because they're associated. So Justice League, uh, Aquaman, she was paid one million. And then in Aquaman two, it was written that she was going to earn two million. And if there's it another written, one, it was written in the terms that she would get four million. So it actually was a contract if, that Ms. Heard signed with. If the there's studio. another one, right. is there an Aquaman but the movie three? Hasn't been made. It was, Aquaman two hasn't even come out yet, so the right. third one is still. Yeah, y'all spoiled it. Say. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's put it differently. Well, Your there's no contract never been for paid two million either. dollars for a movie she 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 appeared in. There's no. She was paid two million dollars for Aquaman. Right. Two Aquaman two. And she's never been paid four million dollars. She was contracted to be paid, and when the movie goes, that's what she will be paid. So that's what I said. She was if on she's the, in the movie. Right, but if if Aquaman two does even nearly as well as Aquaman one, there's going to most likely be a third one. So we but can look at that movie. as a precedent that was set. In, in writing, actually. Different than depth handshake agreement, which is fair. $95 million. You think there's likely to be a next one? Um, the, if it was the first or the second one, but if it's the fifth in the series, I assume that you're referring to Pirates 5. It performed well at the box office, yes, but certainly not in comparison to some of the other ones. And that's what a studio like Disney will look at to say, has that franchise had its run? Or do we need a to change it? A studio like it? Disney wants to walk away from an $800 million payday? I agree with them. Get well, pirates. Just an $800 million payday has to be put into context to the budget that it costs to get that movie and then the marketing thereafter. And with the increasing costs and not only Mr. Depp's just fee or any audio, the, and though. plus the other actors' fees, plus general production costs that are getting more expensive, then you put in the marketing costs, which are sometimes one, two, or three times the budget of the film. I want to know what like text that, message the Rotten Board has on his Apple Watch. million just making and marketing the film. So it... Seven hundred five dollars on his is Apple a Watch lot of face. money, and it seems like Rain's a really done. good box office. But you have to put into perspective of what's spent on production, marketing, and the overhead costs that the studio takes. So you have again, it's all in context of what the budget of the film and the marketing. That's well the outside the scope of the question. Right, let's put some more things in context. Anna sure. Armas. That's another one you used. Yes. All right. She's. Um, most recently, I guess, in Deep Water with Ben Affleck. I, I, I don't, again, I know some of the movies that she's been in. I don't remember about Deep Water. I don't. They're your comps. That, I don't even know if that's out yet. Okay. To be honest. Um, she was in the last James Bond movie. Yes, she was. Yeah. They were talking about making her the next female Bond, right? Right. After her big Stars, moment, Stars Born moment, yeah, she's gotten a lot more um, big roles, which is what we had out for Miss Hurt. Yeah. Um, we, what we had hoped for Miss Heard. And you said the breakout rule was Blade Runner? It was it was like the first big, you know, studio movie that got a lot of attention. I believe that was the one that we can look at as a as a marker for her, sure. It was just interesting did, that what we had hoped for her. Did you watch Blade Runner 2049? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Do you know what she did in the movie? It was years ago. I don't remember exactly what she was in, what, what what role she played, but she was in that movie, and from that, her agents used that as leverage to get her more movies. I you think have no knowledge that her principal role in that movie was as a gigantic naked billboard. 
Are you saying that's the only thing she was? She was a gigantic naked billboard. She I, wasn't that's in the movie. That's the principal either. role in that movie. I, I don't. I don't remember the movie well enough to know. That's what he's okay. asking. Um, and did you know that she was? We, we I talked a little bit about Ben Affleck, right? Right. Right. Uh, he's an interesting example because it, it, he's been in a role that's been recast multiple times. We're we talking about Batman. You know that role? We're talking about Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Batman. Sure. All right. So the title character in that DC series has seen how many actors? Several. Right. Michael Keaton. He was Batman. Val Kilmer. You're a movie buff. Yeah. Yeah. You're a movie buff. Christian Bale was Batman. He he prepped I think for he this. Was, you're right. Cross. George Clooney was Batman. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> he prepped for the Robert cross. Pattinson is now Batman. Apparently. Don't know. Okay. Cedric Diggory is now Batman. It's happening. Uh, but you're Edward. taking an absolutely. Let's talk about Robert Pattinson. That the DC universe has recast four, five, six times. Correct. Correct. So that just because you have the role in the first movie. Or the second That's movie a great point. doesn't mean it, you get it in the third movie or the fourth movie. That's a great point. Unless it's contractual. Right. Unless it's contractual. So, now, let's look. Oh, Ana de Armas, she's like the new Marilyn Monroe on Netflix, too, right? I believe so. She was also in Knives Out, which is probably even a bigger breakout role for her. But again, yeah, nobody's I chose asking about the audio. You have to start somewhere. But Knives Out probably was her big moment in time. Yeah. Chat, you guys All are right. cracking me up. The other person you picked was Chris Pine, which seems uh, like an Chris odd Pine choice. Is in a superhero movie. Two Wonder Woman. Woman. He is in Wonder Woman. He's also well, Star Trek being a blockbuster, but not necessarily superhero, right? Yeah, um, I mean, not Star Wars Wars movies, right? Uh, yes, he plays 11 inches to Gal Gadot, yeah, yeah. Um, which is why I think he was on Star Trek in in the Star Trek franchise. He plays Captain Kirk, right? I don't remember the exact role role that he played, I didn't see it in the movie, I just know from his resume, to be honest. Do you know who Captain Kirk is? (laughs) Yes, I do. Well, I but you didn't know that Chris Pine is is Captain Kirk in Star Trek? I hate to say I'm not a Star Trek fan. That's okay, okay to say. But um, you know they're not Mr. wasting time. Pine they're trying as to an example. She was a good witness. That's why they're the spending time on it. Even though he starred, they're trying to say these franchise film aren't great. I didn't know that he starred. That's why I used it again. In fact, we, he was we, the most we can, we can go over. I, we can go over this a couple more times, and I'm happy to do so. All I wanted to do was look at from a small pool of people that have been in huge Ma'am. franchise movies or, or superhero movies Ma'am. and and give you a sense of what the range is Ma'am. or what someone's trajectory can be. My Again, question's more they, specific they than that. Apples and apples. They're not both green apples or both red apples. I just was looking at a range. It's what we do. He is. He's talking in all caps in the industry. right now. It's, it's what you do to kind of get a sense of how much you're going to pay an actor, what they're worth in the foreign markets and the domestic Ma'am, I markets. I think my question was, did you know whether he was in Star Trek? Yes, and you okay. were asking me why I chose him, is which is what this conversation is about. And again, I chose him because he was part of Star Trek and Wonder Woman, but mostly because he was in Wonder Woman. And I don't know the exact time frame of which came first, but the fact that he's in both of them is consistent. Is she saying with she doesn't know which came first, Star Trek to do once they're or in a Wonder like Woman? But you, you talk Star, about breakout Star, roles, Star but you Trek. don't know which which was his breakout role. Chris Pine's been an actor. He's been a well-liked actor. He was in both Star Trek and in uh, Wonder Woman. And Did a Star movie Trek, with Denzel Star- Washington. Pardon? Did a movie with Denzel Washington. He's trying He's to say his career, career yeah, is not great comparable. Career. Yeah. Yeah. Much longer career than, than Ms. Hurt, right? She was on the precipice of a great career. Yeah, you, She hasn't had the chance to negotiate that for that yet or be in those yeah, movies yet. So we good we're answer getting back to precipice. Expert. Didn't she just deny precipice a few minutes ago? I said... I thought your she testimony did. was she was on the precipice of meteoric rise. You said, I guess. I, I didn't say meteoric. I said consistent. I don't know. She could have a meteoric rise, but I was talking about consistent with Miss Heard. All right. 
Um, so of the, of the actors you selected, two of them are the title characters in their DC movies. Yep. One of one, them. One is Aquaman. Who's the other title character? Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman, right. right. She's Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, oh, and you mean Jason Momoa, sure. Yeah. 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 So you get two title are characters. Are we good? Are we good now? You got James Kirk. And those are the people that you thought were most representative of Ms. Hurd. Yes. Again, there are not that many in the pool to pick from. I'm not going to put comparable actors that haven't enough. been in either Fish. large, what we call tentpole movies in the sea? or franchise movies or superhero movies. So I, I wanted to work within those parameters and that's what I did. So those are the actors I chose. Yes. And to show what type of work happens when you're in a big movie and what happens afterwards. When you say comparable, um, Every one of the actors you chose had a much longer TV career than you, than Ms. Hurt. Again, they were all in superhero or or franchise movies that did very very well at the box He's office. He's trying to prove they're and not comparable. He should be asking about the audio. Who are in I superhero agree. movies that should be don't asking about the audio in the UK case. New York rises thereafter. But they've got time to spare. Not when they're the lead character with Jason Momoa, but to your point, they've there are time. many actors that have no career prior to a breakout role and then have a meteoric career and have had no career prior. So you don't always just look at the past. It's helpful. And with Miss Heard, she had good reviews. So that's what I looked at. But if you look at other actors and they have their first role and all of a sudden they become a superstar from one role. So that happens in our business. It just does. Okay. All right. With respect to your comparable actors, you have no personal knowledge as to how much any of them were compensated over I, the period you reviewed. Incorrect. You have personal knowledge as to who? Jason Momoa. And you derived that personal knowledge from With talking to somebody? Million. Yes. He didn't tell you. His agent did. Okay. So what you will rely on what Mr. Momoa's agent told you, but you have no knowledge. You didn't see the contract. No, his agent is at William Morris as well. So they told me that. Right. And you've never seen anybody else's contracts as to what they were making. No, but in 25 years of being in this business, I she understand the basis of which actors are paid when they're in blockbuster films and then they're in large budgeted studio mm -hmm. films. So it's it's not a leap to kind of understand where, where the actor's making. And again, which I really fair. didn't want to try to be speculative in my analysis. I wanted to work with the numbers that Amber had contracted for already and just the audio take it from there and say the time of the one UK movie case. a year. And one with series and done Depp, product endorsement. That's how I tell the world. The Johnny, those so I wasn't looking to take her on a meteoric rise. I wasn't looking to give her the same career as Jason Momoa. I took her numbers that her agents had, had actually negotiated. To determine damages. When you say you weren't trying to give her the same career as Jason Momoa, the, the TV program that she most recently did, The Stand, she made 200000 an episode. That's what you testified to. Correct. And in your damage analysis, you give her a million dollars an episode had the Waldman statements not occurred. And you do it only because you believe Mr. Momoa has gotten that in, in, in something that he's in. Right. So you are giving her the same career as Jason Momoa. Well, again, with someone like uh, Ms. Hurd, who was in a blockbuster film with a team at William yeah, Morris. It's getting tiresome. William Morris, that's what they were looking to negotiate for her on other projects. So I got some of that information from her management team directly. So her agents were looking to get her as much money as possible? I think that's the job of an agent. They usually right. try to they get were, the most money as possible. Your, tes your testimony is they were looking sure. to get the money for her. But you, you need somebody willing to pay on the other side of that deal, don't you? Right, but agents are working with people in the industry and have a pulse on what uh, have a finger on a pulse of what's going on, so they know who's marketable and what the prices that all the streamers are paying these days. You haven't seen a single one of the endorsement contracts that you referenced, other than Miss Hurd's. 
No, other than again, what I was talk I was talking to William Morris in terms of the pricing yeah, that they are expert. aware of, not only for their own clients, but what's out in the marketplace and it's pretty consistent. And I've also worked with other actors on other cases that have gotten similar contracts. So I'm familiar with the rates of endorsement contracts. You, you, you haven't made any reference to the actual expert. earnings of any of these actors. Correct. She doesn't really Again, to, as you do an analysis, you put together the numbers that I you know from both your it. experience and the marketplace. We're all missing Camille's cross. The marketplace. So together, that's how I created those numbers. And mostly using Ms. Hurd's numbers specifically and giving her a very steady career, which is what she had had prior to uh, Aquaman. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have the prior earnings of any of the actors you looked at other than Ms. Hurd's. No, I don't have all the contracts now. You don't have any of that information. I'm sorry? You don't have any of that information. I don't no. know why they're okay. going over this this long. They need to ask about the other factors that play in. In fact, but they the also need to be careful because that, that sword cuts uh, both ways. I guess aside from Mr. Momoa's, is confidential, right? Usually it is, yes. Yeah. And the only reason you know anything about Mr. Momoa is that you, um, Ms. Hurd shares an agent. Or an right, but I, look, I've, I've also been in the industry for many years and I know what actors get paid. I talk about budgets constantly. So it's not a secret within the industry, the amount that actors are in those types of movies are paid very, very well. You're not currently working as an agent for anyone, are you? No. All right. Okay. But could other things have factored into the issue so other than the press about the UK, the like salaries of these comparable the actors, did they, they form are time at this point? It some feels like. basis for your opinion? No. Okay. So your opinion is based I on the trajectory is that Ms. Hurd should have been able to renegotiate an existing contract. Yes. Which is standard in the industry as well as with her agent specifically. Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? I'm sorry? Oh. Do you know if it's standard with Warner Brothers? I don't know if it's standard at, at any of the studios, but it is standard for agents to renegotiate and oftentimes are successful when the film is done so well. Right. But what you're talking about is there's an existing contract where Ms. Heard is made. I feel like we've gone in a direction where we might get new information. The next movie for, in this instance, $2 million, right? Right. And what you, the agent is trying to do is to get Warner Brothers to say, hey, you should pay her more than your contract says because you like her? What? Can't do that. That's well, not how renegotiation as works. Kovacevic said, also, it's standard in the industry. As again, I've been in the industry, I've worked with agents, and I've worked with lots of lawyers. And, you know, we have conversations about what is an actor getting, or what can they do, or what are they going to do the next time. So, again, it's a standard of practice in the industry, especially when a film is as successful as Aquaman, that the agents will go back and renegotiate. Uh, in fact, that was conversation. Isn't the standard practice is that they would try to renegotiate, but it's up to the studio. Yeah, sure, but oftentimes in a movie of such of the nature of Aquaman, they're very successful, usually. But, but the entirety of your analysis assumes a renegotiation with a studio for terms that are double what no. the studio has she also had $4 million for the sequel. From Heard, she would work for. She already had $4 million for the sequel. Right. Just ask about the other contributing factors and be done please there are other contributing factors but we had a very nice lesson about have movies you talked to walter hamana have i spoken to him mm -hmm. no do you know who he is yes who is he? he's a senior executive at warner brothers or yeah, I, I think he still is oh. there, but certainly <clears throat> at the time of the renegotiation, he was a senior executive. Oh. Then, do you know everybody he's perked the back up of DC based film productions? I, I wonder think that's exactly if this title, yeah. is the statement from Warner Who's Brothers. Who's in a better position to determine whether Warren, Warner Brothers would renegotiate you or Mr. Hamada? 
huh. is again, I based this on the, on the agents that were talking to Warner Brothers about Mr. Momoa, and they were wanting to talk to them about Miss Hurt as well. Good, oh, good. Okay, so sure. they, I based my information on them. So you, the, the, the connection should be Mr. Hamada or the agents, not Mr. Hamada and me. All right. Who's He's not an expert in semantics. Uh, position to, to know whether <laughs> Warner Brothers would renegotiate. Objection, your calls for speculation. Just asking. I'll sustain the objection. Next Sorry. question. If she knows. Do you, Are you aware of testimony from Mr. Hamada? I did. Did you understand that Mr. Hamada says that they don't, that they want to hold the, the lawyers, I mean, hold the actors to their deals? That was a philosophy that he said Warner Brothers had, yes. Yeah. Did you understand that Mr. Hamada said that nothing Mr. Depp did impacted her compensation? I don't remember that part of the testimony. You have it available for me to read? <laughs> you don't know whether Mr. Hamada testified. Did anything Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp said about Amber Heard affect her compensation? Well, it could have been Waldman's statements, not Depp's. Uh, again, I don't. I you don't, don't remember. I don't, recall, I don't recall that testimony. Right. No. Would it change your opinion if you knew that? Do you know whether Mr. I don't know. Hamada indicated whether he even knew who Adam Waldman was? Again, I, I don't remember the conversation about Hamada and Waldman or Depp. And you don't remember whether Mr. Hamada uh, made any statements as to is whether Joe asleep? anything Mr. Waldman said uh -oh. affected Mr. Hurt's jo compensation. Y'all, is Joe asleep in court? In my experience, studios don't talk about what, how, or why they make decisions based on publicity or Chat. conversations. They're not going to try. As they're they're going to be protective of all the relationships. So that's just natural. Yeah, unless you can get them to testify under oath at a deposition, right? Which you have. Well, even so, they're not going to say anything negative. They may bypass it by being positive, but they're not going to do anything that could potentially damage a relationship that may change or be worthwhile in the future. So that's just what a studio person does. It, Mr. Hamad is in the best position to determine whether there were chemistry issues with Ms. Hurd. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. He's the president of the company. Uh, overruled. They I don't know how involved Mr. Hamada was on a daily basis in, the, in terms of chemistry, but I do know that Warner Brothers did a chemistry test with uh, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Momo before they even, she even got the role. She went in and did a, what they call a chemistry test. So that was to actually see whether From there was chemistry, good chemistry test. Between them. To and after the first movie, can it there change? There was good chemistry because she was then hired to be the romantic interest. So whatever Mr. Hamada said during his deposition, I look at what actually happened in real life, which is she got, agent the testified she got the job last week. Yeah, let's look what happened in real life. She went in <laughs> before and took the test. <clears throat> then she made a movie. Let's look at what then happened in real life. It was an existing movie under which Warner Brothers they could then decide whether there was chemistry, right? The movie worked. It made over a billion dollars, and they're all over the poster. If they didn't think that there was chemistry, they wouldn't have put Ms. Hurd on the poster next to Mr. Momoa. So, you know, there were multiple posters for the Aquaman movie. Yes, and there three, always are. That's 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 standard. And that three out of the four posters, the standard posters for Aquaman, didn't even feature Ms. Hurd. Right. So when you when you make a poster at the studio, it's normal to have three or four variations because you want to appeal to different people's perspectives. So you want the romantic poster, you want the action poster, you want the superhero poster. So it's normal for them to have many posters, but the romantic poster was of Ms. Heard and Mr. Momoa. Right. And everyone who else would have been the romantic one? Just of Mr. Momoa. Like we talked about, it's Aquaman, but she was prominent in the ones that she that Warner Brothers wanted to appeal to women and to the romantic interest of the consumer. Get to WB's statement or not, Denison. What movies would Ms. Heard have gotten absent Mr. Waldman's statements? 
That's a good question. Well, the ones we know about specifically that she was in conversations with was a movie with um, Gail Garcelle Bernal, I believe that's how you say his name, at uh, Amazon, which is what Ms. Kovacevic said. And she was also in consideration for a movie called Ambulance with Michael Bay. Um, but again, at, at, after the Waldman statements, nobody would talk to the agents. And so they weren't able to garner more. Oh, she also had a, a movie that she was interested in producing that a good friend of hers uh, or a friend of hers or colleague was was doing so. Okay. Um, there was at least those three um, but that I read about. Those were three movies that she was being considered for, but you don't know what movie she would she was going to be in. Well, again, they stopped the conversation after the statement, so we don't know where wow. they would have gone, of course. But they she was in consideration for all of them, but, and, and given her fame from Aquaman, movie. she would have that would have helped all those movies. So it would have made made a lot of sense. You're projecting movies way out into the future that you have no knowledge would ever have gotten made. Yes. Well, that's what we do when you talk about comparables and, and economic damages. You talk about the future. That's standard in our industry as, as a forensic expert and in the industry. That's how movies are financed, as a matter of fact, is by forecasting Jackson. what happens in the future. She's allowed to speculate. She's what an expert. connection do you that's draw their job. between Mr. Waldman's statements and the reported reduction in Ms. Hurd's Aquaman two Tour role. over yet? Again, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a timing of it all. It's a timing of it's it all. And also, they were going to take her out of the movie after the statements, and they put her back in. And then there, I, I, can I talk about the emails that I read? I'm, I'm not sure at this point, but we're talking about the so, leaked audio. When you say they were going to take was her not out flattering of the to Amber Heard that came out when you have the an option. Statements. You literally have the option whether to include the actress, right? That's that's what it means. Correct. Right. So they can choose to exercise the option or not exercise the option. Entirely up to them. Correct. And they have that particular studio, to your knowledge, has re repeatedly recast even major figures Fair. in their DC movies. We talked about Batman. What about Superman? Fair. You know, I'm not. I, I think I'm more familiar with the Batman actors. I think there have been a couple actors in Superman, but depending on how the movie performed, if a movie doesn't perform, they'll look for other actors. Or if they want to go a different direction or reboot a franchise, they will look at different actors. So the, if the movie's successful, they're, they're not likely to change the actors, especially not in the second one or the, the third one. Another reason they'll look for a different actor or actress, if the actor or actress is Charged or asking too much money to play the role again, correct? That's fair. Uh, yes, not not in figures under $10 million, but yes. Yeah. If you're asking for too much money, you might not get your role again. You might get yeeted. And your analysis assumes that Ms. Heard could double her money. Well, her contracts doubled her money from each one to the next, so Which it wasn't fair. that one large million to, two, to do two that, to four. especially when the agents had told me that that was what it then they were considering and what they've been discussing. Fair. Yeah. Right. You seen the script of Aquaman two? Personally, please no more yes. spoilers. Uh, I did see a draft. I don't know what the date was or when it was or where in the succession of the rewrites it was. I did see one draft. Yes. You don't know what Warner Brothers has in mind for that movie in terms of the kind of movie it's going to be. It's a superhero movie. Right. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be like okay. a buddy comedy, right? Denison, if you I, spoil I, I Aquaman. Don't I don't know about a buddy comedy. I it's swear, man. A superhero movie. This is Patrick helping. Wilson. Patrick Wilson. I, I, I've heard that name in terms of an actor, but I don't know Mr. Wilson. All right. Do you know if he appears in Aquaman? Again, I don't, I don't know him by name. If you want to show me a picture, I can, or a clip from the movie. All right. <laughs> Do you know if Mr. Wilson appears more Please frequently don't play in, a clip in from a movie? movie than, we will all get copyrighted clients. out of YouTube. I don't, I didn't count the screen time when I watched the movie. It was a long, you know, even when I watched it again, I, I didn't count the screen time of anybody else. I don't know if this is helping at this point or if everyone's just bored. You, did you read the testimony of, uh, Mr. Hamada? We might all just be bored. We discussed that, yes. 
You disregarded right. all of it in your analysis as to oh, interesting. her ability to renegotiate, correct? Why didn't we get to this question earlier? Well, I, I remember the part where Mr. Hamada said that from time to time they will break their philosophy and renegotiate just what they did with Jason Momoa and with Gal Gadot. So, you know. Which is fair as to Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot. It coincides with what we know in the industry, which is it can be done. It's what they did with the two title characters in the DC universe. Again, I've worked in the business for a long time and I've seen a lot of actors uh, renegotiate their careers. It's, I, I'm sorry, not their careers, renegotiate their uh, contracts, their fees. It's, it's common practice. And it's certainly what the agent will think about first when a movie makes a billion plus dollars. Right. Again, focused on the agent, but it's the studio that pays the bills. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Your Honor, I have a fair amount more to do. Is to Can continue. I'm sorry. We continue. have a half an hour. Keep okay. asking questions, Edison. We're going to five thirty today or not? Every day is five thirty day. Okay. <laughs> no, we may not How even need to get there. Every day is five thirty. Right. Perfect. The judge sounds All weary. Right. How much more can you have, Denison? You talked about Ms. Herb's endorsement deal. Your Honor, I have quite a bit more. Yes. How? Right. How do you have quite a bit more? And the. L'Oreal has concerns about using her because every time I think everybody's they try trying to, use her, to, I think he might just be speculation. To Is he just trying to bore the jury so they forget everything she said uh, earlier? People don't. The the Depp fan base has responded. How do you uh, know? Has been has. How do you know? Uh, How do you know it's the Depp fan posted base? Posted negative things about Ms. Heard on their campaigns. How do you so, know that? Did you say the Depp fan base? She did. Well, people that were using the hashtags that were consistent with the rest of the the Depp fan base. How do you yeah, know? There, there, there are people posting negative things that, other than things that Ooh. came from Mr. Waldman, correct? Where is Mark Hamill sharing his thoughts? I haven't seen all. The, I haven't seen all. That was. I was just looking at what L'Oreal what L'Oreal discussed and what L'Oreal said in in um, their communications. They, they made, went from hashtags to L'Oreal. I don't do you know. You see L'Oreal make a word cloud of the words that were most uh, commonly associated with, with Ms. Heard. I don't know why Denison uh, is not. Marketing campaigns. I knew they did that. Questions. I didn't see it myself, actually. Yeah. Do you know what words there were? Again, no. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your husband's recording VO. We're building a VO room here. I'm very excited about it. I don't know what else he can have to do, Denison. Audio. You didn't talk much about this, but in order to get to the damage analysis that you got, oh, gosh. Uh, the $45 million, I, I think at least in initially you suggested that Ms. Heard would have a role you might be. producing and starring in a movie and that she would make $12 million. I, I've talked about that, but in the in the latest calculation, I, that was really less what I considered and more about what films and TV. I mean, he's and running their own clock deals too. Which she would do. The producing was something that she had wanted to do, and again, Mr. Momoa got that. So that's where the agents were discussing those figures with me. I don't know the how last they didn't get movie to. That she COVID. has a production credit for is in 2013, right? Again, I don't. I haven't memorized her resume. There's a movie called Syrup. Did you ever hear of it? No. What? Aside from having probably seen it on her IMDb. Yeah. And Soon the Darkness, that's her other production credit, right? I'll, I'll, if you say so. If, if you're reading it off of her resume, I will believe sure. you, yes. 2010. Okay. Right. 12 years ago. No, he's eating up his time. This is depth time you, that he's at using. Not at some portion, of the, at some point time. in it's this, just, uh, we haven't gotten to a point. We're up of the mind that she, she would recover twelve million dollars with a producing uh, role and a starring role in a movie, because that's what Mr. Momoa got. Again, the agents were just saying that those are the kinds of numbers they were looking at to help her as she moved forward in her producing career. Right. It, those are the kind of the numbers the agents would like her to get. Right, but again, I didn't use that in the final analysis of my forty-five million. So it was just a, a discussion point because that's what the agents wanted me to consider. Right. Okay. 
That's what the agents wanted her to consider. I know my stream's gotten really blurry too. I'm going to refresh it real you quick. These questions are going real slow. You testified that the breakout role for Miss Heard <sighs> was Aquaman. Was Aquaman. That's what she kind testified of to. Kind of super box office success. Still blurry. Um, I think that, you know, some of her other critically acclaimed movies probably helped her break into that role, which would have been the Danish girl. And then her work in Justice League, which was a natural progression to getting to star in Aquaman. Uh, all right. But I use breakout. Perhaps you didn't. But this is the movie that springboards her to. I don't know. He already talked about the poop on the bed. I don't know why you wouldn't just do that all at the same time and get out of this cross and back out and be done done i don't know why he's still going and on the same point the points been either made. i mean other than aquaman ben, which was released in 2018 chew pass him a post-it that says audio ask about the movies audio has she booked well she booked ben Chu's the lead attorney aquaman for too. right and she did the stand which was a significant television show. when were those booked right. uh but outside of the Aquaman franchise, she obtained only one role, movie role, since 2018, right? Right. The industry also knows that she's planned to be in the next move and they understand her production schedule. So she's not going to go after films that would conflict with a mega box office movie. So there's scheduling and conflict issues as well that her, she and her team would consider. So are you considering those so in your from, damage analysis? When was Aquaman released in 2018? December. I, it was either December 2018 and, and then it depends on where it was in the world. It was started in December 2018 it and then with the it, article, it moved Denison. out, you know, into 2018. How many months between December 2018 and the Waldman statements went by? That's helpful. Oh, uh, 12, I think 15 or 16, if my math is correct. She got one role during that that 15 or 16 month period. That's a good the question. Entirety of the post Aquaman boost. This is a very right? good point, but you wasted so much time getting here that no she one's going stand. to remember. Right. And then she was in discussions for the films as they were getting ready to go. But she didn't get another role for 16 months between the release of Aquaman. This and is a really good point. What you say are the Waldman statements. Well, she got the stand. She got one TV role. A pretty significant TV role, yes, for a Stephen King novel. Right. She was in a movie, though. I'm sorry? She was in a movie that was released after Aquaman. What movie are you referring to? Gully. Oh, well, I don't know when that was shot, so you'd have to tell me when it was shot. Movies get released at different time frames. Like, they can be shot in 2016 and not get released till 2018. So you'd have to tell me. We'd have to look at you know the actual filming dates of, of the Gully to, to, for me to talk to you about that. She wasn't initially cast in Gully, was she? I, I, I'm not familiar with the casting process of Gully. She's no. like, I'm not an expert in her um, career, just in yeah, images. Alice Eve is. M who? Alice Eve. Alice Eve sounds familiar, but I'm not. I'm they not still might have a CPA. She is. She's an actress, might not. In any number of movies. You don't know who she is. Again, I know her name, but I, I don't know her resume. She's in Star Trek. Great. Right. Okay. Uh, she was in one of those breakout roles, Star Trek, but you don't you don't even know who she is. That's a good question. I, I talked to you about Star Trek before. I'm not a big Star Trekian. Okay. Star Trekian. They're trying to Ms. say there's Heard other career options. Alice Alex Eve in the movie Gully, right? I don't know the casting process. I don't know who's starring that movie. Do you know what she was this paid? This would have been really good like 20 minutes ago. Who? Ms. Hurd. Uh, for Gully? Yeah. This Can you tell been, me one that was in? No, no, I don't. But what, what was the filming date of and what was the start date? This of would Gully? have been real good like 20 minutes ago. Do you, you didn't look at the Gully contract when you were making an analysis of, of Ms. Hurt's damages? I don't recall whether I looked at it or not. <clears throat> did, did you understand that she was making $2,190 per week for Gully? Can you tell me when it was shot? When does that contract get negotiated? It's relevant. The contract is negotiated 
prior to the release of Aquaman. Okay. So she signs this contract for twenty one ninety. Is there a? Do you know what the Screen Actors Guild low budget agreement minimum scale is? It changes from year to year. It depends on what year and what the size of the budget. There's, there's actually three or four scale. different scale, uh, you know, benchmarks. So when there's a low budget, it can be a micro budget. It can be a minimum budget. At low budget, it, there's there's like four or five different scales that they use when it gets to anything other than a studio film. Yeah. And oftentimes, actors do passion projects, and that has nothing to do with or something that they really love to do, or they think that would be good for the career. It doesn't have anything to do with the the fee made on the on the film. All right. What's a loan out? A loan out? A loan out is the corporation that a an actor will use so that their money comes in through a corporation. And then that corporation technically loans out the actor services uh, to the production. So they, the loan out is the corporation that the actor uses, and then they loan out the services to the you know production company. It's just a, really for tax purposes. Do you know of any movie that Ms. Heard booked immediately uh, prior to Aquaman other than Gully? This all burns depth's time. The lawyer doing the questioning well, is the one whose time is thing. used. Um, I, I, I don't remember the dates and times of the filming of the other ones. Yep. Do you see how many people have left court? The filming dates? <clears throat> it's all empty back here um, now. You talked about Mr. Schnell. Gully was in his chart, right? What? Uh, I don't I don't remember where Gully was. Right. <sighs> Did you look closely at his chart? Pardon? Did you look closely at his chart? Who's at Mr. Schnell's chart? Yeah. Um, I looked at the numbers with respect to the social media campaigns is what I was looking at Mr. Schnell for. Oh, y'all. Okay. He's got 15 minutes to um, push to the end of the day, and I don't know why he's trying to do it. Do you know whether any of the dates of the Waldman statements even appear in Mr. Schnell's chart? They don't. I know that. I, I don't remember. Okay. Give her the chart. I remember. Do y'all remember? No, I'm not going to start singing Do You Remember by Dave Matthews Band, but that's the first thing that went into we my head. Talk a little bit about remember. Q scores and Mr. Bonnie. Do you remember yeah. that? I feel you, girl. Yes. I'm just so over this cross. For Miss Heard, Mr. Bonnie used Q scores from immediately after I. We're circling right. back to the Q. So. Again, if you want to show me something, I can I can answer. I don't. Why remember. are we I circling really back to the Q stores? But I remember I'm talking about the dates with you earlier. Right. But do you you don't know as you sit here today whether the Q scores that Mr. Banya used were were after Aquaman but before the Waldman statements? He used a couple different scores based on on dates. He didn't. I don't remember if they were uh, correlated to the statements or not. I remember years more than anything else. I don't Again, I looked at the thousands and thousands of, of pages of documents, so I don't remember exactly what he said. Even before Are they trying to just the, bore us so we all forget about everything? Waldman statements, Ms. Heard had very high negative Q scores. That's Isn't that the lie the live very negative high Q scores? No, very high negative Q scores. As I said, very high negative Q scores. Um we I remember discussions of a lot of Q scores. I, I don't remember exactly what Pin what or down what score, the question. whether it was net so in your analysis, you didn't consider Ms. Hurd's down the question. negative Q scores as a restraint on what she might earn on a going forward basis? That's fair. No, Q scores change all the time. Ms. Hurd's, Q, Ms. Hurd's, Ms. Hurd's IMDb score has been one, and it's been 300. Mr. Depp's Q score has been one, and it's been 253. You know, Q scores change all the time. Scores change all the time. They're based on current events and, and movie releases. Ask about the audio. You talked a little bit about Mr. Depp's damages. Um, did you talk, who's Jerry Bruckheimer? 
Who's Jerry Breckerman, the producer of uh, the Pirates franchise? Well, he's a huge producer of a lot things. of movies, but he happens to be the producer of the Pirates franchise. You didn't talk to him prior to your testimony? Personally, no. No. And but that would have been fun. You didn't have other people talk to him on your behalf, did you? I, I, uh, me personally, no. I did no. not talk to Mr. Bruckheimer. And you've never spoken with Mr. Bruckheimer about why Mr. Depp has not appeared in a six pirate movie? There has been no six pirate movie. There is not a pirates movie. The fact that there's 140,000 right. of us going through this pain right. together. But you haven't talked to Mr. Bruckheimer as to whether to Mr. Me. Depp was going to appear in the movie? Mr. From things that I've read in, in uh, newspaper publications and emails, I've read that Mr. Bruckheimer was uncertain whether Mr. Depp would star in. Right. But you haven't talked. And you've never spoken with Sean I don't know Bain why they want to get to this, tomorrow. Right? No. Or anyone at Disney. I actually spoke, I actually put a call into somebody at Disney and they didn't want to talk on the record. Are you <laughs> you call somebody at Disney and they didn't want they didn't want to talk to you. No, again, as I said, studios don't want to talk about their stars, whether they want to preserve a relationship that may or may not be used in the future. So it's, it's fair. their tendency not to talk yeah. about people they are in business with. So you have no personal knowledge why Mr. Depp hasn't made a six pirate movie. This morning was a bang. This is well, as I said, there is no six pirate movie. Right. That's all. You, but you don't know why. You have no personal knowledge why. I don't work at Disney now. Did you listen to Mr. Wigm Wiggum's testimony in this trial? I read Mr. Wiggum's testimony. And Mr. Wiggum said he, had, Mr. Depp had a deal for the movie, right? Oh, we finally get to that. I, I, uh, I think Mr. Wiggum did. The other agent, uh, Mr. Carino, said he did not. And as there is no. Uh, as there is no Pirates movie, there have been no deals negotiated, and that's what Ms. Jacobs also testified to. There was an amount. But Mr. Wiggum testified to something else. Yes. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, Better? correlate, as we say, to the other two agents' testimony. You've indicated that a portion of the reason that... Uh, he definitely Mr. Depp hammered away at how much she knows about movies. Has get a, has received a negative. Has received this is, a variety of negative uh, comments in Hollywood. Is I that don't know. he engages in lawsuits? This is just one of the one of the uh, elements that has contributed know. to ben choose all of us right now. Negative press and attention is due to the lawsuits and the activity and the behaviors that we talked about earlier have been brought into the limelight. Mr. Depp's lawsuit here has generated negative publicity for Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. That lawsuit, until she's filed a counterclaim, didn't relate to the Waldman statements, did it? Mr. Depp's lawsuits? Yeah. No, it, it, we talked about that. It, it was pertaining to the... Uh, Chu, are you case. passing Camille a clue? Yeah. We need it, to be clued in. To what, what is happening? M Ms. Hurd said. I'm sorry? What? This, Mr. Depp's lawsuit relates to what Ms. Hurd said and, and not to what Mr. Waldman I don't Waldman blame said. her for being like, what? Because what? Well, it related to the op-ed piece that Ms. Hurd wrote. Right. What? So Mr. Waldman's statements have no connection to the negative publicity that Ms. Hurd has uh, received relative to this trial, correct? Objection calls for speculation, foundation. You're She's an expert. Outside the scope. She's an expert. She's allowed to speculate. That's thoughts? what she's there for. We're looking for a causal connection here. Wow. Sustain the objection. Next question. He should have had a response to that. When was the last time Elaine sat down going boom roasted met with Miss Hurd? I only met Miss Hurd at lunch today. Okay, oh. that's the first time you talked to her. First time I met her. Okay. Um, 
What's your compensation for testifying here today? I'm surprised I didn't ask at the beginning. Uh, for, t for a testimony, it's $650 now. What has been your compensation to date for providing uh, the assistance that you have in this case? I'm surprised I didn't ask. It, I've sir. been working on the case for about three years. And what? Huh. Over the three years, I believe it's around $60,000. You said 60? Yeah, over three years. All right. I have no further questions. All right. Redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Never. Definitely fit within that 530. Okay. Um, Never, ever did they get to whether leaked audio could cause the issue. You were a number of questions about the different Which social media. seemed like a huge miss to me. Uh, and how do you know that it relates to the Waldman Depp statements? Do you recall all those questions? Yes. Okay. The, the social media that was connected, and, and some of that was your testimony, some Jessica Kovacevic, and some of it was Mr. Schnell, actually I'm left scratching my head language from the three statements from Weldman, correct? Objection leading. Sustained. Okay. What if any also uh, seems facts, not evidence, uh, efforts were that. made to track the negative social media that caused the damages that you've attributed? Objection leading. Overruled. The so judge is like, can we please be fucking done? A lot of research. Um, William Morris did a lot of research. Mr. Schnell did a lot of research. And in those conversations, those were also connective tissues to the How? social media campaign and the Waldman statements. Right. And they connected back to those three statements. Correct? Yes. Objection leading. And what if any connection did they have to those three statements? What if any is not a fix? -all? Again, they, we talked about this earlier. We talked about some of the hashtags being similar. We talked about the probably wall, working on depths. Minion. So there were a lot of connective tissues between depths the, damages, uh, perhaps negative social media, social media campaigns and the Waldman statements. Okay. And I'm going to jump because you, I think this is part of this. So you were asked some questions about jump Mr. Around. Hamada. Do you recall jump that? Jump around. Yes, and asked whether he testified that um, uh, th whether anything Mr. Depp said or anything Mr. Waldman said had anything to do with their initial decision not to exercise the option to Aquaman two. Do you oh, recall that? So testimony? compound. For that question, question, those questions. The question, yes. Okay. Now, yes. the testimony from Mr. Schnell tracked the one point yes. two million um, tracers to January twenty twenty one. Yes. Correct. Objection leading. Do, do you remember what month that was until? Right. So when Aaron, Mr. Schnell did the analysis, move. it was from April of 2020 to January 2021. Or my brain and is when now. did Warner Brothers tell Amber Heard and her agents they were not exercising her Aquaman 2 contract? It was in February of 2021. All right. <laughs> and what, if anything, did Mr. Hamada say about whether the reason they did that was because of the 1.2 million uh, negative social media tweets and Instagrams and, and, and other communications. Objection, no foundation. Had Objection outside the scope. Sustained. Right. Next question. Do, do, are you aware of whether he said anything about that? I recall in the Warner Brothers. Objection, fire. hearsay. Sustained. Do you know whether that had any impact? Do you know? Objection, Warner hearsay. Brothers. I'm asking now. She's allowed to rely on hearsay. She's uh, sustained the objection. Not it's allowed. All right. To discuss you it. ask a whole lot of questions about the different comparables. Um, and so I'm just going to go to this again. Of all the different movies, of all of those comparables, which movie was the highest grossing of all of them? Again, I believe it's Aquaman. I mean, everybody talks about Aquaman being one of the highest if not the highest grossing film certainly the highest dc comic film it is not the highest grossing, grossing film. film again false i don't want to say it was the highest but i think it was very close to it do do just, you know this false whether news. walter hamada admits it was the highest grossing highest uh, grossing DC. dc film yes he said that yes okay so when you're looking at all the comparables what if any this trial has just is turned into dc propaganda the degree of success of that dc superhero movie Objection, foundation. I, she can speak to that, Your Honor. If that's the foundation. A, if you lay a foundation, she should sure can lay. <laughs> the answer to that question. Do you know? I'm sorry. Can you repeat? The 
question. We I none of us know Elaine. No. Okay, so let's let's go backwards. Elaine's um, like, I don't know so where I'm at. What if I do am you lost. know whether it makes a difference? Whether how successful that DC superhero movie is in uh, what types of films they'll be able to get in the future? Objection, Foundation. I'm asking the Foundation. If you want to ask the Foundation, go ahead. I'm sorry, that's what I thought I was asking. No, do, do you know you're sure not, whether though. that plays any role? The degree of success. Customarily, when a film. Objection, film, Foundation. Ask her how she knows. How do you? Know? Oh my God! In 20, 25 years of being in the film industry, it's customary for the when we does like, such an extraordinary amount it, at the box office. It shines a very bright light on the actors, especially if they're in lead roles. And it's customary that they will get not customary. It is. Uh, the judge ask her how she knows. No, he's the word standard, but it it it, it is, is like, very frequent just get there. that a star just get in a movie there. that has performed so well at the box office and with a role model character that Mira was, that she would have gotten uh, other roles and worked quite a bit afterwards, and that movie would have helped her career. I mean, that's that's no question. Okay. And with all these comparables, uh, the when you just like, uh, gave God, the range please. to this jury of 45 to 50 million in estimating this over this period of time, did you put Amber Heard's estimated damages ranges above all those other comparables? No, again, I was very specific in using the actual negotiated rates that Ms. Heard's agents were able to get for her. She walked that through that pretty well. And used that as a precedent. So again, she I always wanted to be well. grounded in what Ms. Heard actually was in contract for and what her agents negotiated. And I used that as the baseline for the financial numbers of her loss. I used the comparable actors to show how consistently the they judge all is so done, she literally said just ask this, Ms. Breda Hoff. The judge. Um, uh, you were asked about Disney and uh, the Pirate Six again. Uh, the judge what just, any knowledge do you have of whether Disney is willing to pay Mr. Depp three hundred million dollars and a million alpacas? Objection, no start? foundation. <laughs> we got uh, back around to alpacas. What if anything does she know about whether Disney is? <laughs> if you can lay a foundation. What if okay. anything doesn't did, help? Did you, did you listen dead. to or did you read the Disney testimony? Color me deceased. I did. Yes. All right. Yeah, the judge gets what an assist on this one. Disney saying about whether they were willing no, to pay Mr. Depp three hundred million dollars. No, and that give calls him for hearsay. Alpacas. They would not be willing to pay three hundred million dollars and give him alpacas. Thank you. No one's giving Depp alpacas. You were asked about spoiler the defecation. Spoiler. Disney is not. Uh, what oh, if any recollection, here. recollection, or knowledge do you have about whether that social media negative campaign that you've testified had the words defecation in it or poop? They Objection, didn't. no foundation. Objection. Objection. I know that the word poop and the hashtag poop is used. This okay. state's testimony. Move, move to strike. Objection. Objection. This to strike. state's the Next testimony. Okay. It um, says turd, not poop. In your review of the social media campaigns and the negative social media campaigns that you testified to with this jury, that include the L'Oreal, that include the WME, that include Mr. Schnell, and include what you've done, what, if any, recollection do you have of how of many of those that are influencing your connections to the defamation statements include the words poop or defecation? They don't. Ob objection compound. Objection don't misstates poop. the evidence. I don't believe poop was one of the hashtags that Correct. was connected to the statement. No okay, poop. thank you. It was turd. He should have objected misstates the evidence. You I'm disappointed. You were asked about truly. the time period between the... He should have said the misstates the evidence. State, it's his turn. release of Aquaman 2 uh, in December 2018. Aquaman 1. Aquaman 1, thank you. <laughs> and the defamatory start statements that were in April 2020 and June 2020. Do you recall that testimony? I remember that questioning, yes. Okay. Um, during that time... Were you aware of whether Aquaman 2 was in discussions with Amber Heard about scheduling the filming of Aquaman 2? Such a in the period between <sighs> the, the statements and before. I'm going before. Okay, I'm sorry. talking about the period of time when they released Aquaman 1 okay. like there, I and said it. the just, April 8 oh. first of the defamatory statements. 
Right. Do you know whether Aquaman, whether Warner Brothers was in discussions already with Amber Heard about scheduling her for Aquaman? Thanks for finding the mic, Elaine. Do you know? I'm asking her whether you know. If you, I'll sustain it as the hearsay. Okay. Do you have knowledge of whether Aquaman was in discussions with Amber during that Elaine. period? Objection, hearsay. I don't know how to. I don't know how to ask her foundation. foundation. I don't know how to lay the foundation. Right. Um, ask her. I, do you know? Um, how would you know? No. 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 Nope. That uh, calls for speculation. Well, Amber received an early draft of the script. Amber's agents were in discussion. Objection. Hearsay. I, I think she can say this that. No, she can't okay. say that, Elaine. Um, I think she can say that. The, You're in your incorrect. Based on getting scripts, what does that mean? I'm asking for experience. In my experience with the movie as high profile as something like Aquaman, they keep the scripts very tight. You know, they don't let anybody read them. They're numbered. They have your name on it. So if you're getting a script for a movie such as Aquaman that's kept tightly, tightly close to the vest, if you will, by the studio, you are going to, they're, they're, can, they want you to be in the movie. Otherwise, they would never give you a script. Okay. And, and so if no nope, script was given to Amber Heard before the eight, first April 8, 2020, uh, defamatory statement. What would that suggest? Objection based on your, spec based on your knowledge that you've just testified. She's allowed to speculate. Objection, speculation. She's allowed to it's speculate. It's not speculation. Overruled. She's an expert. Again, if she got the script, they were going to use her in the movie. That was their plan. Okay. Be done. Be I have done. Other questions. Thank you. Good. Right. Thank you. Good. Is this witness subject to recall. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. So you're still an expert, so you, you can have a seat in okay. the courtroom. I'm, I'm still okay. 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 You still are. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> are we out? Are we safe? All right. We're like to the end of our day. Questioning is life right. choices. So please do not do any outside research tonight and uh, don't talk with anybody about the case. Okay. And we'll see you in the morning, bright and early at nine o'clock. Right. Okay. Thank you. What a fucking long day. Oh. All right, just a few planning notes. Yes, please. Okay. Um, after testimony tomorrow, and we've excused the jury, we'll go ahead and have the proffers that you requested, Mr. Rottenborn. We'll do those tomorrow after, is that okay? Okay, proffers tomorrow. Good? All right, we'll do those uh, right after, like right now, tomorrow. Okay, that should give you with all with the proffers that you need to do for the record, okay? All right, and then whenever all the testimony is done, Possibly at this point, it would be Thursday afternoon after the jury is excused. Uh, we'll go over the remaining jury instructions. I have three under advisement. We'll take up those. And we'll also, if there's any other from the evidence this week that we need to talk about, we can discuss those as well after the jury's gone on Thursday evening or if earlier, if the evidence is done before then. Okay. And just as time's up to this minute. Time, time. Uh, the plaintiff has used 45 hours and 24 minutes. The defendant has used... 57 hours and six minutes, which means the plaintiff has left 15 hours and five and 51 minutes, and the defendant has four hours and nine minutes. Left, okay, so that's where we're at. Woo! Right, anything else for this evening? Your Honor, the last witness I, it appears that is on the plaintiff's wit witness list is Mr. Depp, and I was just hoping we would get an answer you mean as to defendant's what, witness list. Oh, yeah, okay. defendant's witness list. I don't know. I was Are you still to changing get an witness? I mean, I'm not sure. Okay. Make a decision in the morning. Okay. I thought he All was right, as useless as a bicycle right, or a fish oh, or yeah. something. All right. Well, there you have it. Y'all wanted a time check, time check, check one, check two. Defense has four hours and nine minutes left. Plaintiff has 15 hours and, uh, and 51 minutes left. I'm going to just go share that on, on the Twitters, on the Twitters. Um, Time check. Amber heard is four hours is not a lot. Nine. Uh, that's not a lot at all with a rebuttal case. 15 hours, 51 minutes. Wow. All right. I'm going to get to some questions. That was uh, the, what happened this afternoon? Like, what seriously what happened this afternoon i i don't know that
that was a lot. And that was, that was this morning was very fiery. Cross's Denison was very good. Um, but this afternoon was just, just, a, just a mess. Um, just a mess. Who are all the people with Johnny lawyers and security tend to be the people with him. Um, we've got Joe Nearman has put his hat back on in court. I don't know where DUI guy went. Oh, he's right here. So we've got them exiting court, but these are Johnny Depp's legal team. And then I know his security guards are probably up with him and have already taken him out of the courtroom. Um, Amber Heard seems happy with how today ended or at least smiling, exiting the courtroom. I think that that's exhausting. Or maybe she's saying, see, this proves that Johnny Depp's legal team is just beating up on all of us. But that was really just painful. Um, at the end there with that expert, look, the expert is a double edged sword because anything she said can just be flipped around. It's like, oh, but you can't say for sure this, or you can't say be f- for sure that it's just, it's just a lot. So that cross was wandering. I don't know if they were trying to run out the clock. Um, they maybe should have given more time or if they were concerned that Depp would be called, they might have been trying. This is possible. This is speculation. But I wonder if they were trying to get to the end of the day so that A, he could get a heads up and B, he wouldn't have to get on the stand this afternoon and then not be able to talk to his lawyers. Remember, once Depp gets on the stand, you guys, thank you for subscribing. Once Depp gets on the stand, he can't talk to his lawyers about his testimony. So this might have been trying to get to the end of the day, not sure that whether or not Depp would be called based on their statement. But this also might be the 3D chess of trial where they released a media statement or someone released a media statement saying that Depp would be called today. And they might have been relying on that, trying to close out the day so Depp didn't have to take the stand. That is a possible thought. But there's also statements released to the media, and you don't know how reliable those are, um, statements released to the media that calling Depp at this point would be useless. So if they wrapped up early and then he gets on the stand and they can't talk to him overnight, then that's a problem. So uh, it might have been strategy. They've got plenty of time. I mean, they've got plenty of time. So with Depp, they said they're still discussing whether he's going to testify. That's (laughs) ah, sorry, F in the chat for my ears. I forgot to turn it off. I apologize. Sorry. I had my headphones into apologies, apologies, apologies. So with that, um, I guess the feed's over and I forgot to turn the audio off. Um, yep. So they've got about a 12 hour difference. I'm, ch- I'm trusting your maths. Yeah. Absolute F in the chat for all of our ears. I'm so sorry. about that was fucking terrible. Let's get to some questions. And then um, I've sent out a stream link to those that were in court today to see if they are able to join us. And we will just see what happens. I want to know what the jury thought of this morning. I imagine the jury was bored as everyone was this afternoon. But again, the only strategy that I see here is trying to um, trying to run out the clock. That's what I that's what I think. So um, hold on. I'm seeing a tweet that pisses me off. Give me a second. Now I'm going to be responding in my feelings because I have not had time to pause, p- process it. But here's the thing. Kat Tenbarge is reporting that people have been review bombing the experts called by Amber Heard's team. This is the psychiatrist who testified today all in the last 10 minutes. That's not okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. His His testimony was a mess. But if you've not seen this doctor, don't review him. Don't review him. Don't review him. This is not okay. This is not okay at all. If you have not worked with someone, do not review bomb them. You are welcome to be in the chat. This is not law nerds. I'm not talking to you. Me, Emily, are you yelling at Twitter? Yeah, a little bit. Um, are you yelling at the internet? Yes. Are you yelling at the law nerds? No, because the law nerds would never do this shit because it's total fuckery. But review bombing people who testify in a case, even if you hate their testimony, not okay. T- talk about their testimony on Twitter. Sure. Talk about what they said. Sure. Talk about the fact that it seems that he called Johnny Depp an idiot in his deposition. Sure. But do not, do not go review bomb them. It's not okay. Oh, so I'm sure they will report it, but it's just an awful side of the internet. It also absolutely 
supports Amber Heard's side of the case that she is subject to harassment online. Not that I, I mean, I, I've seen all of the lawyers that have been commenting on this case also subject to hate online, people saying that they're biased. And again, we're not in court. We're just looking at, well, some of us are in court, but we're not the lawyers trying this case. We're just watching it happen and talking about what's going on. But lots of Lots of those talking about this case have received this, but this is just absolutely unacceptable fuckery. And I'm glad it, it got called out. She has a threat, it looks like, um, for review bombing others, but this is not, not okay. It's just not, it's not okay. And it's just, again, experts do their job. And in a normal court that's not televised, this would never um, this would never happen. Nobody would go and shred the experts. That expert's cross was awful. Go on Twitter and say this cross was awful. He got chewed up, whatever. Um, talk about the fact that he does kind of actually look like Dr. Do Dr. Doofenshmirtz, but review bombing someone's professional practice because you don't like the way they testified that you've watched streaming or on television is it's just not okay. And yes, Google can shut it down. Um, and yes, Google should shut it down, but it's just that kind of real world and going real world with people is just gross. So with that, um, we've seen it, but again, it, if the jurors and the jurors shouldn't be online, but if the jurors see this kind of stuff, it, you know, what kind of concerns might they have about their testimony and, or about their verdict? And they shouldn't, the jurors shouldn't be worried about the online backlash, but we're seeing online backlash and it's just not okay. Um, so it is okay for the judge to help Elaine. No, but she did. Um, but it's, it's again, what's happening in open court is between the lawyers and the lawyers can address it with the court. But again, the internet harassing professionals, um, even if you don't like their testimony, talk about their testimony. Leaving reviews is not okay. Going real world with people is not okay. Threatening people is not, it's just not okay. I know you all know that you are all law nerds um, and anyone who wants to hire them can go and just watch their testimony. Now it's out there. It's just, oh, it's just so uh, update on psychiatrist. Google has taken down all of the reviews. That's appropriate. That's absolutely appropriate. Um, maybe just maybe Google reviews. It could be a move on Amber's PR team to make Depp's fans look bad. It could be, but I also think that the internet does that and you don't know which fans they are. The internet does do that. Um, you don't know whose side they're coming from, but it makes, I think it makes everyone look bad when that happens in a case like this. It just gets too heated. It just gets too heated. Um, Y'all, we're going to all have withdrawals. I can't read this when this is over. Um, I don't, Johnny Depp hasn't won yet. Even if Amber Heard wins this case, he won the public opinion. Maybe. Um, I hope one day she, we'll see. Um, we will absolutely see what happens after this case. The jury is going to decide it. All right. So with that, um, that little aside of like, hey, don't don't go real world with people on the internet. Um, we're going to keep talking about it. So what is the audio? When Waldman's statements... Waldman's statements came out in 2020 and I need to go look at the dates, but there was audio that came out in connection with the UK trial. Sorry, I hate wearing my hair down because then I always fuss with it. That came out with regard to the UK trial. Um, that was some of the audios that have been played in court of Amber Heard saying, tell the world, Johnny, tell them you are a victim. You know, I, Johnny Depp, a man too, am a victim of domestic violence. Some of those audios came out. And so those audios weren't super flattering for Amber Heard. And I think when you're looking at the Waldman statements and whether they're defamatory and whether there's damage, you have to look into other statements or other context as well. And they started to do that. I think that on cross, it was done better with Depp saying, well, what about Rottenborn did a good job on cross with this? What about this? Um, what about this article? What about this article with these headlines? What about this Rolling Stone article? What about these? And they should have done that more with Amber Heard, instead of banging on about Jason Momoa's career, it should have gone on a little bit um, about, well, there was this in the press about her and there was that in the press about her. But also that might be a strategic choice that they don't want to show there's been negative press because that's part of the hate campaign that Amber Heard's team has alluded to. No one brought up COVID at all um, with these hirings. So, you know, we'll just, yeah, we'll just see. Let's see. 
Question. Do you know Hunter McDonald and family? He's a lawyer in Nashville. No, his father was too. No, they are family. I'll be visiting them in Nashville in two weeks. Uh, enjoy. I love Nashville. It's great. We are not longtime Nashvillians. All of my legal practice was in California before we moved here. So before I was doing just consulting and content, Baywatch Momoa has nothing on GOT Momoa. Fair to know. I don't, I don't, I didn't watch Baywatch Hawaii. Um, I pledge $150 million if we stop the torture. I mean, seriously, their strategy worked. I no longer remember anything from earlier in the day. Might've been it. Um, to you, why man nodding off? I think we saw everyone in that court nodding off. I bet the jurors were too. You know what's not nodding off? Y'all on the subscribe button. Thank you. Is it possible they can't mention the audio? I don't remember if uh, it starts, if it was with the stats guy. They didn't pin it with the stats guy either. And it's really interesting. I mean, they'll argue it later when those audios came out, but they brought it up with Waldman. Doesn't Amber's team help each other? I don't know. I haven't seen them working together the same way Depp's team has been working together. I have not at all. Was the last cross bad for Depp? I think it was a waste of time. I mean, I don't think it did any damage to Depp. I just think it seemed like a waste of time. It might've seemed like they were uh, grasping at stuff. It was just it was wandering. It was not a good cross, but bad for them. I don't, it's really hard to parse. It depends on how the jury responded. The jury might've been so bored that it just didn't matter. Um, Caroline said, you're amazing. Thank you. Off topic. What are your favorite law movies? Oh, it would take a long time for my brain to wrap around that after the day we've just had the ones I enjoy the most off the top of my mind are legally blonde. Um, there's, there's moments in her cross that are really, really fun. And the judge is like, can't, can't, or that. I don't know why you're giving me a lesson on mens rea. And I, the courtroom scenes of my cousin Vinny are actually really, really good. Um, other law movies aren't coming to mind at the moment. <sighs> Dr. Spiegel negotiated the fact that any person negated the fact that any person who was the victim of abuse in any form may also turn to drugs and alcohol as a way to cope. And somehow this means he is not an abuser, not the abused. I, I have no idea what that doctor accomplished because they went round and round in circles. Um, why would the court deny any permission for Amber Heard's team to psychologically evaluate Johnny Depp? Because Amber Heard is the one who put her own mental health at issue with regard to PTSD and introduced PTSD. So they were allowed to do a forensic psych um, with regard to that. But Johnny Depp did not. He admitted to addiction. He They did a stipulation with regard to medical records. And I think that's why it was denied. So. And that's, we, I talked about that a little at the top of the show. Um, does anyone know who goes on the witness stand tomorrow? No, but I, th I've seen in the chat that Depp's witness list has been shared to the media. Do you think Elaine wanted to have more time to use on redirect? So that's why they went longer knowing she would go through each thing Dennis and talk about. It's possible that that was, it's possible. Um, do they have to rotate attorneys? No, they could have one attorney do all the questioning. It's just really hard to keep. It's really hard to keep in your head. Um, drops close support for her friend Amber Heard. I haven't seen that, um, but I will go look at that in the media. I haven't seen that. If the public opinion is this outrageous, one has to presume their emotions would be the same, but minimize pretty sure the jury has decided. I, the jury might have already decided, so it might be a quicker verdict than um, than I suspected. Do you think one of Amber's friends is who pooped on the bed and that's why they're testifying in support of her? Uh, some kind of bizarre doo-doo blackmail. I have no idea. I don't know if it would matter if it was one of her friends. I mean, the whole thing has been, the whole poop on the bed thing is strange. They tried to prove that Amber wouldn't do it because I'm going to come back to that question. You're welcome, Kelly D. They try to prove that Amber wouldn't do it because they didn't believe Johnny Depp would be coming back. So what's the point of pooping on the bed if you don't think he's coming back? Do you think Hertz team alluded to the fact that Johnny would be testifying today so that people would tune in and listen to their strongest witnesses thus far? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because it got leaked on what Friday, I think um, is when it got leaked. Maybe, uh, maybe, 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 maybe. So long time sub keep killing it. Thank you. Shout out to my kid, Curtis plumber by day, lawner by night, law tube life. I mean, the law tube life will keep you up 24 hours a day right now. Ah. Uh, question. What would Amber Heard's team ask Johnny Depp if they called him tomorrow? I don't think they're going to call him tomorrow. They would try to ask him about agency. And what I said in my, I have a YouTube short on it and I have a, 
like a reel and a TikTok, what I thought when that went down on Saturday is that they could ask him, was Waldman your lawyer during this time? And he would say, that's privileged. And then they would ask other questions and the objection would be privileged. And then they might get into a few things saying, well, do you think Amber Heard's a hoax and a liar? And he might say, I do, but I didn't say that. I don't know what they could really get into with him. Most of it would be privileged. Um, I've been at work all day and only got glimpses of what's happened. Can you summarize or let me know what I should watch? Um, the cross-examination of the psychiatrist was really fiery. The doctor, the orthopedic doctor with the finger was interesting. This afternoon felt like a train wreck. Um, Kate Moss testifies on Wednesday, according to people. I mean, that sounds likely if the judge thinks evidence will end on Thursday. I mean, it has to. Just joining from Australia. Sorry if you already asked, but if Amber Heard's case is dismissed, does JD get a rebuttal? We talked about that earlier today. Um, and yes, if Amber Heard's case gets dismissed, the closing arguments will be Depp closing, Heard closing, Depp rebuttal, done. Um, love your explanations in the swearing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Sierra on Twitter said has... Depp's rebuttal list, metadata expert, flight attendant, Jennifer Howell, Depp's hand surgeon, exciting. That does sound exciting. That'll be good. I mean, they're going to keep going on about the hand, I suppose. Why is it that Amber Heard has had bad publicity because um, of her? Uh, I don't know. Why does that not count for the reason people don't want to work with her? I don't know um, quite what that means by Viv, but she might have bad at it, a bad press with regard to uh, attitude and things like that. I don't know. And it didn't come up. So all the court, all they have to consider is what's been presented in court with the drugs ex expert. I was, I was puzzled how they managed to paint Johnny Depp as a narcissist and Amber Heard is having PTSD. The backlash is what you get warned about when trying to call out a narcissist. I don't know. Um, they definitely tried to paint it that way, but it's her expert. So I'm not surprised. We'll see if they call, um, We'll see if they call Dr. Curry in rebuttal. They may um, send a message earlier, um, but I am autistic. Hard to use words. No, hard to use less words. Um, Hedwig, thank you for sharing. I, I'm ADHD. It's hard for me to use less words. I talk all the time. Please read my letter and email. I will check my email. Um, I will check my email. I have not been in my email in a few days because we've been super, super swamped over here at Team Baker. So I will check my email. Are they avoiding bringing in Depp because he can speak slowly around the clock? Maybe. I mean, they've got, what, four hours left. <laughs> can Depp call up past heard witnesses? Yep. I don't know if they'll need to, though. They did that on cross-examination. There might not be a point. Um, Brenda said, I'm confused why they spent so much time on today's witnesses. Same. What significant proof can they get from the last lady from Amber Heard's team? Damages. I don't know why they spent so much time on cross. It's a damages expert. How did you determine this? Okay. So you can't really directly tie it to that. Okay. What about these other negative things in the press? Can that do it? Um, Alexander, congrats on being the second most super chatted channel worldwide this week. Well, thank you. This week's just kicking off. So I appreciate the look ahead. Um, Elena said, knew this may be ma naive, but how is a lawyer picked for a given day? Um, they're not, the lawyers are picked for the given witness. So it's whichever lawyer has been doing the work with regard to that witness is the lawyer that will talk about that witness. So they're, the witnesses are broken up and they, they prepare each witness. Can Dr. Curry comment on Amber Heard's courtroom behavior in the rebuttal? Uh, if she testifies in rebuttal, if she saw something that uh, fits with her diagnosis or her evaluation, she can. Um, I just figured it out. Johnny Depp was probably a little nervous about testifying today. And I don't think they got the memo that they weren't using him. Maybe that's what happened. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe question. So what is the order of closing? If her case is not dismissed, Depp heard Depp rebuttal heard just to the counterclaim rebuttal. That's the order. Can they use the audiovisual as demonstratives in closing? Yes, they can, and they should. What is rebuttal? Sorry for the stupid question. Susie, not a stupid question. We're Lawnards here. We're here to talk about questions. I love answering questions. Just ask me things and I'll tell you. Um, it's So it's not a stupid question. Rebuttal when it comes to the witness or rebuttal when it comes to the trial is your case that goes after. So 
you get your case in chief, the other side gets their case in chief, and then you get rebuttal. Rebuttal is to undo the damage or to rebut what they've shown. So Johnny Depp will get a rebuttal to show, hey, they said all these things, but we have these other witnesses to prove these things because they have the burden. Um, and then the same when you go to closing arguments, you get to just go to what they said. So Depp goes first and then heard. So then they get to rebut what heard said. And then heard gets to rebut what Depp said with regard to just the, um, with regard to just the counterclaim. So, uh, people say the judge is unbiased. I think the judge is unbiased. I think the judge has been really good. I think the judge has done, I think the judge has ruled fairly for both sides. I think the judge is tired and I think the judge is annoyed with Elaine's questioning, but I don't think the judge has shown bias. Um, could there be, a, could they be avoiding the audio because the leak could be part of the smear campaign? That's absolutely possible. It's not going to open a door. They already had Waldman testify, but it's absolutely possible that they don't want to get back into it because of that. So yes, that's possible. I mean, that's possible speculated and, um, possible. So let's see. Let's get some more questions. Uh, do you think they want her to say things so that they can refute them with a future witness. It's possible. I think, Ooh, we pinged. Thank you. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be going into damages too much more. Would you be nervous if you only had four hours left? Fuck yes. They have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and they have four hours left and three days. That's going to be a problem. Do you think it's realistic that the, uh, that at least a few jurors would cheat and check social media during the trial? <sighs> I hope not, but in a case this big that's gone this long, I even if they're not looking for it, would a juror maybe come across something or something come across? Like you can't even open social media without seeing this case. So could it happen that something came into their sphere even if they were um if they weren't looking for it? It's possible. I generally think jurors try really hard to be diligent and we will just we will just see. So um, let's see. Can JD's team bring witnesses that will state her difficulty getting along with others on set and online? I don't know. They might bring in the Warner brothers thing that talked about no chemistry. That's been going around online. We will have to see question. Do you, th did you see the TikTok where the young lady showed a bruise and laceration kit that looks very similar to the Milani palette and show what it did? I did see that TikTok. That evidence hasn't been presented in court though, but I appreciated the TikTok of showing how a bruise kit actually works. You put it on top. Of it. Um, what if anything, Apple pie, I'm teasing. What if they didn't bring up the audio because she's their witness too, and they're saving it for rebuttal. She wouldn't be their witness too. They might be saving it for rebuttal. They might just be arguing it at this point. Hey, it's not, it's not the op. It's not these Waldman statements because before the Waldman statements was this audio and then this audio, and they could just play it in closing. Cause I think it's kind of an obvious point. Um, is it common what Elaine is doing, telling the judge why the objection is wrong? no, and why she should be able to ask the question. No, this judge has been really patient, patient. And Elaine has not said things like um, legal grounds for why the objection should be overruled. She's not saying it's an exception to hearsay. The exception is present sense impression. She's not giving a legal exception. She's saying, your honor, I don't think it is. And that's a speaking objection. And that's wild. Why doesn't Ben Chu do much directing cross Ben Chu's lead counsel? So he's kind of running the plays, if you will, um, not prepping witnesses and he's doing the legal arguments and he's very good at them. Um, would I love to see more from, from Camille? Yes. And then the attorney, I'm going to forget her name, but the attorney who did the direct of Johnny Depp was also really good. And I'd like to see more from her. How do you think they'll use their four hours tomorrow? I don't, I think they could use their four hours tomorrow. I think they, it's realistic, but we'll see. Question, how, they used four hours today. How does she compare to others? Um, that's, I don't know. That assumes facts that have not been proven yet. Um, could there be any legal repercussions? Could Amber or her witnesses face any jail time? Not that I've seen at this point. Could Amber be charged with perjury? Not that I've seen at this point. If that happens, it would happen down the road. And we've seen um, Waldman's testimony where he tried to start a perjury investigation. So whether we'll see that happening, I don't know. Um, so we will see. Jessica Meyer. I thought it was Jessica, but I didn't want to get it wrong. Jessica Myers did the direct with Johnny Depp. I quite liked her as well. I was hoping we'd see more of her. We have not, but maybe we will on rebuttal. So we'll just have to see what happens. 
Emily, could you make your face cam bigger or the court stream? There is a gap. I can't make them touch because of the way that StreamYard is laid out. I don't use um, I don't use the other one, OBS. So I know there's a gap. It happens. So even though there's a gap, mm, let's see. Um, question, what's your favorite trait of Judge A? Patient, English teacher turned law nerd from Germany here. We'll definitely use what if any homework have you done? <laughs> Judge A's been patient. Um, I don't agree with all of Judge A's rulings, but she's kept this courtroom running a tight ship. She seems to, um, when she's had it, she seems to make it clear that she's had it. And I think that's been very fair. She's been like, that's not a cure all lane. Like I, she's been tremendously patient. So her writing to her written opinions have been great question. Uh, can Amber use her four hours spread out? Yep. Whenever they're questioning, here's how the time's working in court, the lawyer doing the questioning Depp's lawyer or Hurd's lawyer, that's whose time it counts against. So they could ask a very few questions and move on. Um, Ms. Michabelle, Emily, you're cracking me the hell up. I swear you're ready to reach through the TV and handle the questions yourself. No, but it's fun to do so, you know, in a, in a, quarterbacky kind of way over here. It's much easier to not be in court trying to process this all in real time. It's much easier to be on the other side of the screen processing this commentary. They are processing a whole lot more information than I have to process in a courtroom. I did that for a lot of years. So processing um, the judge, the jury, the pretrial rulings, um, what question is coming next, how the witness is responding. It's so much more information. It's much, much easier to be on this side of the screen. And that goes across for all of the lawyers here. It's much easier for me to sit here doing what I'm doing than it is for them to be in court doing what they're doing. But that's what makes it fun to comment on. Do you think team JD uh, could do this for another Elaine slip up in time consumption? I, I wonder if they were trying to run out the clock on not having Depp testify. Um, Hedwig, we got this pulled up, um, sent a couple times. You, we got it. We got it pulled up. You're all good. Um, we will, we will pull up the, I wish we had a gift membership, gift option membership, but I will check the emails. Thank you very much. So no, we will get it. And, and we have uh, gifts in store for the moderators who've been working so hard. Question. Have you seen or heard anything in this trial that skews your opinion towards Amber? asking what you think would skew the jury. That's a great question. Um, this trial comes in legally with Amber Heard in the strongest position. Amber Heard legally has the stronger case from the position, from the begin, from the beginning. Defamation is hard to prove. Defamation with public figure is hard to prove. She consulted a lawyer. Sorry, my butt is getting tired. She consulted a lawyer who was trying to help reduce the risk of defamation, which means she appreciated there was a risk of defamation, but could also mean she doesn't have actual malice. No, the lawyer told me it was fine. I didn't believe that this was untrue. Of course, if Depp's team shows or proves that she's fabricating, then they're going to say, no matter what the lawyer said, it's still defamatory because it's not true. Um, but legally, the stronger position. I think they went too big with the allegations. Um, now, if those allegations are true and the jury finds them true, fine. But the allegations and the documentary evidence, the photos, et cetera, do not match in my opinion. And that makes this case harder for Heard. So I always thought Heard was in the better position coming in. The thing that has skewed me away from that position legally is that the photos and the audio don't match the testimony. But Heard had a lot of friends that say they saw it. The jury might rely on that or the jury might be like, well, they were all living together. And those those friends' testimony also don't match. But then you have, you know, Depp's former agent and former business manager saying, well, you know, he was angry and he would do these things. Those things all go to whether there's abuse and course of control. And if they had stuck to the abuse and course of control, I think it's very hard for the for the win on this because you can a juror can look at the audio and the throwing things and be like, no, this was controlling in a way that could be abusive. Therefore, literally on its face, the op-ed is true. But I think the sexual violence headline is where you get to a sticking point where if the jury wants to find liability for Amber Heard, it's the digital article and it's the retweet. The print article, I don't see how they win still at this point. The print article does not have that much more inflammatory headline. And once they got, I think they should have stuck away from any of that testimony 
and just narrowed in on the control, the coercive control and the, you know, the anger and the angry audios and the name calling. And that would have gotten them farther than what has happened. Now I think we have a disconnect between the testimony and the evidence that, that creates a path for Depp to possibly win this case. And I didn't think that was possible in week one. So, um, so it's hard, but I still think I thought Heard came in with a win. Um, and I think that that question has narrowed a lot. So I don't know if that quite answered the question right. If a witness recants, are they absolved of perjury? Not necessarily, but it normally won't go to prosecution. If they're like, you're right, I messed up, I apologize. They normally just deal with it with the court. Does the four hours for the defense include their closing? No, everybody gets two hours for closing that's separate than this. Question, does Moss being called help drive home the point from a from a rebuttal doctor to testify that becoming a sudden abuser late in life is highly unlikely. I don't know, Scott. I don't know who they're bringing up. So I don't know who they're bringing up. Um, I think it goes to, I think it goes to Amber Heard or their perspective that Amber Heard's exaggerating. And she's like, I was thinking Kate Moss. And then I did this and you bring Kate Moss in. Did you have any issues in your relationship with Deb? And she's like, no, I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Question. So if there's no time left for her, does that mean there will be potential rebuttal witnesses without a cross? I think that's what that means, but we will see what the law says in Virginia. Question. NPR is reporting Depp's in, Depp is winning public opinion. Lately, the headlines have been pro heard thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. I touched on it in the podcast. I touched in it. Um, I touched in it in next week's podcast that I recorded too late last night, but the headlines, I don't mind there being pro herd or pro depth headlines at all. The reporting gets to be what the reporting is. What I mind is saying that if you don't believe Amber Heard, you are this, that, or the other is a problem for me. Trying to name call or put in a bucket or a box, especially a highly inflammatory one, anyone who doesn't believe Amber Heard, I think is damaging. Those are the headlines I have not been a huge fan of because that's not what we're seeing play out in court. And when reasonable minds can disagree, um, but when the headlines in court diverge significantly, I have some issues and questions about it. I think Rick Hogue over on Hogue Law does a fantastic job of breaking down media content and breaking down the red herrings, the false presumptions, the ad hominem attacks, the political polarization. And I think he does it brilliantly better than I ever could. And I'm honestly just always in awe of the way he very linearly breaks down those media reportings, much more than me being like, um, it's kind of bullshit to call everyone that um, has questions about this case, this, that, and an extremist. It, that's a much less of an analysis than Ho gives. He does a much better job than I do. Would the comps of leading role versus supporting role be brought up in closing? I don't know if they'll even hammer on it. You guys, I can't believe we're at almost 490, by the way. So thank you. Approaching the judge counts in time. It depends on who's approaching and it generally goes to the side that loses the objection, but not always. Question, what do you think about the comment regarding the time issue in Virginia law? I'm going to go look at it. I haven't evaluated it yet, but it's possible, but I don't know. The question regarding time issue is stuff I've seen on Twitter. Here, let's just pull it up. Let's just do it together. Let's just go see what Andrea had to say. Um, Andrea, um, there she is. Let's see. <laughs> she has a whole bunch of fish on her Twitter. I don't think that was there before, but I honestly don't know. But there's like a whole legal color commentator. I love that. I love a color commentator. Andrea, I love that. I might need to go change. My, I might need to go change my uh, Twitter handle to legal color commentator. I feel like that's a great description of what we do. And I'm loving the sports ball analogy of it all. Um, let's see, because lots of people are asking what happens if Amber Heard's team um, because lots of people are asking what happens when Amber Heard Amber Heard's team runs out the clock on her a lot of time. I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce folks to the jurisprudential theory of legal realism. The theory holds simply, the law is what the judge says the law is. VA clearly recognizes that cross-examination on a material issue is a basic right in a trial that cannot be denied simply due to time limits imposed according to this published precedent. However, sometimes other judges will say it's okay as long as you give plenty of warning according to this unpublished precedent. Andrea, look at you doing a law review article on this on Twitter. So it's very hard to predict what Judge A is going to do to enforce her time limit. What Judge A said was... 
If you are in the middle of a question, I will stop you. She has warned them since the beginning of the case. If she's risk averse about being reversed on appeal, the safe thing is to give them a couple of minutes to cross-examine anyway. If she thinks other judges will sympathize, she will cut them off. But she could create an issue where one time is managed, one side has managed their time well and the other side didn't, therefore allowing one side to game the system. And there's been a lot of time waste. So there's been a lot of time waste. So she might not have a lot of empathy um, with the time wasting. So let's see. All right. There is another witness list. Let's go for it. Let's just go for what the internet is reporting. We're just answering the internet live at this point. Sure. Sure. And then I'm going to answer this question. Question, please. Could they open tomorrow with defendant rest and then go straight to the motion to strike? They could. Um, yeah, they could if they don't have any more witnesses. Absolutely. That would be spicy. It would make the morning very interesting. I cannot wait to get to the motion to strike very excited about it, like unreasonably excited about it. Cause I love the way that Ben Chu, um, argued before. So according to a source close to Johnny Depp below is a list of expected rebuttal witnesses for Tuesday, May 24th and Wednesday, May 25th. These are expected witnesses. There were potential to not be called. That's fair. May 24th, Johnny Depp rebuttal, Dr. Richard Shaw, Dr. Kimberly Collins, forensic pathologist, Candy Davidson, um, gold brawn deposition representative for CHLA. They have to bring in, she didn't pay CHLA, but if the counterclaim gets yeeted, no, I think they would still need it. Walter Hamada deposition president, DC based film productions, Warner brothers, Richard Marks, the entertainment lawyers back. I liked Richard Marks. I was fascinated. Doug Banya, social media expert, possibly Morgan Knight witness of the Hicks bill incident. Dr. David Cl clubber, a uh, hand doctor of Mr. Depp, Jennifer Howell by deposition, former friend and boss of Whitney. Um, did I miss anybody? Mike Spindler, live economic damages expert. I don't know if they'll call him back. Kate Moss, former friend and girlfriend of Depp. Brian, Brian Neumeister, media, metadata expert. That'll be fascinating. Dr. Curry is on the list. Johnny Depp, Linda Phillip or Lydia Phillip and Morgan um, Tremaine. So there we go. That is what's being reported um, I, let's see, this is probably from court TV, but I grabbed it off of a different Twitter account because I was tagged. Thank you, Shauna, for tagging me on Twitter. Law nerds, y'all are the best research lawyers ever. Let's see. Most compelling testimony of Amber Heard was the SV with the bottle. I'm the daughter of a CPSD childhood SV and, and recalling her SV. I felt familiarity with lack of detail cause, uh, causes wonder if a childhood memory. Um, I, Okay. Thank you for sharing Amy Fox. I mean, I think some will, some will find it was compelling. Some, I mean, I, I, again, I have some questions about her testimony personally. Um, hi, Emily. Great commentary from New Zealand. Thank you. But again, if the jury finds it to be credible, then it goes directly to the defamation. What would be a normal amount of hours for both sides should be around at this point in trial? Ruth, I have no idea. I never had to do a trial with a time limit and I never want to. Depp's team has a lot more time left. They have a lot more witnesses left. They have a rebuttal case. They have to split their case in two. Um, Herd's team needs to be prepared for it, but I can't give you that estimate. This would be a nightmare for me. I would hate it the most. Question, um, how does a judge decide how long the trial lasts? I'm baffled. I have no idea how Judge A came to 61 hours per side. It might have been in civil cases, there's a lot more known. Most of these witnesses have been deposed. They know how long uh, roughly those at those depositions might get edited down to, they're able to parse that time more. So I don't know if it was like, you've got this many witnesses, you've got this many witnesses, six weeks. Cause we've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of rehashing of stuff. There's been time wasted. It happens in a trial. It happens with me on a live stream where I repeat myself, but I don't know how the judge picked 61 hours experience in the courtroom talking to the lawyers, asking how much time they need. They ask, um, can Amber Heard claim her lawyers to be incompetent? Nope, Katie. I think a lot of this is client-led decision-making, and I haven't seen them make decisions. I mean, I've had questions, but no, I don't think we're in the realms of incompetent. We're in the realms of uh, difficult. Chris, we answered this a bit earlier about the leaked audio and whether that leaked audio around the time of the UK case damaged Amber Heard's career or reputation more than the Waldman statements. The jury might have been over it. Will the jury be able to hear Amber in the audio stating she was sorry and didn't mean to hurt Johnny because the damage caused all the damage while in Australia? I don't know if they will be. I'm thinking that they won't be. Isn't the flight attendant on the list 
the one he supposedly grabbed by the wrist. I don't know. And I'm wondering if that's who Morgan Tremaine is, but I don't know. Um, I've spent so much time with you since this trial. I feel like you're a member of the family. Thanks for having me. <laughs> my family, I, I feel like I haven't seen my family while well, I've been streaming. It's been such long days, but it's been great. Um, I love being here with y'all. I love being a part of the Lawnard family. Um, and we on this channel are Lawnards. Did you hear Elaine whisper to Denison after lunch? We were still considering it. Do you think it's possible um, settlement talks before deliberations? No, I think we are still considering it goes to depth testifying. So, and she said at the end of today, they're still considering it. And that might've been part of the dragging on the cross-examination is that they didn't want Depp on the stand today. Serious question. How does this help either side? Um, that's from 4.30 today. I have no idea. It was running the clock today. Um, I thought hearsay was allowed with an expert witness. That's different. So chatty Kathy. Hey, I'm trying to wrap my brain, not around this question, but around my answer. Expert witnesses are allowed to rely on hearsay, things other people said, things other people did, things in other reports. They're not allowed to repeat that hearsay. I relied on Dr. Whoever, whatever's report. You know, I relied on the report from Doc McStuffins. What you're not allowed to say is, oh, and Doc McStuffins diagnosed so-and-so with such and such and did this and this and that. No, I relied on Doc McStuffins report to come to my assessment that this and this and that happened. But you're not allowed to repeat the hearsay. You can just rely on the hearsay. Hopefully that made sense. Did Depp's team purposely, purposely use up time to hold Elaine till the end of the day? I think so. Doesn't the judge seems like a peach? She seems like the most patient human alive. And there were days I need to go find the clip because the day that she made all the faces from the bench, she was like, it was great. She was like, they were showing her demonstratives. I think it was the day when they were introducing Amber Turd with the, with the media expert, um, whose resume was fascinating, but they were giving her demonstratives and she was like, and I, I think it was that day. I think it was that. Do you think WB will take the change.org petition into consideration? I have no idea. I have no idea. Can team her just keep calling witnesses? Not if they run out of time, they can't, they only have four hours left. Do you think anyone after Amber, do you think after Amber Heard's awful testimony and multiple discrepancies that her acting career is done? I think this case has probably hurt both of their careers going forward. JD should bring law and lumber in as an expert. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think it would be great. If the essay is true, why hasn't there been a criminal case? I, th I don't know how criminal cases are initiated in, um, in South Africa or sorry, in Australia. But what I will say, I'm sorry, I saw essay. My brain just went to South Africa. Um, I don't know how Australia works with regard to their criminal system. What I do want to be careful to say is not every victim of SA, and in fact, quite often victims of SA do not report criminally, do not want to go through the criminal process, um, find the criminal process tremendously dehumanizing, and don't always feel like justice at the end of it was worth everything they went through to get there. So I'm not saying that the SA allegations are not true because there is not a criminal um investigation because there was never a criminal report because so many victims of SA do not report and do not proceed that way. So with that, I, um, I just want to make sure that we're careful with that line of thought. I'm not yelling at you, Colby, just making sure that we're clear that just because there isn't a criminal, um, investigation doesn't mean something didn't happen. And with, but once you have the police at a location saying we've determined there's no injuries, that is a different situation. If Amber's team runs out of time, does that mean they can't do a rebuttal? They don't get to do a rebuttal. Um, they don't get rebuttal witnesses. They get to do a rebuttal and cross as to the counterclaim. Um, if Hamed is to appear tomorrow for Depp's team and his statement says Herd's issues have no connection with any Johnny Depp Waldman statement, this helps Depp. It does. It does. It does. Have you seen the video of Whitney around the pool with her friends? I have not. I've been really trying in this case not to go down the rabbit hole too much. I've looked at what's happened in court and how the internet's reacting to it, but I've not gone down the rabbit hole of all of the extra information because I want to keep clear what the jury knows. And the more information I have to parse, like jury knows this, jury doesn't know this, the harder it is for my brain because I'm ADHD. Why is it, or, or, or I'm old, or it's just hard for me. I don't know. One of those reasons, but it's the more info I have, the harder it is for me to parse what the jury knows and doesn't know. 
why is it that they keep bringing up pirates, but not the fact that he wasn't in Fantastic Beasts? I think Fantastic Beasts is much more aligned to him losing it right after the UK, um, right after the UK ruling. That's what I think. Uh, this will have no effect on Johnny Depp's career negatively. If he wins still very likely, even if he loses, doesn't matter what happens in this trial. Public doesn't change its mind on things like this. I mean, possible. So X TMZ producer, that'll be interesting. Morgan Tremaine. Can you tell us about the copyright of the video and who sold it to you? Cause that's the information I want. Um, if you were representing Johnny, what would be your strategy from here on out? I haven't even sat down to think about it, but I think I would go after the, uh, the lies where, where has Amber, where has Amber Heard contradicted herself? Where have her witnesses contradicted themselves? Where can we prove that there are lies? Um, or, you know, if he still got paid for fantastic beasts, then a hundred percent because he still got paid for fantastic beasts, then it can't be damages. I didn't know he's still gotten paid because nobody's talked about it in court. Question. Could the jury decide within hours? They could, if they have hours to decide. It depends on what time they get the case on Friday. I know I was in the middle of a question and then I moved and then I'm sorry. Um, apologies. It, it is getting late and I can feel that I am tired. I went grocery shopping for 45 minutes and she's still on the stand. Yep. That was probably not a fun experience for her either. Did they strategically lengthen this witness to bore the jury and not remember how annoyed they were? Maybe. So we'll see. So, oh, Depp's team. What would I do if I was Depp's team? I would point out the inconsistencies and solidify my case and leave it on the note of this is why our side of the events is true. And this is why it's defamatory because our side of the events is true. Could team member heard use the negative reviews against JD? If so, can team JD submit new numbers to show the supporters majority JD? Um, I don't know the question. Not because of the Waldman messages sent years ago, but because of the millions who are watching and have formed opinions based on that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. There's really not time at this point to reset that because it's the damages that were done uh, closer in time in 2020. Um, I can't spell here correctly. It's okay. What was the name of the person you mentioned who covers media content? I'm interested. Oh, Richard Hogue over on Hogue Law and Virtual Legality. He is another YouTuber in this realm. I shared one of his videos not that long ago on Twitter. So over on YouTube at Hogue Law, H-O-G. Here, let's just pull up his channel because that's going to be way easier to just show you instead of me trying to spell Hogue badly because those are letters that go in the wrong place for my brain. Um, so I will spell it wrong and I don't want to do that. Let's see. Ah, and I've already spelled it badly. Uh, and he covers a lot of video game law as well. So here we go. H-O-E-G, Hogue Law. And the hangouts and headlines are where he breaks that stuff down. I really like that new segment on his channel. I hope he does it more. Just hit 100K subscribers. Great creator. Very linear in the way he breaks things down. So Hogue Law. Don't hold it against him that he went to Michigan. <laughs> That's just me teasing Hogue Law. Um, uh, Lauren, the trucker, thank you. I appreciate it. Great channel. Keep up the great work. I will try to. Thank you. Um, question, what will happen when Amber Heard run, runs out of time? The judge has said, when you're done, you're done. You're done. I want to see like a, a um, nailed it style, Nicole Breyer, you're done. You're done. You're done. That's what I want to see. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the judge would probably side that, call them to a sidebar and be like, counsel, you have five minutes remaining. And if you exceed that five minutes, I'm going to cut you right the fuck off in the middle of your question. Thank you, counsel. I think that's what's going to happen. Love your coverage. Can we get a lane shirts? I don't know about that. Do you think they will bring up the chemistry test with Amber Heard during the movie in closing? I don't know if they would. I don't know if it helps. Truly, I don't know if it helps them to bring up the chemistry test. I just don't. Um, I don't know about a lane shirts. We do have some new things coming. But those are, maybe I'll tease them for the members, but we do have a few new things coming. What strategy should Johnny Depp's team take uh, since they have more time? Uh, they should take their time with their witnesses because they know that whatever they get into their witnesses, Heard's team does not have enough time to cross-examine them. Um, I will, my next paycheck to dis. I will be my next paycheck Disney is looking at. I will bet my next paycheck Disney is looking at alpacas. I don't know about that. I think maybe that ship has sailed too. If she's an expert on movie finance, how does she not know the top 25 movies? How does she still think that Aquaman's like the biggest movie of all time? I don't know. Everyone who has said that, I'm like, I question you. Don't 
keep telling me, oh my God, a Nicole Breyer court show would be so fucking good. <laughs> Don't tell me that you are an expert in the movie industry and keep telling me that Aquaman is the number one like film of all time ever. Have you never heard of Avatar? Like what the fuck is happening? It doesn't make any damn sense. Um, maybe he wanted to wait till tomorrow to drop the big bomb so the defense doesn't have overnight to prepare. I honestly, the more I talk about it, the more I think they just didn't want Depp to be on the stand today and they weren't sure if he would be. Um, it's okay, Emily. All has been forgiven. It's been a day. I mean, I definitely misspeak uh, the longer I've been streaming. I'm so glad I found your stream. You're the only stream I watched during the trial. Side note, I love your tattoos. Thank you. It would be so cool to get a random tattoo tour video. Love your content. I'll do one sometime. There's a Star Wars one and a Dave Matthews quote on this arm, and there are quotes on this arm, and then that's a Doctor Strange tattoo. So um, my Dave Matthews quote says, give me scars to bring me grace. Snaps to the chat if you know what song that's from. I've seen it played live once. I've been to over 50 shows. Um, I've seen it played live once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you what show I saw it played live in, but I'm not going to tell you now because I'm not letting you look up the set list. <laughs> But I know we've got some Dave heads in the chat because y'all kind of old 90s kids like me. Um, I'm here for your glasses, LOL, JK. After this train wreck is over, I'm really looking forward. I'm looking to see you uh, forward your commentary to OJ. I don't know if we'll be able to do that. Other cases. I have been covering a lot of other cases that are on the channel, not lately. But we've got to get back into Girardi. We've got a Jen Shaw trial coming up. We've got a sentencing coming up, what, in two two days for Josh Duggar? Like, there's a lot happening in the other cases we've covered. So thank you. Um, I love seeing another professional with ADHD breaking down stereotypes about neurodiversity. I have ADHD and I'm getting a PhD and have been told I must not have it because I'm doing too well. That's so rude. It's kind of like the, the, well, imagine what you could be doing if you just applied yourself. It's just, don't diminish my accomplishments by telling me that my brain doesn't work the way it works. So uh, congratulations on getting your PhD. Keep rocking your neurodivergent self. It's why I share about my own ADHD. I love that Runkle shares about his ADHD. I think it is important to normalize ADHD and say, look, our brains are on different operating systems. And it's totally okay that our brains work on different operating systems. We just need to figure out how we work and work within it. And then the hard thing to do is to set boundaries and say, this doesn't work for me. That does work for me. It's one of the reasons I set boundaries with caps in the chat. I'm also dyslexic. Caps are very hard for me. I also can find them very distracting. I want to shout in caps too, when I want to be like, ah, but it's hard for me. So I set some things in the chat to make it easier for me to be a streamer. Um, so thank you for getting the beach ball reference chat. Well done. Well done. That was the first one I saw. Um, judge when the clock hits zeros. <laughs> oh, damn time. Yeah, done. Any chance Denison challenged the Sykes docs qualification on purpose to piss him off? Possible. But also I think it's because, um, I think it's because, oh, I see you in, uh, see Dave Wednesday in Tampa. I have friends that'll be at the Tampa show. Um, I think it's because this witness was not disclosed to them as someone who was going to be testifying about IPV. I think they changed. Um, wait, somebody in the, somebody in the chat had something I needed to know. My uncle was DMB's personal chef a few years ago. Casey, that's so cool. Um, I'm sure they eat well on tour better than I eat when I go to see them. Thank you about the beach ball. A few of you got it. It's a, it is a, a hidden gem of a Dave Matthews song. I think this case pivots on the jury's treatment of sexual abuse allegations. I think so too, Jordan. I absolutely think so. I think when it comes to abuse, there's enough there for them to be like, this was an abusive situation. So we can see her statement being literally true. But I think that when we get to um, the headline, it gets a little harder and it gets a little easier for them to decide. So. Yes. Thank you guys. Please watch the TikTok about Doc Brown's mouth. I remember that moment so vividly from this morning and it might haunt my dreams. So tag me in it. <laughs> it was so weird. It was such a weird moment. It was just, it was just an odd moment on the stand. It was just an odd moment on the stand. Um, why can't they say Zendaya, right? I don't know. I don't know why they can't say Zendaya, right? She's a queen. I'm sure she's mortified. I mean, or maybe she's like, great. 
that happened. That wasn't on. Maybe, do you think being mentioned in this trial was on her bingo card? Because I'm guessing it wasn't. She was like, what I didn't have slotted for 2022 was being brought up in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I was just focused on like multiverse of madness and no way home. Like that was the focus. Um, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Good morning from New Zealand. We just did that with the witnesses. So we will get Amber Heard's side will rest. There will be a spicy, spicy, I hope, I hope a spicy, spicy motion to yeet, motion to strike. Then we will get the rebuttal case and then we will get closing arguments. This week's going to be great. It is. I'm going to do a few more questions and then I have got to yeet. I have a hard stop, unfortunately. Um, so we'll see. Can Johnny Depp burn down the Amber Heard time by playing video depots? No. Um, they have... Johnny Depp's team cut their cross out of some of the video depots that were played to save themselves time, I suspect, and because they didn't need that. So if they play video depots, it's not going to eat into Herd's time unless Herd's team has a um, has a a cross in those video depots. So that's what it is. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, question. Let me. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger and then I'm going to do, cause I said I would do a few more question. Um, do you think they will bring up the pick of Johnny Depp with ice cream? And there was a bruise kit on the table. I don't know. I don't know if they know. I think it's speculation. If they don't have a makeup artist to say what it is, I think at this point it's too speculative for court, but wonderful fodder for the internet. So um, I think it becomes internet fodder. One more thing as a pre-law dude that went in another direction long ago, I think it would be cool if you gave advice based on your experience to those interested in law outside of topical recent events and cases. Christopher, I have been asked to do that. I tend to do that more in my public speaking setting, um, not really on this channel, but I can find a setting where that's appropriate. Um, so we can do that. Love the tattoos. I have a train for my dad on one forum and my pup's paw print on the other and three more. I love tattoos. I went to a psychiatrist for being ADHD assessment after doing a self-assessment and passing the threshold diagnosis. The male doctor told me, I think you just need to sleep more. What? This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. No, you don't just need to sleep more. Sometimes our brains work different. Will you do a Friday Night Live this week for Duggar and Housewives? Uh, no, Friday we're going to be here riding through closing statements. So I will try at the lunch break the day Duggar sentenced to address it at the lunch break. So, yep. Um, I'd be shocked. Don't care how biased we want to be. They failed to prove their case. I don't think the judge can um, legal it, though. The judge might be able to dismiss this one. The judge might be able to yeet the counterclaim It'll be interesting. That one's going to be interesting. Just me regarding rebuilding careers. I would rather work with an addict in recovery, i.e. I, I Downey Jr., than a proven liar. Thank you for your clarity you provide. Uh, Jono, that I think is a very, very fair point um, for sure. With that, Law Nerds, um, not only is the voice tired, but I have got to wrap up. Um, question tried to ask earlier. Hello, Rachel, but can you please explain foundation? I understand the other objections, but foundation seems confusing. Love your stream. Foundation has to be like, I'm going to try to pare this down simply and eloquently, but how do you know that though? Like foundation is, but how do you know that though? How do I know that you know? Were you there? Did you see it? Is it based on hearsay? What is the base level of your knowledge? I'm going to stop there. I think that was good. <laughs> That's foundation. So um, if they don't have foundation, then they can't, they can't, they haven't proven the base level of how they know. Experts are allowed to rely on hearsay, but individuals can't. So if a foundation question is, hey, you know, how do you know this happened? Oh, well, so-and-so told me. Okay, well, then you lack foundation. You can't talk about it. Hey, how do you know this? Oh, well, I saw this shit go down. Okay, then you can talk about it. You have found your personal knowledge and that's your foundation. And with that, you guys, I'm going to remind you that we do have a text crew. It is, if you're in North America, your text messaging rates apply. I know people still have text messaging rates. Um, so you can text it from your phone and just say, join. I will keep you in the loop with the links when I go live. And if anything pops off, if I do a short or a quick bit or anything, I put the links in there and then sometimes drop spoilers to things that are coming up. So you're welcome to join the text crew. You can go follow me on social. Um, not only am I just trying to run the clock on some numbers here on the YouTube because, you know, 
it's happening. And so we're just, we're just watching it happen. But you can also follow me on the Twitters and the Instagrams for all the short and behind the scenes stuff. Thank you for being here. A huge thank you to our moderators. Thank you, Lawnards, for being the greatest, greatest community on the internet. We had over a hundred thousand or 175,000 of you on live today um, during that really spicy cross-examination. It absolutely blew my mind. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, it looks like we're the number one stream on trending. Is that the perfect time to stop your stream? Yes. <laughs> me. Am I the worst YouTuber ever? Maybe. Do you normally ride that wave and go, okay, I'm going to stream for another two hours? Probably. Am I going to do that? No. I'm going to let you guys go um, and enjoy your night. I will see you in the morning when Cross resumes. I'll be here at 7.50 a.m. Central Standard Time. Again, thank you for being a law nerd. Huge thank you to the mods. Thank you for making this um, such a great place to not just watch and experience this trial, but to have conversations about the law behind it. I just, I appreciate you so much and I'm going to go rest. So swoop. It's good to see you. Thank you. Um, wow. This has just been a day. Have you reached hundred K not on Instagram, but on Twitter? Yes. We're almost, I mean, we're almost at 500 K here on the YouTubes. Um, but no, I think Instagram and TikTok are the platforms where I'm not at hundred K. So have we reached hundred K on the stream? Yes. We were at hundred K. We were at 175 K earlier on the stream. It's been bananas. It's absolutely been bananas. You guys have been so tremendously supportive. So with that, I will see you all in the morning, bright and early. Um, will I maybe pop around the interwebs? Yes. But if you're in the text girl, I'll tell you where I am. Swoop the chat is just like dying. They're so excited you're here. I know. I know. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Unfortunately, I'm wrapping. So with all of that, I will see you all in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.